is Thursday, June 23rd, and welcome to the very first day of the 7th Annual VidCon. Hashtag VidCon Live is powered by YouTube and is coming at you right now, live from the Anaheim Convention Center. Here are your hosts, Elliot Morgan, Lee Newton, and Kingsley. Hey! Ah! Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to VidCon Live. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Elliot Morgan, and I am here with uh, three of my absolute best friends mm -hmm. in the whole wide world. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Brent. We met yesterday for best the first time. Best friend number one. Thank huh? you, Elliot, finally. Yeah. Hi, Thank you, Thank you for being here. Not Brent. a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> this is Kingsley. Hi. Hello. And, uh, and this here is Lee Newton. Hi, I've never... everybody. We're live. Nice to meet you, Lee. Nice to meet you. So nice this to meet you, Ali. It's great that this is so finally nice happening. You. you guys have been talking about meeting each other yeah, for so long. Yeah, so it's refreshing. <laughs> Good to see. Good to see. Uh, we're here at the uh, convention floor of VidCon Live, and it's very exciting. It's a little overwhelming. It's a uh, lot. There's a lot. I don't know if you, how many people you can see. If you can, if you're watching this right now on your phone and you're here at VidCon, you can go stand behind us and jump up and down. It's just an idea. Why would you up. whisper in this moment? Why would you I, hey, go to a low you roar? Go you just went to a low whisper, so everyone uh, is like, "No, we can't have any of that." No Wait. whispering. <laughs> not, no, no. <laughs> not, not, okay, all right. I'll try not to do that. Uh, also, Hank Green just made a massive announcement on stage. Did you guys yeah. hear this? No. Do you know what it is? What, what happened? VidCon is going global. Yeah. Yeah. Global. That's exciting. Yeah. I know. VidCon Are you Europe, serious? April, yeah. finally. Yeah. VidCon is finally going VidCon global. VidCon Australia. VidCon's everywhere. Australia it's going where? down. It's going worldwide. There will worldwide. be dozens of people involved. <laughs> dozens? <laughs> Literally dozens. <laughs> oh Literally uh, dozens. If you guys could have VidCon anywhere, where would you do it? Oh, Japan. I want to go to yeah, Japan. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think they made the right decision with Amsterdam. That's like a <laughs> the, the very, Europe one very being Amsterdam. popular, Wait, crazy is that true? Place. They're doing Amsterdam? Yes. Oh, my God. I was just there. I love it so much. We it's a go. popping city. And Lee's going to VidCon <laughs> Make sure we're on go. that invitation list. Oh, my God. Sorry. This is so distracting. You got so distracted. <laughs> uh, There's we chaos. Just yeah, this is going to be fun. Get I like the away. idea of like hosting and randomly being like, We know that Kingsley's going to be the first to go in a zombie apocalypse. Because uh, he literally were like, yeah. bye. Amsterdam is very exciting. And then the other one's Australia. Is that what yeah. Said? yeah. Do you think they're going to invite us? They better invite us. <laughs> we're you hosting need, the stream. You need a VidCon live stream. It, is, it totally depends so, on how well this goes. Yeah, good so to, far, yeah. we're not getting invites. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we not, are. Not yet. We are pioneering <laughs> the worldwide landscape right now and involving yeah, everyone. Really. So we're like legends. Pioneering. Yeah. yeah. Legend. Yeah. I like uh, I like that word pioneering. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like it too. It Thank feels you. good. Oh I feel like a yeah, pioneer. My word was a hit. Very it complimentary. Really good. Good. Have you? <laughs> Uh, also, if you guys are interested, you can use the hashtag VidConLive yeah. at any point. And, uh, you know, we're going to make sure that you're not saying anything crazy. But if you're not, we can, you know, it'll watch show up on the board. Watch your P's and Q's. If you want to get on our tag board, if you want to interact with us, uh, watch your P's and Q's. You know what that means. And also use the hashtag VidConLive. Also, there's a hashtag uh, VidCon2016. Yes. But VidConLive, and we'll see you. Oh, oh the hashtag. that's really exciting. Yeah. You can use both of them, one of them, either, yeah. or, and it'll be fantastic. Exactly. Um, like, just use both. Amber use both. said, VidCon Live is starting. Just like that. Starting. Wait, she said what? <laughs> Lorraine, yeah, it's like a SourceFed reunion. <laughs> we're, we, we oh, weren't, we it weren't is. On it's like a SourceFed reunion I, yeah, from Lorraine. Say, so, uh, Miriam is curious if Tyler Oakley is going to be here at VidCon. Uh, and Who's it's Tyler 2016. Oakley? Yeah, I need to look that up. But it sound I love the name. It sounds the fun. music guy, right? The guitar. <laughs> yeah. He's Tyler always a music Oakley. guy. He has covers. Yeah, he does right. covers. Try to get as many people as possible on yeah. this live stream. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, really? I'm ready. We're kidding, by the way. We know who Tyler. We already got <laughs> Kingsley. It was a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys are going to be here on the couch, but the main thing that I'm going to be handling here at VidCon is we're going to be roaming around the convention floor, sort of being your eyes and ears to everything that's happening. So even outside of the guests that are going to be coming up here to the booth, we're going to be meeting with some of your favorite creators. Yep. Uh, we have some special treats in store. So keep watching the live stream. It's all three days. It's Thursday, yep. Friday, and Saturday. Dang. This is going to get that's real. That's going to be so Loaded. much fun. Yeah. We got some silly stuff planned. There's like an inflatable playground behind us, so Why? that's where I'm going immediately after Wait, that. 
Why am I here? Uh, look, Elliot, look slightly to your you left. Go right I now? know, like, just <laughs> oh look behind God. you. We're just, All right. we're going to go now. Me and Elliot yeah. are the first to go oh, yeah. in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Both <laughs> of them just being like, bye. I haven't paid attention to my surroundings in, like, six years. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to start this morning. This is just because it's VidCon, start. you don't have to change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely just tunnel vision the entire time. We got, now again, I'm they go can't too. see those people. They can't see those people. Those were people, At a point, and they were you can waving. Just keep pretending. People. There's people all around us. There all are, around us. Human specimens walking. I want to invite, like, floor. at some point. How can they not see? It is sort of I madness. Know. Yeah, it's fun. It's crazy. Very here, yeah. exciting. Guys are getting to be involved. Sorry. So throughout this, we're going to be also having guest hosts that are going to be yeah. talking to you guys. It's not just going to be us. Sometimes it will be just us. Sometimes it won't be. And it's all going to depend on variety and desire and availability. <laughs> <laughs> and whether or not I'm drinking coffee secretly under the stage. Have you had coffee yet? Yeah, it was you awesome. I, but I had the type of coffee that's in the hotel room. Yeah, in the hotel room. It's not coffee. It's very sweet for them to do that at hotels, but it's the kind that comes in a pod and then Never you stick it in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never yeah. the button. It's no. not great. Are you a coffee -er? I'm not really a coffee. Did you say a coffee er? Coffee er! I'm not a coffee er. Oh. I am a Starbucks er oh. if I need to like trick myself into staying awake, but I sure. usually get something weak, like a vanilla latte, just because it tastes good. I don't really know what coffee does. Uh, so how do you oh, function as a human right being? Now. I go to sleep on time. What? Oh, what? Yeah, how? Kingsley's, yeah. Kingsley's an old man about I'm an it. Old You're an old man, man just about don't it. Do, you just yeah, all I watch natural. HGTV and I fall asleep. So you wake up, and that's how much energy you're going to have all yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I woke up, I have pancakes, bacon, and strawberries, and now I'm here, and I'm ready to go. Pancakes and bacon and strawberries? Yes, room service. Oh! oh. Yeah. Hashtag VidCon Live! <laughs> hey! <laughs> room Guys. service! Hashtag VidCon Live! You guys want to see if we can order room service to right here? Yes, I would like yeah. to see if we can get room service. It's part of the service. hotel, technically. I think yeah, that yeah. works. Yeah. I woke 100%. up too late to find out. Mess. I just came here. And yet you were the first one here. Yeah, I woke yeah. up late I'm and so beat all of you. Again, madness here in Anaheim. It's fine. Darting is exciting. Carlene said, watching, it's going to start soon. It's already started, Carlene. Molly oh, Nurse started. says, get on board, get literally excited. Literally making my life Also right about now. to start, we're going to be, uh, they just opened the doors to it apparently, but there's the girl love panel that's going to be happening. Yeah. Next yes. that people are going to get to see. That hashtag girl love panel is going to start pretty soon. Who's and on that panel? Really that's a good one, exciting. right? Uh, it's so Lily Singh. It's, let me see. Emails. Rosanna oh, I Pensino? messed up my cards. Hang on. Yes. Lily Singh. Yeah. Yes. Casey Ho. Ooh. And Lindsay Sterling. Sterling. My favorite Lindsay Sterling. Also Lindsay Sterling action. Mm -hmm. She has a great book out right now, The Only Pirate at the Party, and it really makes me happy. She has a book? Yes! Does it play music? No. Guys, uh, nobody panic. No, it doesn't. Where'd you go? Where'd I lost you my, go? I lost my uh, record, perhaps oh, a CD. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Does this book play music, hey, though? You know, we're advancing anyway. as a civilization. It's okay. I have other Just cards. Know. We can kick to whatever we want. It's fun. All right. What's y'all's favorite part about VidCon? How long have you been doing it? Let's talk. Let's right. get real, because there's a lot of people who've never been to VidCon, and they want to know the nitty-gritty, what do we like, what do we... Yes. Um, honestly, my favorite part about VidCon is, like, seeing all the creators together, because I feel like this is, like, the one time a year where we all get to, like, get together, because I feel like we are a weird, like, extended family, and so, like, we get to get together and be like, oh, my God, like... How are you? Yeah. I haven't seen you. Literally, I saw someone last night, and they're like, when was the last time I saw you? And I was like, last year at VidCon. Yep. <laughs> so that's always really fun to get together. And then just, like, watching the viewers and the fans, and, like, everyone here is having the time of their life, and it's so much fun, and it's it's infectious. It's so much joy. Yeah, I like seeing, like, the, the fans and the, like, of the community, but also when they're their own little groups of friends, when there's, like, yeah. you know, four or five, like a manageable group, not like, like a manageable you know, group of a friends. Crowd, then sure. It gets sure. Not like a but gathered crew. It's a manageable not a horde, size. Yeah. This is starting five in a basketball team. No, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like all you know, they got their own little clique. I'm like, oh look at y'all. Like I remember, you know, friends. Yes. And then we go and hang out and yeah, like you meet all these creators and they're exactly how they are on camera ninety percent of the time. It's really nice. Yeah. It's also really nice to like see a good clean fun. I know that sounds so lame, but I'm like <laughs> I mean it's so much fun and it's not insane. It's not debaucherous. It's literally just like everyone having a really great time because they really love everything that goes on here. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's being reminded that you're not a crazy person. Because most people, I mean, we're making videos by ourselves and we're living in like our own bubble. And then we come to this stuff and see each other again finally. We're like, oh, that's right. There's more of us in the world. Great. Yeah. 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 Such yeah. a relief. You can connect exactly. and be like, oh, oh. Yeah. you're like me. 
but different. <laughs> and you're better at it. But that's still good. That is the part of it. Oh, but he's part better than I am. What's your favorite part? Destroy the free him. Food talking about you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kingsley about you. said it. the free food is his favorite part. Yeah, it's just such a variety of options, and it's just all so good. <laughs> and then we get so much free Are you stuff. going back to your room service now? You're like, no, not the room service. I don't need to go. There's booths all over the place. It's just, it's madness. I just think it's such a diverse floor of construction. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> First floor of you know what? I'm sorry. We're gonna, we're gonna talk I'm more fire. about whatever this is in just a second. Right now, though, guys, we're gonna show you the girl love panel happening yes. right yes. now. Now. Good morning, everybody. Wow! Thank okay. you guys all for coming out so early. I know this is the first panel of the day. He directs and writes short films, and he's actually got a book coming out this year. Maybe he can tell you a little bit about that. Let's get straight to it. Um, let's bring him out. Let's bring out Lily Singh, Lindsay Sterling, Ro Pancino, and Cassie hey. Ho. How y'all feeling? It's early, but make some noise. Come on. Lindsay Sterling, are you out there? Woo! What's up? Woo! <laughs> Is Rose Pancino out there? Yeah, you might be. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Cassie Ho, are you out there? Two here, two here, I okay. think. Is that okay. Can we all force it on one? Fine. They're so far away. Oh, they're so far. <gasps> so far. <laughs> it's like the, the colors and the, the black and white. Oh my God. Themed. I love it. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks again for coming. Guys, we're the first panel of the day. So oh my. Wow, kicking it off. No pressure. Good morning. Yes. Good, good morning. You guys all woke up to yeah. come here today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Give Give yourself applause. a round yeah, of applause. You earned a round for Big that. Round of applause. Uh, we're off to a good start with the girl and boy love. We're already applauding for ourselves this morning. <laughs> no, for love. no reason. <laughs> um, well, welcome. If you guys don't know, this is the Girl Love panel um, on YouTube. And uh, Girl Love is a social good initiative that was launched by Lily and supported by these lovely ladies. Um, I love you too, baby. <laughs> And if you don't know me, my name is Sarah uh, Weichel. I uh, manage a handful of YouTube talent, including Lily. So uh, that's how I got here. Um, Lily, do you want to uh, lead and just say a little bit about Girl Love and why you wanted to launch the yeah, program? Yeah, sure. So I'm sure these ladies will attest to the fact that I'm super passionate about Girl Love. I think it's so important for women to support one another and not necessarily always be so hostile and compete against each other. And I think I learned this when I first started YouTube and I became friends with so many amazing people. But sometimes in YouTube comments and sometimes on social media, you see like so-and-so hate each other or so-and-so is prettier than so-and-so. And I'm just like, but we're and so I really wanted to just make it cool to compliment other women because I do believe we're all in this together. So that's what I love about Girl Love. Woo! Woo -woo. I mean, obviously, you guys are all very high-profile female creators at this point, though I don't know that it really necessarily matters whether or not you're female or male. It's, it's more just about, like, anti-bullying, um, I think, for all of these women up here. But since you guys all are so high profile, can you give us an example maybe um, of, a, of a maybe positive comment that helped like strengthen your bond with either your community or with like another creator? Like something that you can recall as like one of the first other creators out there that reached out to you in a way that was like, oh, that's really like kind. Like maybe we're gonna be like real life friends instead of just like creator friends. Do you have someone that comes to mind? Well, I remember the first time I met Rosanna. We were at Ingrid's uh, party, right? And yeah. then we just really yeah. hit it off. And then I was surprised that afterwards, you know, exchanged numbers and you actually texted me. And I actually texted you She couldn't you get back. me to stop texting her. And she kept her. texting pictures of her dog, of like new <laughs> stuff. I was like, okay, I think we're actually friends. Yeah, and I was then, like, we're friends now. And I think that's You so gave important. me your number, so that's the green light. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and then because we're friends, then we collab and it's like totally so much more easy mm -hmm. because it's not not just like, oh, we're gonna collab for numbers or gains or subscribers. It's really because we like each other and I want to introduce you to my YouTube family. And um, yeah, so thank you for being my first YouTube Aww. friend in LA. Cassie, <laughs> that is so sweet. Oh. We're so You're cute, it's disgusting. We're disgusting.
disgusting. Oh, yeah. How we cute are. we are. <laughs> Our lady squad is growing, and we are disgusting. It's a lot of love, a lot of support. I think for me, growing up, I played a lot of female team sports. I was on an all-girl soccer team, an all-girl gymnastic team, and that impacted me, I think, forever. I think that... Um, I was just used to this sisterhood and supporting each other, and I think team sports instilled that in me when I was really little. And when I started creating content on YouTube, I think I naturally gravitated towards other women who felt the same, like other women who wanted to love and support each other. And there's a lot of women on YouTube who feel the same way, these ladies. Uh, included, and I think one of the first women to reach out to me on YouTube to collaborate was Ingrid. Mm. She was so sweet, open, and inviting, and she asked if I wanted to do this collaboration uh, video. She actually wasn't in the video, she was producing it. Okay. And I, I think we hit it off. I, like, love her, so. Is <laughs> <laughs> this then, secretly just an Ingrid, like, seance? That's <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, Ingrid, I love you. And she invited me to the opening yep, hangout that's right. we, yeah that's where we met lots of donuts lots yes <laughs> ah. it's, it's interesting that you bring up sports though ro um i didn't know that about you but i do know that lily came from a dance community um and i never really made i think the, Lindsay and i both kind of came from like music dance -ish. i don't know Lindsay yes. dance is better than me so i'm just assuming no 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 i've seen you in the club girl oh. Oh. <laughs> This is our get together on stage. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Swank. No, I was just gonna say, do you do you find that maybe that's why you feel so um, obligated to help like spread this message? Is it like that bond that you developed really early on in life that you wanted to like help perpetuate, or is it really something that came out of like a cyberbullying community that you wanted to? Fix. Yes, yes, and no. I think that definitely plays a role because you know when you're a dancer, you learn to you know the group choreography, you learn how to work with people, you kind of become a family. But I think it was more so when I first started YouTube, it was scary. Like when I went to my first ever VidCon or playlist, I had no friends. I was literally in my hotel room eating Cliff bars, like okay, Snapchat this, I guess. Like I had no friends, and I know how scary that is. And so I really do feel it's important, especially with what we do, to have real friends because so much of what we do is, hey, let's collaborate. Hey, I'm sitting here with Lindsay. Oh my God, it's so good to see you, Lindsay. We're friends. Oh my God, and there's nothing wrong with that, but when the camera's off, I really felt the need to be like, hey, do you guys want to like go for lunch? Like to be real people as well, and so I think that's what really inspired this. Well, and I think a lot of jobs, you have coworkers, and, you, and I've heard a lot of YouTubers describe the life of a social media artist as being sometimes lonely. You know, a lot of times you have this kind of career on your own and you've built it, and especially all of us started in our bedroom making videos by ourselves and traveling and doing shows by ourselves. And I remember at one point thinking, this is a very lonely lifestyle. I, and, I didn't know how long I could go on doing this. And I grew up with all sisters, and very much so, kind of like you were saying, Rosanna, I just always had a lot of girlfriends and grew up, and so I needed that. And it's been amazing having this kind of sisterhood that we've created here because we gravitated to each other because we have similar values and we have things that we stand for, you know, things like girl love, and we want to support each other in our dreams. And it, it turned it from being kind of a lonely career into being like, I feel understood by the women around me. And that is so important. Women need friendship from other women. It's actually been proven it's beneficial to health to have female connections for women. And so I just think that's really interesting. And it's, um, and it, it's really cool. We have this group text that is constantly going between like, there's like five or six of us on Which, it. by the way, Justine is missing. We're missing Justine, Justine. Justine. Missing. we love yeah. you. She's traveling right now. I joke that I would try to Skype her in, but I don't think she gets uh, Wi-Fi where no, she is. No, no, it's very hard for her The right connection now. wouldn't stick. I was gonna <laughs> hold her up right here and be like, she's here. Wouldn't it be cool if she was like right I there? Know. Oh, that we could have a big Justine. <laughs> But we do have this group text. It's, it's us plus Justine. And we're always kind of like, I'll take, you know, we'll take a screen grab of someone's Instagram, be like, girl, you look good. And it's just kind of this on flowing, constant stream of positivity. And whenever I see that group text pop up in my phone, it's like, oh, like I get excited to hear what my, what my girls say. <laughs> that, and I'm you find start... a charger because your phone is dying. I was going to start a petition to join this 
group thread, I would also yeah, like Actually, to see. on that note, I think it's important, although we kind of have this sisterhood of five girls, I think it's important to mention that we're super inclusive. Like, right. we don't want to make it like, we're five friends and like, you can't sit with us. No, you can very much so sit with us. We um, love more friends. I think it's very important. I mean, there's so many times that many of us have been like, hey, I want to introduce a new girl to like our squad kind of thing. And whether it's like, Lord DIY or someone else, I'm like, they're really positive and cool. And so we're totally about like just, having a sisterhood with a whole bunch of girls. It's not like a secret club or group or anything. We're just down to support all women. I think it would be awesome if our squad grew to like a couple hundred. Yeah. yeah. And all of you included, I think. It's true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it's funny that it did just start out very organically. It was just, you know, a couple of us were friends. We started a little met group message. And then, hey, you, we, we should do a collab with so-and-so. She's awesome. And it has, it's, it's not like an exclusive group. It's growing and it continues to grow. And it's, it's a sisterhood. It's awesome. So the moral of the story is you're going to get Lindsay's phone number at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, so I'm in or what is going on? No, but I was actually going to say seriously, like I do feel a part of your guys' group, a world though, because you are so social about it and you do share so much of your personal lives with your communities and your, and your audiences. So I think that's also really great and makes us feel connected as well, even though we aren't connected via text message. But something that I wanted to bring up is sometimes it's hard to have healthy relationships with females. Um, is there like, what did I write down? I don't want to word this incorrectly. <laughs> but basically, like what are some things that prohibit healthy relationships between females, do you think? So I think the main thing for a lot of females is jealousy. And I think it's because you don't respect each other enough to actually be happy for someone. And I think that's really sad because it stems from insecurity. And I think people need to be able to look inside themselves, work on what they're good at, and then be happy for others when you see them succeed. And I can say that when I see you guys just killing it on stage or whatever you're doing, like I inside am cheering for you and outwardly as well. Um, but there's so many people out there who really like want to see you fail because sometimes they feel like by stepping on you, they get higher. And I think that's just so messed up. For us, I just want to see us get bigger and, you know, become more successful and that makes me a lot happier so yeah guys, don't be jealous of each other just work on yourselves and cheer on your friends Good for you, Cassie. I think that's so awesome and I, and I think going off what you said I always believe in like the idea of getting better not bitter when you see someone being Ooh. successful and I think another thing that prohibits healthy relationships is I'm gonna just be real here. We do live in a society that pits women against each other. I mean, there's so many times when I read YouTube comments, like, I'll be watching a Nicki Minaj music video, and all the comments are about, what, you think you're as good as, like, X rapper, or you think you're as good as so-and-so? And I feel like they start comparing their bodies and how they look, and it's very rarely about the rapping or the music, and I feel like, that's kind of naturally the way society has progressed. It's let's make women compete against each other. Um, let's make them caddy. And so we have to proactively think about that and take steps to go the opposite way. Like, I don't care if I'm supposed to compete with Lindsay because we have to have a number of subscribers or anything, but like, I'm gonna support Lindsay. Like, that's my decision to proactively fight against that. So I think that's really important too. Absolutely. Going off that though, Lily, what are some musts in female, on female relationships? Like what are some like must do to have healthy female relationships? Or even help, like let's take the female out of it. Just have like healthy relationships. Like what do you guys, how do you guys stay such good friends? You're all busy, you all have your own lives going on. Like you have your own agenda. It's difficult to prioritize other people when your job is to further your own career or when your job is to further your own, like, you know, when you're at school and you're, you have to focus on your homework or whatever you guys are doing out there too. It's difficult to prioritize other people and make time for them. So like, what do you guys think are some must do's in friendships? Uh, I think a really good start is it's important for your friends and you to have the same priorities and the same values. I know Lindsay touched on this earlier, but one thing all of us have in common is I don't think any of the women sitting on stage will ever say anything bad about another woman. And that's why I get along with them really well, because we all share that same value, we all share that same positivity. Um, if you can't value other people and other people's friendships, there's no way you'll be able to value the people and your friendships. So I, I think that's a good start. But you guys? I also think with any relationship, whether it's with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever, your relationship should make both of you better people. And if it's not there, yeah, yeah, girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, then 
if you have negative people in your life, you literally need to delete them out of your life. If it's on social media, unfollow them. If you're finding that you're hanging out with someone and they're literally draining you, then you don't need to be in that relationship. And when we hang out, I just feel so inspired and like energized. Peppy, energized. I know every time we see each other, we're like, because ah! <laughs> there's just no other way to react. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I'm gonna ask you guys kind of a, a tricky question that as a manager, I would maybe advise you not to answer, but I think we're gonna get to the hard hitting stuff this morning. Um, the pay gap in Hollywood. I'm curious, do you guys, have you felt the effect of that or have you experienced firsthand gender income inequality? Sorry, we couldn't hear you. So we're telling each other what you were telling each other. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I you couldn't hear. I got an ear infection on my flight back from France, and I'm like deaf in this ear. This is why I love Ro. There's like all the details. I love it. Um, I I'm love super it. honest. The question was about the pay gap. If we've ever experienced um, anything related to like the Hollywood pay gap. No. <laughs> For me, no. I have an agent, and um, I am blessed and fortunate that I am in the position where I have an agent mm -hmm. and having an agent allows you well my agent knows what kind of contracts are on the table who's getting what and he's making sure that it is equal and I will not accept anything less yeah. so <laughs> if you're in the position where you have an agent they have access and insider knowledge into what contracts are out there, who is getting paid what, what kind of contracts are happening, and it is up to you, the creator, whether you're male or female, to determine your value. And I have turned down multiple contracts, integrations, projects that don't value me. So I have set my own value. Woo! Dang! Girl. That's right, girl. Yeah. Dang. And there's plenty well, of people that I do work with and that we see the value. Yeah. Okay. You and, and do you guys feel like because you are your own business owner, you have more flexibility in choosing what it is that you do and do, don't want to participate in and therefore you can create more of your, your own career in that regard? Absolutely, and I think by examples like Roe and not accepting less, we're trying to set the bar, you know, because there is a huge problem, maybe not so much as, you know, someone who owns, you know, when there's a, a business owner or an artist and you have an agent, that's not the case for most people. Um, and so I think by setting the bar individually, that's what makes a change. And I also think that's a huge contributing factor to why women are so competitive is because of this huge pay gap and the fact that there aren't as many, you know, it's perceived that there aren't as many positions for women, almost like there's not enough room for all the women in the industry, whether it's entertainment or whether it's work. And so women sometimes turn against each other very competitively as if like, oh, well, then I have to outdo the other women. I have to be the toughest, the strongest. Sure. But the fact is that it's the opposite. If that's the game that's being played, we need to support each other. We need to lift up other women rather than competing with them and trying to make sure that we're the one that gets the spot. No, get yourself to a spot so that you can lift others to the same yep. spot and make right. a difference. Right, and I didn't want, I didn't want to... Lindsay, yes, yes. Love it. And I didn't want to... Um, Give me falsehood and say that it's easy uh, to be in the position where I am now. When I first started YouTube, I was completely broke for four years, and I did turn down a ton of contracts, a ton of opportunities that, when I was reading them, I said, the, I'm worth more than this. This should not be the norm, because I was comparing it to other contracts. I had friends who were very open and honest with me, and they said, Ro, that's really undervaluing you. You shouldn't do that. But it is hard to make those decisions, to stick to your principles when you're broke. And when I first started making videos on YouTube, I didn't have one cent to my name. I was sleeping in my car, working on sets for 16 hours a day, saving every penny that I was making to put into my channel. And finally I got to a place where I was living on someone's couch, full time, and then it just started to build from there. But I don't wanna make it sound like it was easy. For four years, it was a true struggle to set my own value. And I think even to add on to that, in terms of like, yeah, bro, woo, bro, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, if we're talking about girl love, if we're talking about specific, um, specifically being a woman on YouTube, 
and, and in terms of how there's a pay gap in Hollywood and if that pay gap exists on the internet. The great thing about YouTube is that the creators have a lot more control. You know, there's no director, casting director, anyone monitoring the upload button. So we're in this very powerful, unique position where we can make a lot of changes. I mean, just the other day I saw on YouTube's homepage, there's just women category. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. Like it's highlighting so many women creators. And that's really great. But I think that's what I really love about Girl Loves, that literally all of you in this room because of social media and because of how many people you can connect with, your ideas can literally change the world. Like if you change your behavior, you can change the world. So when you're watching us up here talking about girl love, it actually involves every single one of you because you all have Twitter, you all have Instagram, you all have Facebook, you all have a voice, and no one is going to stop you from talking about what you want to talk about. So talk about girl love. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of talking about girl love, actually, we're going to open this up for questions, and the way that we're going to find questions is by searching the hashtag, hashtag girl love on Twitter. So you've had any have any questions for these lovely ladies, submit your questions now and we'll check them in a couple of minutes. Um, that's be fun. Taking a selfie is not a question. <laughs> so we can't jump over these fences and stuff. So like, oh, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, so for no selfies. Yeah, I would. I think all of us would really love like some really. Ask us anything. Like some That's really deep, raw, serial real stuff. But the real stuff. I mean, this is not like a cute YouTube video where it's gonna be like, would you want boobs or feet or feet for boobs? Like, ask us some hard hitting questions. Here, we'll answer them. I, I mean, I think. Question? I get. You don't get the boob question. I get the what boob question all that? the time. I've never heard. That. I've never gotten that. I know, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I'd want You're boobs for feet, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, I'd bounce around all day. I'd be a kangaroo. It'd be amazing. What about okay. for boobs? Okay, I don't know. okay. We're, we're derailing. Come back. I'm Come so on. sorry. We like haven't seen questions. each other in a few weeks, and yeah. we're just like wanting. Ah. It's, so it's true. Fun. You're so far <laughs> away. Okay, 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 okay. So as creators who have your own voice and have your own platform and can create whatever it is that you want to create for an audience that you want to cater to. What kind of content do you want to create for them? And also, do you feel social responsibility to create a certain type of content? And does that ever prohibit you from creating what you want to create? I think the cool thing, well, I think the most important thing about being a creator on YouTube, of course, everybody hears it over and over again, is about authenticity. And I think that's why we've all gravitated towards each other, not only as like, I'm going to like her video and I'm going to support her, but you know, we became friends and reached out to each other because of content that we created, but we've stayed friends because of our true values. And so, I mean, I think all of us can say that the content we create, it's not because we feel pressured to create those kind of videos or share those kind of ideas. It's because we are truly passionate about it. Like this girl love project that Lily's been working on. She's put so much time and energy into it, not because she feels like socially obligated to, but because she's passionate about it and she loves it. And I think all of the, the things that we try to share that are positive, they all really do come from like what we love and what we want to be. And I loved what you said about each one of you are the ones that are going to make the change. And yeah, we may have a lot of people listening to our voice, but we can't, we can't connect with your friends. We can't make the girl next door feel like she's special. You know, it's, it is so much more important for you guys to take the messages that you think are important and implement them to the people in your sphere of influence. And that's the only way change actually happens. That's amazing. Yeah. I actually want to add something that's kind of random, but I just, it was, what you said sparked this idea. I think one of the challenging things about girl love, because it's some real, real talk. Like, if you've ever had a negative thought about a other girl, raise your hand. Like, honestly, raise your hand. I think all of us can raise our hand. And I think the idea about girl love is not about not having that feeling. Realistically, we have that feeling sometimes. We see someone and are like, oh my God, her booty's so fine. Why my booty? Lindsay, my booty's not like that. Your Lindsay, why? Your we, have, right. we have those jealous feelings. We have those negative feelings. It's about what you do with that thought, right? It's do I want to act on this negative thought or do I want to understand that I have this negative thought but I can actually act in a different way that will progress women. And so, What's important is that sometimes you will face women who don't practice girl love. You'll face men who don't practice girl love. You'll just meet bullies in life, right? How many times has someone said something mean to you? A lot of times, right? People have said mean things to us all the time. That doesn't mean it should change how you act towards them, right? If you are, not, and I always use this example, every time 
people will claim, and this is a kind of relevant, but my parents are always be like, well, no, we're not racist, we're not super racist, but if someone says something racist to you, we have the urge to be like, oh, yeah, well, I could say so many things to you. I use this example because I, <laughs> obviously, I can. <laughs> but if, if you're practicing girl love, and a girl says something mean to you, mm -hmm it's important for you to still practice girl love. Someone else's actions should not impact your values because then they're not values, they're hobbies. So have values, not hobbies, when it comes to girl love. It's hard, it's worth it. Break so that that's what I have to say. Values, not hobbies. Woo! Love it. Sorry, I went off a little rant there. She wasn't lying when I said I was passionate. I, had, I sent them like she a, cares. a she control does. freak text this morning and then I had to apologize about it. I was like, I'm sorry guys, this is our panel. I don't mean to be control freak. Oh, very good, Lil. I know, I had to apologize. Um, all right, we're gonna take some questions now, yeah? yeah. Sound good? Yeah. Sounds good. We got a question from Brian uh, Smith, and it says, he asks, how can parents better support and encourage their, their daughter's voice? Ooh. Okay, growing up in an Asian American family, I feel like the children are always pitted against each other. Like, is your child in an AP class or an honors class? My child got an A on this, and it's so competitive. Um, I think parents need to stop doing that because they put so much stress on, you know, you as a student and as a kid. And to be honest, guys, like, school is important. You should go to school, but, like, don't stress about grades so much that you literally are dying because I was literally dying in high school like I would I was on a tennis team and AP and honors classes and like freaking out about the SATs and there was so so much pressure but now like because I followed my passion you ladies have followed your passions we work hard but we it doesn't feel like work because we really love what we do um, so I think parents need to support the passions of their children instead of saying like oh no no you should be a doctor or a lawyer because that's gonna be safe and you're gonna make money because that really kills your your soul and unless you're strong enough to realize that you have so much more to offer to this world not saying that doctors and lawyers aren't good it's just not my profession and I'm not passionate about it but there are other people who are much better at it um, but you really need to nurture someone's uh, I don't know someone's potential I think that's the most important thing let's stay on high school for a second because high school is brutal yeah. and I'm sure a lot of you guys are going through that right now um, somebody asked us, it's Perks of Being Zoe, asked us, how do you stay positive about yourself and your image? And I think that high school is, is a community um, or time in your life where a lot of people really struggle with that. So do you guys have any tips about staying po having positive body image? Body image, okay. <sighs> so... I, I feel very insecure that Cassie's talking about this right now. I'm like, Cassie, you want to have a body, girl? You could bench press me. <laughs> so, Guys, body image. You know, when I first started on YouTube in 2009, I was, I mean, I've been teaching Pilates for 10 years now, and I teach classes to get people fit and to be stronger and happier. But then I started getting these comments asking, how do, you get, how do I get a thigh gap? How do I get rid of my love handles, my bat wings, and all this kind of stuff? And I was like, I, I guess it's weird, but it had never occurred to me that people, I don't know, like, like they're working to just get rid of their flaws instead of working to get stronger. And it's something that I understand as a fitness instructor, because you'll look up a video called How to Get Rid of Your Muffin Top, and you'll probably find my video, and that's fine. But my goal is for when you see my video to get immersed, immersed into this world where you're working out because it makes you a better person and a stronger person. And that has to come with the mind shift. So the same thing with body image. I mean, I used to have an eating disorder and a body image disorder because I thought I had to be super skinny and super toned and all that kind of stuff and comparing myself with other uh, you know fitness people and Instagrammers and stuff it becomes such a physical war on your body when your body is not what you're about you're about what's inside it's about your brain your heart your character your um, your talent and once you realize that you're so much more than your abs and your booty then you can really thrive in life so for any of you who are struggling with eating disorders or body gym disorders just understand that there is so much more to life than your body so please like take care of yourself absolutely you know I want to add to what you said because I personally myself struggled for years with body image issues and problems and I, I suffered from anorexia for years. And I can just tell you that body image issues are mental. They're all in your head. And it's so true that we see our friends and we see people we admire through such different eyes than we see ourselves. And you truly are what you think you are. Mm -hmm. And the image that I saw in the mirror for years, and the, even whether it was my face or my stomach or my thighs, 
was so distorted and it was all mental. And so if we can learn to strengthen our minds just as much as we strengthen our bodies and work on positivity, work on sharing love to other girls more, other people, because the way you judge others is a reflection of the way you judge yourself. And so it all starts with your mind. And just remember that when you look into the mirror at yourself, be kind to yourself. It all starts there. And I changed my life through changing my mind and retraining my brain how to think. And it took work, it took time, it took years, but I know it's possible to change because I once upon a time thought I'd never be happy again and I thought I'd never love myself. But I know that wherever you're at today, you can become the kind of person you want to be. Woo! Lindsay! I love, I love that you said be kind. I think that that's such a good message. I think thinking to yourself in high school, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. High school is so awkward. Your body is going literally through every hormonal change it can. Puberty, that was really awkward for me. I had braces. <laughs> I'm just thinking about my own experience and just be kind to others and yourself because there's a lot of changes going on with the body in high school. Yeah, and on the note of high school, I mean, one of the biggest, um, inspirations for girl love was my high school experience. I, I'm sure so many of you can relate that. High school is a time where you have so many great friends, but then you also have like these, for no apparent reason, enemies. I feel like in high school, it's so common for girls to like have these other girls who are like, oh no, they're not part of our crew. And like, she likes that boy. And so no, we also like that boy. We can't talk to each other. And this is this <laughs> idea that you have to be like that in high school. Wouldn't it, and this is the story of my high school, in a quick, in a quick brief two sentence thing. I was friends with this girl. We stopped being friends. She would like be horrible to me for two years. And then the last day of school, she apologized to me and we cried and hugged. And I was like, how different our high school lives would have been if we were just friends for those two years. And so now when I go to high schools and talk, I'm like, hey, imagine how awesome high school would be if you all got along and liked each other and no one had to feel horrible and no one had to make fun of each other. And it's so possible to do so. Although like, preach, Mean Girls is a classic, you don't have to make that a reality. Get together with your girls and watch Mean Girls and laugh at it because you're not like that. You Woo. know what I mean? Yeah. Woo. That's right. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of questions about uh, people who are trying to create content and make channels now who are in high school, and I think we're all similar ages. We didn't grow up with that kind of stress of social media when we were in high school. So that adds a whole other layer of high school shenanigans to the mix. Um, so I think if you guys have any parting words around like making a channel specifically in high school, great. If not, like we can just button it up with be kind and stay strong. Um, and do we want to move on to the next question? Yeah, I'm gonna just add that I can't even imagine having social media in high school. I think I'd be a mess, an extreme mess if I had Instagram right. in high school. And I kind of salute all of you that do because I can see that being really challenging. But don't forget that real life is here and not here. Yes. So yes. have real relationships outside of this, outside of selfies, outside yeah. of Snapchats, outside of all of that. And really be present in the moment is what I would say. Also, along with that, I can't imagine, you know, I remember no one knew that I even went to the junior high I went to because I was so shy and so quiet and I looked like I was five years old. And so nobody knew I was even there. And I cannot imagine if I had had an, I would have tried to be cool. I would have had an Instagram. And so I can imagine seeing what the popular girl got on her likes and then being like, my five followers didn't even like my last post. And so, thanks a lot, mom and dad yeah. and my sister and my one uncle. <laughs> but the message yeah. of this is, guys, numbers don't count. I still have to remind myself of that, you know, being in a career of social media, I have to remind myself that numbers don't count. And one of my favorite quotes is from a movie called Cool Runnings, and it, ah, this quote Cool is, Runnings! Love it. Yes! Is that before your time? I think yes. so. Girl, you guys all need to watch when Cool we were Runnings. On oh. MSN Messenger in MySpace, there was a movie called Cool <laughs> Runnings. Lindsay, what is the quote for Cool Runnings? Okay, it's about a Jamaican bobsled team. Anyways, yeah. it's amazing. It, it's so good. And at one point, there was this coach that had cheated in the Olympics because he wanted to get a fifth gold medal. And one of the athletes asks him, he says, Why did you cheat to get a fifth gold medal? You already had four. And here's the quote, the coach says, a gold medal is a wonderful thing, 
but if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. And no matter how many likes you get or how many numbers or how many like things are out there in the ethos of social media or that you see or that make you feel cool by showing people, it doesn't matter. If you're not enough without all those things, you will, that will never suffice mm -hmm. lacking self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Very cool. cool running. Cool running for the win. Cool running. <laughs> Uh, just, you've just earned so many points in my eyes right now. You just are, fl are a flawless human being, really. Yes. Uh, the only comment I want to make is your curated world is not your real world. Just remember that, guys. Like, you, amen. It's, we're here at VidCon. I'm sure everyone's so excited to post and share and be social. Um, and you should do it, by the way. Like, there's nothing should, wrong with that. No, not at all. You're talking but, to people that do it for a living. Right? But I think, to, like, just to echo what Lily was saying, have real friendships, have real purpose, have real, have reality, too. Don't get caught up in the social of it all. I like to say, too, don't compare yourself. And I know it's so oh, hard yeah. to do, and I know it's easy to fall into, but don't compare yourself to your peers or your classmates or your girlfriends because that is the easiest way to get into that mental state of start to be like jealous or starting to feel insecure about yourself. I personally just choose never to compare myself to other people. And when you're looking at social media, like you were saying, Instagrams, pictures on there, just know that those are people's highlight reels. Those are people's Ooh. special moments, their achievements. And someone told me, don't compare yourself to someone's highlight reel. Mm -hmm. don't I think that don't that compare your don't, don't compare, compare your, your blooper your reel to their to highlight the, reel. Yeah. Right. Oh, you're taking a Lily. Thing. You know, I'm like Tumblr up in here. What you know about that? Like, you know, I'm out here. Please help me. I'm I'm jet lagged. No, you're doing <laughs> great. So great. It, bro. <laughs> I have a quote to to back that one up. Have you guys ever heard of comparison is the thief of joy? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Indeed, I like. That. Think about it. Comparison is a thief of joy, and also the only person you should be comparing yourself with or competing with is yourself from yesterday. So try Word. to be a better person, y'all. Y'all yeah. yeah. should be okay. taking notes. We are writing your next essay for you up here. <laughs> Look at all these quotes, just popping quotes. <laughs> cool I, Cassie, that is so true because I apply that every day. I, I do don't too. look in magazines or online and say. Man, I wish I could look like Kim Kardashian because that's never gonna happen. I can never get my cake booty to look like her cake booty. It's I just like your cake never booty. Never going to happen. So I train myself to just also be my best self. Yes. I, I want yes. to use that as a segue to talk about something super important. This might just be me, ladies. I'd love to know your opinion. One of my biggest irritations in life is when I know so many of my friends, and I'm sure I've even done this in the past, I, I preach about girl love, I do really believe it, but that doesn't just apply to people that I can physically see in my life. If you really believe in girl love and supporting women, that means you also will not tweet nasty things about a Kim Kardashian. And I think right. that's so important where a celebrity does not get exempt from that. You know, Selena Gomez is not an exception to that. If you believe in girl love, that means Amber Rose, Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, all those people, you will respect them just as the same way I would respect these women. It doesn't mean because they're rich and famous, you shouldn't preach, uh, practice girl love with them. I think that's really, really important. Let's talk totally, about I love that. Because Statistically, there are more men than women in entertainment, and I can't for the life of me figure out why other women feel the urge to tear others down. Yeah. When I started YouTube five years ago, there was not one woman in top 100. Mm -hmm. Not one, it was all male. And so over the years, as more women, their channels are becoming more popular, I just want to support all of them mm -hmm. because it isn't even. And yeah. I, I can't figure it out. And, and when it comes back to support, the line I always like is there's no wrong or right, there's different. So when you see a Kim Kardashian, she's wearing something you might not wear, that doesn't make her wrong and you right. That means you're different. So you don't have a right, just, just think about it. If you are gonna treat your, if I'm gonna talk to Lindsay a certain way, and then I'm going to talk, tweet Kim Kardashian something disgusting, then I don't really have a value. It goes back to what I'm saying, have values, not hobbies. I can't pick and choose who I wanna be nice to. If you're gonna practice girl love, it's to all girls, you know, not just the ones that are sitting right next to you.
Let's talk about practicing girl love a little bit because I think it's really easy for us to sit up here on a stage being successful women and tell people to practice girl love, but the reality is, is it's hard to practice girl love and people don't know what that means or maybe are choosing not to practice it. So what do you do in those situations? You know, if you're like in high school, for example, or if you're in college or if you're at work or wherever you're at and you're trying to just promote positivity and kindness and people are just meeting you with negativity, what do you do in that situation? I think the easiest thing to do is to surround yourself with others who are like you because it's going to be really hard if you're super positive and you're around all these people that want to drain you of your energy. It's just not going to work. It's going to make you be like the odd one out. So when you do find someone good, like how we found each other, we have to keep each other really close because we're real to each other and we lift each other up. So if you're not feeling that way in school, then maybe, I know this is weird, but like migrate out of your group and try to find other people through after school clubs or whatever to find people with common interests and that's a really easy way to find new friends like you know being a part of a sports team or a dance club or something like that um, at least you have one thing holding you together and then the other aspects the social <laughs> aspects should come pretty it's easily. also yeah like and yeah. also checking yourself yes check yourself because it's really easy to fall into negative behavior and so what I like to do is maybe someone did something really mean to me that I didn't deserve. So instead of texting somebody, oh my gosh, she just check myself. Don't text negative things about other women. Don't tweet things about other negative women. And I think another disconnect comes with social media because I didn't grow up with social media. YouTube didn't even exist when I was in high school. <laughs> me neither. So, but I think don't tweet stuff that you wouldn't say to their face. I think that that's a really good mental note that it's so easy to log on to Twitter or Facebook or even DM a really nasty thing. I think it's so easy and I think it's natural. I think when someone does something mean to you, you're like, what? She didn't just blah, 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 blah. But just check yourself because I think it starts to build habits. And I think positivity is contagious. You know, as much as you're like, oh, it's like cool if, I'm, if I say something like witty and mean to that girl, my friends are gonna think I'm cool. But the truth of the matter is positivity yeah. attracts people. People want to be around environments that are uplifting. And the way you gain trust from other people is not by what you say to them face to face. It's actually what they hear you say about other people that aren't present. That's how you gain trust and that's how you make real relationships is not exactly it's not isolated to what you do with the person, but it's how they see you act when the other people aren't around. And so be an example. Be the one to stand up, you know, because like I said, positivity is contagious. And by being positive, if people do lash out at you, that's how you can know that maybe it's time to move on and find some people that will support you in being a positive person, because that's what you want to be. And, and I think a really super practical way to do this, like I'm gonna paint you a picture, you're at school, you're with a group of girls, and one of the girls starts talking about another girl. Hey, so-and-so, did you see what she's wearing? She sewed this and that. You have two choices. Three, actually, you can stand there and listen, you can participate, or you can work up the courage to say, hey, let's not talk bad about her, let's talk about something else. It takes that action to just be like, hey, let me just kind of be the one person to say, why don't we talk about something else? I think gossip is one of the easiest things to prevent because it's so mindless and it does nothing. Just remember, this is another great quote I like, just full of quotes. Oh, great minds know. discuss ideas, not people. Yeah. Yes. It's so easy to discuss people. It's so easy for me to be like, oh, Lindsay, you know what that girl was wearing? Uh -huh. it's, it's better for me to be like, Lindsay, yo, let's talk about this next collab we're gonna do right now, this amazing idea. It's just, you, you have a choice to either contribute good energy or bad energy in every situation. Decide good energy. You have that power. It's that easy. Yeah. And you know what, on the gossip thing, friendship built on gossip and hate is not real friendship because once you stop bashing that person, yeah. you are not gonna have anything else to talk about. Yeah. You don't so have anything else that. in common. Exactly, exactly, so realize that. So in friendship though, sometimes friendships do get sticky and then you feel like maybe your best friend's boyfriend is bad for her and you need to like assert your opinion to like help your friend out. So how do you draw that line or what advice do you have for people who feel like they need to give their opinion in their friendship versus being too judgmental? 
in a friendship. I think one of the, specifically with the boyfriend example, I think we've all been in that situation where we've had a friend and you're just like, girl, why? Why are you with this person? I think the most important thing between girl friendships and all friendships is supporting people. Your friend's not always gonna agree with you. Your friend's not always gonna see eye to eye to you. But sometimes it's crucial for your friend to go through experiences on their own and it's important for you to be there at the end of the journey being like, hey, you're smiling, you're crying, whatever it is, girl, I'm coming over with ice cream, it's fine. Well, and being someone's friend definitely doesn't mean agreeing with everything that they do. I think sometimes the, the harder way to be an actual good friend is when you, you tell someone when you see that they, you think they're doing something that could hurt themselves, when you support them in the right things. And you know, it's, it's important to give your opinion. You don't have to be a yes woman or a yes man that just everything is like, oh yeah, I love your outfit, you know. Oh yeah, your boyfriend, he's great for you. No, it's important to speak your mind and, and if it's coming from a place of genuine help and you're coming at it from an angle of love, whether it's, you know, you see your friend is doing something harmful to themselves or whether you see they're bashing another person and ruining a friendship over here, just coming at it from an angle of love rather than judgment creates a very different reaction. So to wrap this panel up, because it's been almost an hour now. I Already? Yep. Aww. I I okay, but it, give us a few extra minutes at the end so we can do some cool stuff with the audience. Uh, yeah. That was not allowed, and now you're gonna put me on oh, the As in, just a video from here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I thought to wrap this thing up, what we could do is we could kind of teach people how to perpetuate girl love moving forward, and you guys could just say one thing about each other that you really love, oh, and then we could just okay. teach everyone else how to do it. Okay, we're gonna be For super that. quick. Who wants to go first? So we each say something about each other, right? Like, one yeah. I'll say something about all of you, and then who wants to go first? About everyone. Yeah, but like real quick. Or you could pick Okay, somebody. Lily, I'm looking at you. Ah! So for real though, when I saw her day with the red boss yeah. lipstick oh. and her like shorty short sweater yeah, dress yeah, thing, yeah. I was like, girl, you look real hot. I like you it with that long hair. And that goes to show because I was just telling Swike, I was like, I didn't put any like even tanning stuff on my legs. My legs are gonna be so weird. And she just made me feel so much better really, about it. You Thanks. look really good. <laughs> she looks really good. I would say, Cassie, I love how positive you are all the time, and you are super well spoken. Really? You know, you are for some, all of you guys are, but you, for someone that you know, because a lot of times we we peeps that don't vlog for a living, or you know, I'm like, oh gosh, I can't. But you were very well spoken and Aww. so poised when, whenever thank I've heard you. you speak. Oh, thank you. You too. You too. But all of you, really. So, so now how does this work? I, but then there's two people. Well, well there's row, two you people left. Even, so right? What's the rules? I okay, know. so the row. You do, Lindsay. I'll do you. <laughs> oh, hey. You've been assigned to compliment me. <laughs> Lindsay is always inspiring to me. Not just with music stuff, but like your attitude. Yeah. I love that. Thanks, girl. <laughs> Lily. I know, I know, no, I have to do you now. Wait, wait, can I do you? Oh, oh girl, you can do me. <laughs> okay. Lily, you are so confident and funny. This girl makes me laugh all the time. I'm gonna blame my voice being lost to you because oh. I'm just laughing all the time. And then Cassie, oh. motivational oh. and just a ball of positivity. She wishes no ill will on anyone, even people who are mean to her. And I just think that that is so rare to find these days. I think that's a quality that all of these ladies have, yeah. and it's so rare. So when you find those good friends in your life, don't let them go. Word. I love Word. you guys. She just did them all. Well okay, I'm gonna finish this by, by doing up row here. Okay, so okay. I actually told this story to my friend yesterday and Ro wasn't even there. I think I've told this story to three separate people. Sarah, I think you're one of them. So the first time I ever met Ro, she was wearing like a cute little dress. I don't know, probably had like muffins on her or something. You know, cause she has that aura of being like cute, baker, very positive, funny, and she is that. But I think what a lot of people don't realize is what an absolute boss she is behind the scenes. That when I went to her house to shoot, and I see how she works with her team and how everything's orchestrated. Like I left her house feeling so inspired and I was like, wow, this woman knows what she wants. She is not afraid to say what she wants and then she gets what she wants. Like That's it true. is the most amazing thing ever. Do not underestimate this woman because she's like a power house yes. of a woman. Oh, Lily. She's and like Bea not. Beyonce, but with cake batter, I swear. <laughs> I swear. And I will say, Ro is an incredibly loyal friend. Yeah. Such a loyal friend. That, this girl, if she's on your team, she's got your back. And, last and I would thing, say that about thing. all these I'm people. Sorry, one more thing, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one more thing. The, the time I actually like really truly learned what friendship 
offline was with other creators was, you know, I, I had my film premiere recently, a trip to Unicorn Island in LA, and I had this, thank you. <laughs> And I had this list of all these people that were coming, and you know, I was doing, okay, I need this creator to come, this creator, and I was in Lily work mode, so I was like, okay, and then this creator will come, and then so and so and so and so. And the best part of the whole night, and I will never forget it, is when these ladies, including Justine, showed up by my premiere in matching unicorn outfits to support me. <laughs> and I just remember being on the carpet, doing interviews, being so in work mode, and looking, and for looking the first like a babe. time, being like, holy crap, my friends just walked in to support me. Like, it was such a surreal feeling and the best part of the night. So that was really, really special to me. That's we love you. Love you. Like, they ordered them online. How annoying is that we to do? Did. They still did it. We, prepa we prepared for this. We I thought know. about it for weeks. We were so excited. We were like, are you getting the matching furry thingies? Because I'm going to get the <laughs> yeah. matching furry thingies. We're like, yeah. Yeah. I'm wearing like, silver tights. What about you? The best way yeah. we could right. support Lily and embarrass her a little yeah. bit. Sorry, we have a problem. We're like going over time. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> yes, we are. But that's OK. I hope you guys enjoyed the Wait, panel. one last thing, one last thing, if you don't mind. Two, 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 yeah. two, two quick things. Yeah. Um, number one is I would love, because Girl Love, and if you guys don't mind, has a social. It's at Spread Girl Love on Twitter and Instagram. I would love if we could do a quick what? video. Do you guys want to be part of this video real quick? Yeah. Okay, amazing. So I'm gonna record it. Girls, you want to come join me up here? Give me like a fun swipe, and everyone come. So what I was thinking is that uh, when I count to three, so one, maybe in your spot, if you could stand up, in your spot, stand up. That'd be great. Um, if we can do like a spread girl love thing, we'll do it selfie style. So on the count of three, we'll go like this, ladies, and we're all gonna yell. Spread girl love and then cheer, yeah? On the count of three. Everybody got it? Okay, hold on. Yo, I'm here with my girls, Swike, Cassie, Rowe, Lindsay, and all of you. We want to say one, two, three. Spread girl love! Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Amazing. And the last thing, girls, should we take a picture like for here with all of them in the background? Let's do it. Swipe, do you mind? All right. And then I can send it to all you girls. All right, let's All right. do it. Everybody stand up, hands up. Let's get, let's, let's, let's let's put get some hearts. Photo. Some hearts, some hearts and stuff.
everybody. Welcome yeah. back to VidCon Live. Oh. Uh, good. I'm Elliot Morgan, and I'm here with Lee Newton. Hi, everybody. How are you? One of my favorite you? people in the whole world. It's true. He's one of my favorite people and in the whole world. And we just watched uh, a bunch of my other favorite people in, in the, the whole world, world, who I don't know as well, admittedly. <laughs> but they're great. We just watched a panel on hashtag girl love. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lily Singh, Lindsay Sterling had a lot of really fun things to say about a lot of great stuff. girl love. Uh, essentially just like treating other women better. Yeah, and uh, nicer and, and being kinder and being yeah. kind to yourselves. It was very nice. I know it was called girl love, but I still felt very inspired. You even felt though very inspired. I know. it's a, a part of me wants it to viciously be like, take the girl out of it and just make it like love and just oh, make that's it nice. power but instead girl of girl love power. Is great too. It is. But as a society, we propagate something that's very negative getting towards women. I was actually going to get really real with it for a second. You're and like be talking like, about subversive sort yeah, of... Yeah, I'm talking about subversive. Like People are like, oh, don't be mean to other girls. Don't do this to other girls. And I want to say, don't propagate a negative stereotype about women because that's how it is. Oh. Don't feel like you have to push a body type. Don't feel like you have to push a personality type, a smart intelligence. Just... Don't Be propagate negative stereotypes. Others. That's a good Period. one, too. Period. They were really good about, they kept dropping, like, very, uh, like, nuggets of, of good wisdom. And I think that's another one. Don't propagate negative just stereotypes. Don't it's negative. also fun to say if you say yeah. it out loud. Because uh, you, you sound so smart. Just like, I just, you know, I just hate propagating negative stereotypes. Uh, negative stereotypes. That's what I hate doing. Yeah. I hate negative stereotypes and propagating them. And um, propagating negative stereotypes. Yeah, they had, they had a bunch of, like, fun quips. They had uh, what was... Values, not hobbies, which yeah, was nice. That was really nice. And then, be oh, you know what? Uh, it was Lindsey Sterling who kept talking yeah. about the, uh, you know, being authentic and having authenticity, and that's kind of the appeal. And what you find here at VidCon is you meet all of these other creators and, yeah. you know, connecting with people who are of the same level of authenticity is very important. Well, and I like that it starts at, at such a young age, like propagating all this positivity towards each other. Because I feel like that is the age where, like, it, things start to get weird and yeah. real and, like, awful, yeah. you know? It really is. Like, seeing things start at that age where you go, like, I have to like guys now or I have to like girls now. I have to like anything now. And now girls and what now? You're, like, feeling like you have to, like, like other people. Like, that's when you get into, like, dating and, like... When you come out of kiddom is when all of the bad stuff starts to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's when everything gets sad. That's when everything gets real. Everything gets worse. So it's nice now to start very young and say, like, no, these leading by example of being like, I like these humans. I love these women. I'm very proud of them because they're women being successful. And Finding so, your tribe or whatever. Yeah. Find your tribe. Yeah. I, I don't know. Important. That There's being a fine said, line. my it's like, tribe is very male heavy <laughs> it's like you don't want to come off because it's dangerous to say find your tribe because that can sound clicky too and i don't yes, want people to be exactly. clicky but at the same time you need a community so you have to be able to be like oh you we're of like you know minded I have, sensibilities. Yeah. i mean i guess it's just like like-minded people work and with them and be with them right that's what it no, is no that was good that's long it's a little bit longer than tribe oh hi. i got very distracted i get very distracted hi. there's a whole bunch of How people hi Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're here at the convention hall. Convention, convention yeah. hall, convention right? Convention hall. This is a convention hall, Elliot. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's Hall C, I think. Yes. Uh, last night, C. funny story, funny anecdote. We were hanging out, and oh, Lee was no. like, "Where are you guys?" And we were at. What, they have these like parties sometimes when the uh, whole event starts yes. off. And Lee was like, "Where is it?" And I was in ballroom C in the hotel. But I accidentally told Lee that the party was in Hall C, and so, so she I left the hotel. So I traversed all the way over here. I was alone in this huge convention hall, and he kept being like, it's where everyone is. Just find <laughs> everyone. And I was, I was like, very I'm rude. alone. And then uh, I get on the phone with Lee, and she's like, yeah, I, I'm in the I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the convention hall. <laughs> It was very fun. I was very upset about it. Yeah. Not it was, really. But we but made it through, and that's what it's all about. You find friends. You and find friends. You don't propagate negativity. You don't propagate <laughs> negative stereotypes, and you put values above your eyes. Also, it wasn't, even, it wasn't even ballroom C. It was called the California Promenade. So I don't know how you remotely got ballroom C. You know what C it was? Is it. They get, kept giving me those tickets yeah. for beverages. And beverages. So at some point, I was just like, beverages. it's where everybody is. I just I come 
to where the people are. Uh, speaking of people, I'm going to say give a shout out real fast uh, oh. on Twitter to Ben Johnson, one of my favorite people. And if you guys want shout outs at any point, you can yeah. let us know either using the hashtag VidCon Live, hashtag VidCon 2016, or just tweeting us directly. You're at Lee Newton Says. Yeah, I'm at Lee Newton Says, and this is at Elliot C. Morgan. Elliot C. Morgan. Yeah. I don't like the C. It had to be there. And it here we are. I don't like the says. It had to be there. Some other guy has Lee Newton. Yeah. Oh, Some really? bodybuilder has Lee Newton. No way. Yeah. And I think he would like, at one point, he like, contacted me and was like, I keep getting tweets for you, Berg. Yeah. He got like so, so upset. He well, got very, very upset. Right. Anyway, yeah. Let us know. Tweet at us. And we'll tell you what you said to you, even though you already knew. So it's fun. Ah! Uh, yeah. All right, real fast, uh, Brent sat down yeah. with one of my favorite people in the world named Michael Buckley to I learn the ins Buckley. and outs of being a host. And yes. so let's take a look at that. Yeah. Down. Big hashtag VidCon live stream happening right now. I'm hosting some stuff, so I brought along a friend to teach me the ways of hosting everybody, Michael Buckley. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. It's a privilege just to be nominated. Where am I? You know you don't get anything for doing this. Oh, right? God. Thanks. We've known each other since the, the vid, the, um, all of the years ago. 789 was a little YouTube gathering for you OG YouTubers. Yes, yes. Back in the day. And the next up thing, I saw you yeah. at that, and we've just been on, and here we are. And look at how wonderfully you're doing now. Just real history is happening. Yes. So, Buck, yeah. I, I wanted to bring you on here to VidCon Live in front of all the people. I'm hosting this stuff, been on the platform for a really long time, but I wanted to learn from the best. I'm running around. I'm going to be the Thank eyes you. and ears for all of the fans and creators at home who can't be here. What hosting tips do you have? Oh, my God. Well, number one hosting tip, take okay. your badge off. You're not a visitor. You're a host. Look professional. You don't need a... I wouldn't wear a hat because there's a shadow on your it's face. It's so hot in I here. know, but you really you shouldn't okay. have a hat on, that's better, because there's right. a shadow on your face. Okay. Um, I mean, in terms of hosting, you want to engage the audience and make them feel like they're really here, because it's wonderful if you get to be here, but most people are not here. They're watching at home on the internet. That's so you. it's your number one job to make them feel like they are here and they are part of the action. Well, it is the night before VidCon, so the action. Is not a lot, but this is it, so welcome. Nailing it. You're nailing it. You need no tips from so me. So far, so good. What yeah. do I do with my hands? I think it's always important to, right now, you're, you got look it. at your body right okay. now. You're like, what do I do with my hands? Right. Um, so that's posture. Not right. That's not right. Okay. Posture up. And always remember, like, I almost just forgot. Whenever people are interviewing, they forget to go. Yep. So they say, oh, tell me about your latest movie. Oh. Don't, say, for great. don't forget to put the okay. mic in front of their mouth. Okay. Um, if you're interviewing someone, seem really interested in them. Like, don't make it about you. We'll make it a little bit about you, but not too much about you. I don't feel like you're interested in me at all right now. I'm so interested in you. So how long have you been growing this beard? It looks great. Uh, insert a fun fact about their appearance. <laughs> how long have you been growing this beard? It looks great. Uh, it's been a month. Any it's a month. It's going on. That's all right. I didn't want to cut it. Is, should I have cut it? No, you look very handsome. Okay. And now I can see it more because you turned your hat around. Now, what are you most looking forward to with your role at VidCon? I really just wanted to do this. What will be your biggest challenges? Getting through this interview. What will be um, your biggest victory? Living through this interview. If you had to go and tell yourself something yesterday before you did this, what do you wish you knew about this? Don't. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Oh, the microphone. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, we laughed and we reminisced, but I really took what Michael Buckley from YouTube.com slash What the Buck Show told me to heart. Hashtag VidCon Live is a really big deal for fans and creators who can't be here at Anaheim to experience the convention and everything that is VidCon as if they are here but through my eyes. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I think Welcome I just screeched back. a little bit. Hey, everybody. <laughs> You're like, hi, everybody. Welcome back to VidCon. <laughs> Uh, that was uh, Brent and Michael Buckley learning the yes. ins and outs of hosting. I misspoke. I said that Brent sat down with Michael Buckley, but apparently I'm so he glad was that you corrected yourself. Yeah, that feels right that you corrected yourself. I'm so oh. dumb. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of music Kingsley's going here. On. I'm Hi, here. Kingsley, how are you? We're fantastic. <laughs> what were you doing? I was practicing for the variety show oh, that no. is on the Kia main stage at one o'clock with Miles J. Oh my God, how fun! Yeah, we're emceeing. There's going to be performances by Lily Singh and I've 10 Second her. Songs, and John and Hank are going to be there. I think there's like Jimmy Kimmel mean tweets or something. Oh. 
awesome. out of control. Wow. And Todrick Hall. That's, That's awesome. really exciting. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling exciting. like worn out? Are you tired? How are you doing? I mean, it was a lot of like ear sound checking, staring off into a empty arena with a bunch of lights and some weird man in the back just but yelling things. Feel yeah, right? like you're just yeah the I felt at home. Like, That's what I imagine yeah. heaven to be like, just yes. a voice. And just Jesus yeah. somewhere, like but somewhere. we just can't see He's him. Yeah. 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 Just laughing. stare off in a different exactly. pretend, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. smile. Uh, that's it. fun. Well, I'm excited to see you do that. I won't see you do that. I'll probably what? be here. I know. Can we'll you, be here. Can you just like Snapchat it and then send oh, it to me? Oh my yeah. God. Is that meta? Is that what we were that's talking yeah. about? If I Snapchat while I'm on stage yes. at VidCon? Do you, you want to Snapchat right now? I remember to do that. You should Snapchat right now. Oh my God. I mean, you that way, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You can use the hashtag VidCon Live, like which important. is the hashtag that we can see right here. We have a little tag board, and we can see hashtag VidCon Live oh my by God. Callie or Teals Vian. She said, "I love, love, love this hashtag VidCon Live." Uh, Snapchatting, hosting a live stream, meta uh, vocabulary word of the day. Meta. See, and now you can follow Kingsley on Snapchat, and it works out perfectly. Yeah, uh, yeah use the Get hashtag. We're also, like, hanging out now because in a little bit, we're going to kick to a Q&A with SourceFed. Yes. Which is hilarious because we used to work with we SourceFed. We used to work with SourceFed. You could say we we, we were there you very could say early that on. We were the beginning of something great. And we handed them the baton. And they drop the baton. And they, <laughs> and they <laughs> do the baton. Fire. How does it work? So there's like different, is it like the view? I mean, I know what source that is, but like. No, I mean, do, do you mean like, is there like a handing of a baton? Yeah, like. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if we actually ever handed anyone a baton. The baton? What? I got distracted by that sick beat. Me too, I was spilling it. I'm having I know. Yeah. I'm like, This conversation was fun, but I started having more fun uh -huh. just like. Anyway. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of very intense music. I can feel it in my feet. It's very aggressive, it? yeah. yeah. Deep. Uh, I can feel it in while my you feet. were gone, we were talking about the girl love panel. How was that? It was really good, good, man. It was right super like inspiring, and they had a bunch of good points. Lee brought up some good points. I didn't bring up any good. Oh no, He's I said find your tribe. That was my thing. Yeah, you find, said your, find tribe. your tribe. Yeah, you know. Find your tribe. Oh, yeah. I kind of walked past it on the way to rehearsal. They were talking yeah. about like finding friends in the community. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like squad goals, but not. Yeah. You like, know. But real. But real. Real. But also make sure that your tribe isn't clicky and rude. Yeah. You know? Oh look, that's Only me. I'm there. Hey, look at that. Ah! Look! From at Katie, Katie Joyce, Joyce. Use the hashtag VidCon uh, Live, and now I can Val see a photo says, of myself. Val says, I wish I could be at VidCon. At least I can watch VidCon Live. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hopefully we're going to be here the entire event trying to be as entertaining as possible. Uh, and it should be. Yeah. should be good. 100%. Um, but, yeah, we're doing, let's see, Girl Love. And, oh, look at that. Take a look. Sarah Weichel. Sarah Weichel. That's Sarah Weichel. It's I was just phone. checking that oh. I can't even imagine having social media in high school. I think I'd be a mess, an extreme mess if I had Instagram right. in high school. And I kind of salute all of you that do because I can see that being really challenging. But don't forget that real life is here and not here. Yes. So yes. have real relationships outside of this, outside of selfies, outside yeah. of Snapchats, outside of all of that. And really be present in the moment is what I would say. Also, along with that, I can't imagine, you know, I remember no one knew that I even went to the junior high I went to because I was so shy and so quiet and I looked like I was five years old. And so nobody knew I was even there. And I cannot imagine if I had had an, I would have tried to be cool. I would have had an Instagram. And so I can imagine seeing what the popular girl got on her likes and then being like, my five followers didn't even like my last post. And so... Thanks a lot, mom and dad yeah. and my sister and my one uncle. <laughs> but the message of this is, guys, numbers don't count. I still have to remind myself of that, you know, being in a career of social media, I have to remind myself that numbers don't count. And one of my favorite quotes is from a movie called Cool Runnings, and it... Ah, this quote cool is, Runnings! Love it. Yes! Is that before your time? I think yes, so. Oh, yes, that oh, is way before. Girl, you guys all need to watch when Cool we were Runnings. On yeah. MSN Messenger and MySpace. There was a movie <laughs> called Cool Runnings. <laughs> Lindsay, what is the quote for Cool Runnings? Okay, it's about a Jamaican bobsled team. Anyways, yeah. it's amazing. It, it's so good. And at one point, there was this coach that had cheated in the Olympics because he wanted to get a fifth gold medal. And one of the athletes asks him, he says, "Why did you cheat?" 
to get a fifth gold medal. You already had four. And here's the quote. The coach says, a gold medal is a wonderful thing, but if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. And no matter how many likes you get or how many numbers or how many like things are out there in the ethos of social media or that you see or that make you feel cool by showing people, it doesn't matter. If you're not enough without all those things, you will, that will never suffice. Mm -hmm. Lacking self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Very cool. cool running. Cool runnings for the win. Cool running. <laughs> Uh, you only... just earned so many points in my yeah, eyes. I mean, if you didn't get to see the entire panel, that was a little bit. I personally yeah. enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Did you learn I, a lot? I did too. Yeah, I thought it was I great. I learned a lot. I'm a big fan of, uh, of Lindsay Sterling's words. I've always been a fan of her. <laughs> Sorry. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. 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 <laughs> We're getting very distracted here. I'm living oh. in the moment. You're you living yeah, in yeah. the moment. <laughs> it's it's moment by moment. You're just living in the moment. Yes, exactly. That's I'm living in the moment. Hashtag living in the moment. Hashtag no, it's living good. in the moment. No, don't. You got to not beat yourself hey, up. Don't yeah. beat yourself up. I'm sorry. You got to be kind to yourself. <laughs> You're doing no. it. That time there's nobody there. Yeah, <laughs> no, no one's there. There's, there's, there's constant no, there's people. There's no one there. Oh, my goodness. We've already discussed this. Kingsley's Kingsley's the first to go in a zombie apocalypse. I really am. Because you'll just be like, oh. Oh, uh, but I really count on both of you to save me. And we'll be there. But for apparently you. you're gonna be gone too, according yeah. to Lee. Yeah. 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 I mean I know I'll fight, but I don't know. I, I might don't even go. Know how to I do might that. just lay back and let it. I'm just be like, all right. Yeah. Take me. Let's I do can't it. deal with this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Guys, we do have the tag board with hashtag VidCon Live. Uh, Dara Trax said, I can't stop watching. Hashtag VidCon Live. So if you guys want to like interact with us, get a hold of us, uh, let us know how your thoughts and feelings or your favorite pizza toppings, use the hashtag VidCon Live. If you wanna... Snappy Dylan says this live stream is so oh, lit. So lit? Yes. So how do, what do you guys think about lit? I am Man, not so sure what it is. Man, you talking about like fam is lit? That kind of? That yeah. Yeah, like, it's, it's fun. Lit. You, it's fun? I don't say it, but it's fun. <laughs> I try not I appreciate to say it. it. I try not to say it too. Sometimes I... it slips out, and as it's slipping out, I hate myself. Oh, yeah. really? Dude, yeah. I started saying stuff like that. I would say stuff ironically as like a joke. Like yeah. I started saying bro, making fun of the word bro. Sure. And now I say bro all the oh. time, and it's not good. It's not good. And I'm so sorry. If I call you bro at any point, just tell me. An apology. An apology, I apologize. already issued. It's rude. I did that with sick. I started being like, oh, sick, like as a joke. And now yeah. it's in there. Dope. I did that with dope. Dope. Now Me I'm too. I did dope. Like, dope. Oh, it's a dope. dope. Yeah, man. Dope. dope. What was you guys' like, favorite trends beyond lit that took over the internet this year? We had lit. We had Ooh. the dab. Um, I like Damn Daniel. I had a great time. Oh, Damn, Damn Daniel, Daniel was really nice. Yeah. No. no. Everybody I got did. sick of them, and I was on board the entire time because I was like, those are nice shoes. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, you can't argue with it. it is was he here? I wonder. He I should wonder be. If, if Say what? Daniel he should be here. Yeah. I know Alex from Target was here last year. No, really? I yeah. missed him? Yeah. You know what? I heard a, a thing that Alex from Target was constructed by Target and Ellen together to make a ad campaign. Oh, my like, God. That's a brilliant was, idea. Yeah. I don't really believe it. It's like a Guerrilla conspiracy marketing. that that was all set up. That's my, that's my, uh, song. You're you're jingle. Marketing. Oh my that's your, it's his theme song? <laughs> oh, that's exactly Perfect. it. 100%. Hey Gorilla Marketing. Um, anyway, what's your, what was your favorite part of VidCon since you've been here for what, 12 hours? What's your favorite so far? Hours. Um, I think my favorite part was uh, witnessing the Girl Love panel from backstage. Oh, they cool. They have like screens oh, on both sides of like the walkways. Nice. So I got a little sneak peek and I heard them talking about the um, finding a, what was it? I'm tribe. gonna say, I was tribe. about to say pit crew, a tribe. Finding, find your pit crew. <laughs> yes. I like how you were like, find a your pit, pit crew. crew? That That's too much RuPaul's Drag Race. Too it's much, so too much, too much. RuPaul, but yeah. I get it. It is find your pit crew. Yeah. Maybe that's your hashtag, find your pit crew. But there's behind us, I don't know if they can see it, but there's a American Ninja Warrior like contraption, yeah. oh, yes. which I intend to get on. Are you really going to do it? Yeah, I'm going to try I'm to do that. I'm proud of you. There's a, yeah, it looks amazing. You're going to yeah. try it? Yeah. Yeah, it looks legitimately yeah, look at them go. They're like very intense. I just down. know about myself, like, my American Ninja Warrior course would have to be, like, stairs. 
leading to like a very crooked walkway. Like that would be my version. You have to of like it. roll over a couch. Yeah, I'd have to like just. It would be very like easy stuff for normal people, but for me, yeah. it's like very challenging. Like American Netflix yeah, warrior. Yeah, yes, one hundred percent. Nice. Grab the like, remote. Yeah. Make sure that you grab the, the remote with your foot as you pick up your ball of yes, popcorn. Yes, yes. And then make sure you can lick the popcorn and still change the channel with your. <laughs> you eat the popcorn. We just thought of a viral yeah. video somehow. We need 100%. to do that. 100%. Yeah. We just need to do the, like, Netflix Ninja Warrior. Yeah. yeah. 100%. That's like 2 million views. Oh, at least. At least. At least. Maybe 2 million and 4 or something. You don't know, dude. Hashtag Taking Netflix it, it Ninja viral. Warrior. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite things about VidCon that we experienced, because we're going on, like, you know, anytime we're not on the air, Lee and I will maybe run and grab coffee. Kingsley will run and rehearse. Yes. We're, we're all, uh, you know, out and about. We grab but, um, coffee, Kingsley rehearses. Um. <laughs> yeah. But one of my favorite things is, like, seeing YouTubers. Like, like we're all kind of in the same boat in terms of having no idea how to get from point A to point B. No, and that so, like, is the biggest thing. We're all like, I don't it's know awesome. where I am. I mean, once you Guiding. figure it out, it's great. But, yeah, it is a little scary. But we were walking back there, and I saw... Uh, Glozelle like popped yeah. out of the curtains oh, and yeah. she just looked like so stressed and panicked and she, she was just like, like Glozelle looked stressed? I have never seen Glozelle yeah, yeah. look yeah, stressed. Yeah, it was, that was, was kind like, of intense. We oh were like, God. but she like looked around and then she's like, no, this isn't it. I like, went back. <laughs> no, this, we is, like, this is the wrong group of 700 group. people. I know. <laughs> uh, it, is it is very funny. But it's, it's nice to be like, you know, there's a sense of community when we're all just like, we don't know what's going we on. We have no idea what's nope. going on. At all. It's also, Exciting. I get very, I, I get easily distracted by most things, like shiny and stuff like that. So I'm like walking someplace and then I'm like, oh my, oh, yeah. oh, there's, oh, a cover girl booth. Oh, yep. and then, and then I'm lost now and I I'm in the that. hall. I was intrigued by that because I think it's at the Katie Cat booth. Katie yeah. Cat. Katie Perry's lipstick. Yes. Oh, is that? Okay. Yeah. It's so, Katie Cat. It's a matte lipstick from Katy Perry. I'm gonna go get. Are you some, about the matte life? Like, do you I do the Katy Perry, life. Kylie Jenner lip? I'm 100 percent about the matte life. I I also don't want to be like looped in with like those girls because they have really good <laughs> like lip the pouty. injections, and I don't. Yeah. Uh, so that I feel, you know, I feel like a little bit like, Ugh, well, I, if I could, but you know, hashtag girl love. Girl hashtag love. Girl Did you do, love. Have you done the thing where you like? And I you did it, me. and I got, um, I did the thing where you, like, suck on it, and I got a hickey around my mouth. <laughs> yeah, so I had a friend. It was there for three days. I had to use so much concealer. I was so embarrassing, and I was like, what happened? Because it literally looked like I stuck my mouth in a vacuum. <laughs> that was a terrifying period on the internet. I was scared for a lot yeah. of kids' yes. lives. My favorite was when they would do it, and then be like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. it yeah. <laughs> just me. It's well, also not good to no, it's, it's like, like dangerous, bad. apparently. Yeah, it's, it's super dangerous, dangerous, but then there's always that moment when I had a friend do it, and she did it, and then she was like, this works so good. And then she, like, kept doing it, and then all, like, everything went purple, and she was all in pain. Oh, and no. for the rest of the day, she was like, I have kids. Like, I'm an adult. <laughs> like, I have a job. Look at my mouth. Look at my mouth. It was very funny. That's exactly it. I want, I'm waiting for them to come out with prosthetic little things that you can just be like. <laughs> oh, that is like too much. Is, that no, is I'm waiting. Much. Are you kidding? I saw a video the other day on Instagram, and it was like talking about, you know how contour, like, mm -hmm. that's what's happening on my face right now. It's super beat. <laughs> but contour is like, you know, making this happen. I saw a girl contouring her feet. It was like, oh, how to make your feet more attractive. Absolutely. I was like, I can, no. and I'm kind done. Of impressive. <laughs> but how does it stay on? Because is it? They spray some question. stuff on it to make it stay a little bit more. Okay, I take back my like impressedness. But it was one of those that I was Impressed. like, I can't Maybe. go this far. Still I can't be like again. that intense with like, I'm contouring my feet now. That's Crazy. There's already 72 things on my face. Yeah, and then like it's already terrifying enough for people, girls and guys, when you're wearing makeup and then you take it off. Yeah. Like to see that coming out of your feet <laughs> is just like that's that I thought alarming. Your feet were properly shadowed in there. Yeah, yeah no, just no. Just, way oh, too you much. Gotta, wait, did you wave? You yeah, wave? I wave. Did you wave? I, yeah, she waved. Did you wave? I waved. Oh my god. I'm living in the moment, you guys. I am multitasking. I am living that's in the good. moment. I'm living in the past. Yep. Oh. It's nice. So you have to live. 1800s. It's beautiful. <laughs> Way before electricity, it's amazing. Yeah. He's like, I'm having the time of my life. Sure, when <laughs> it comes to surgery, I'm kind of boned. What but... make of wagon do you have? What oh, type of wagon? Yeah. What make it's not wagon? covered. I'm not there yet. Oh, okay, I'm lower okay. middle class. Right. Good well, for you. Know, you. But it's, a, it's a big middle class, you know? Yeah. The economy hasn't narrowed like it has yes. now. It's, uh, it's the, you know, it's great. 
It's 100%. Yeah, see, I can just stay there. It's beautiful. Oh my god, wait, hey, uh, you're seriously my favorite person ever. I got that on the live stream. Hashtag VidCon Live. Someone said, Lily Newton, you're my favorite person ever. Wow. <laughs> you're, the, you're their favorite person ever? That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, Heathens says VidCon looks so fun. Wish I was there. It is very fun. If but you, you ever can get a be here with come, us. Please come, Heathens. Or at, rather, at Trash Called Eva. <laughs> Harsh. Harsh the, username. Oh, lot, someone said the SourceFed Q&A is going to be streamed. I'm V excited. I'm yeah. excited to There's see it. There's a lot of people excited about that. I mean, it's going to be live streamed. What kind of questions do you guys have for the SourceFed crew? I mean, do you miss me? Do you remember How's life me? Without me? The hard you know? topics. The hard hitting <laughs> topics. You should go the do. Hard hitting topics. You should go do like a table talk over there. Yeah. A what? Really? Me? Yeah. Would I be able to handle it? I think Maybe I know. I'm kind of fluffy. No, no I you're think not. you would. I'm very fluffy. I don't think you're that fluffy. I, you I'm live in fluffy. the moment. You have opinions. You live in the moment. I do, but I'm fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm in the moment, but I'm still fluffy. <laughs> but like, I'm fluffy. Don't get it twisted. No, I think you'd do well. I think it just it would just be you talking. Yeah. Being fluffy and delicious the whole time. Okay. You I are in the moment. You'd be perfect. Yeah. Oh my God. Give it a shot. I like That's the my intermittent dance I'm done doing business like, on their behalf, though. <laughs> and then right back to it. Oh, thank you. Uh, Electro Joe said, uh, couldn't ask for better hosts. Thank you. Oh, That's very sweet of you. thank you, Electro Joe. Um, guys, there's I was nothing on these cards. I'm going to read the rest of it, but Have you guys read away. that one yet? Because it's very sweet. Oh, cool. You guys are making me feel like I'm an actual thank you, Elvita, part of this. Like, I'm there. This oh. is awesome. Oh, thank you, Elvita. Oh, you my were God, that name. I love That's that. That's a great name, yeah, Elvita. Very nice. Soap opera. Yes. Like this is pretty much to its plots. Yes. I think the fact that we just had a conversation on feet contouring is uh, making it about as real as it could possibly get for people who aren't here. Because I feel like that's yeah. what happens. It, it ends up becoming just silly conversations anyway. <laughs> so why not, you know, be why privy to it? Keep doing it. Right? on the wall. I think it is really exciting, though, that it is going to be global. It's so exciting that like yeah. we're going to move forward with that. Because I do feel like there's a lot of people that can't make it here. Yeah, not uh, even just like the viewers. There's so many international creators yes. all over the place. Oh, yeah. That can't make it here. So that's exciting for them. That's very exciting. Yeah. Very, very exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like to see like all these people and like know that it's grown so exponentially. This is the seventh year they've done it. There's supposed to be like 25,000 people here. Which I heard is, 30, but... Oh, okay. I heard 30, she said. 13, I heard 30. <laughs> Ma'am. Now, just Brett comes in said so he hot was at the it. first one. Were you guys at the first one? I wasn't at the first no. one. I was at the third one. Okay. Yeah, third. Uh, yeah. Was it yeah. still super tiny? It was tinier it was for tinier sure. For yeah, sure. it's definitely... Uh, I think after the first two... I want to say right after... The year after that was when it was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. When it got really real. King's I'm going like, to start what we're going to do. Anytime you wave, I'm going to start waving directly back at you. <laughs> like you're waving at me. What if we just did a Kingsley wave count? I like that face, whatever face I'm making there. Oh, my gosh. That's you guys look terrifying. so elegant. Like we're you're having elegant. like the deepest talk. This is like our I'm, morning talk I'm show. I'm seeing that I need, to, I need to see that I sit, need to sit up more. <laughs> like, like I need to uh, sit up and maybe eat better in general. Um. This is, we're looking at a tag board. Uh, you guys can't see it, but we can, and we get to see all of your tweets and interact live with you guys. Coming up, of course, we do have the Q&A with SourceFed, so that's gonna be live streamed. You guys get to see that, so that'll be really, really super cool. We have a lot of stuff coming up on this VidCam Live, so get excited. Yeah, kids. it's gonna be a lot get of fun. Excited. We're gonna probably eat at some point. I'm at some excited point we about will that. eat, we will eat. Not on here. No, no. Did you guys say rude. eat? Yeah, oh, we're excited okay. about Food. I'm always excited about food. I know. Yeah. I was trying to deviate the conversation back toward food, but. Yeah. <laughs> All the I time. get it. Kingsley Just already had pancakes and bacon and strawberries. I don't know. You guys, you can't play around with this thing. You're here all day. You're right. We're talking right. all day. Yeah. You need energy. Okay? Yeah. There's a food pyramid. No, he's You right. know what's funny? Last night, four times, Lee was like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get some breakfast. And if I get I started did, with a good I breakfast, I'm going to have a good day. And that him. never like, happened. <laughs> you have to start with a breakfast as an essential part of your day. And then I woke up at 7 a.m. this morning and I was like, night, night. Uh, <laughs> good night. I did the 6.45 to 7. 
6.45 to 7. Yeah, I actually had a moment where I swear to you, I visualized in my head calling room service and ordering my food and went back to sleep, and it never happened. Oh, oh. I like when that happens. I, I sometimes morning dream where you're like, I'm getting ready, yeah. and then you wake up and you're like, I haven't been getting ready. It's scary. <laughs> I'm panicking. You have dreams where you're getting yeah, ready? Yeah, I'll have dreams where I'm just like, <laughs> You, that means your subconscious is like literally, literally being like, like Lee, you're get fine. up. You're fine. No, I think get. it's like lying. Like it's you're self-sabotaging. I know it is. You know, I'm I'm a perpetually late person. Today I was earlier than both of you, which is shocking to me. Yeah, every level. Not get carried away. You were like you were here, but I was right on your heel. No, you're right, Kingsley. I'm not going to get a carried away. That was the first peace sign. Was you were less sign. late. First so sign. those of you counting, that's five waves and one peace sign. <laughs> Keeping Kingsley. tabs. Somebody's at home with a whiteboard. All right. Yeah, I, you know somebody is, like though. Gonna, not even kidding. <laughs> no. Keeping I want to know by the end of this weekend how many waves, how many peace signs we're going to get from Kingsley. And it's really hard for me not call, to call Kingsley Kingsley Shacklebolt because I'm such a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> me too. Um, what house are you in? Me, I did the test and I think I was I was Ravenclaw. Oh my God, Ellie which I'm is shocked Ravenclaw. About. Are you really? Yes. Oh, oh that's nice. You read a lot. Right. So were you? Hufflepuff. Okay. You uh, <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. What, I what like Hufflepuff. Sense? You're Hufflepuff? No, I'm she's Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. He's Ravenclaw. Yes, you're Hufflepuff. You're yeah. Ravenclaw. Yeah. I'm straight. All right, I'm good. I got it. You got it? I figured it out. Elliot wanted to be Gryffindor, I think, but... I'm a Raven. Everyone want to be Gryffindor. Did I'm you only... want to be Ravenclaw? Absolutely. Oh, because they're the smart Claw, ones? Ravenclaw fits me better than... Like, I'm a, I am a Ravenclaw. There's yeah. no... I have no desire to be, what, Gryffindor? What, am I going to go play sports? Oh, hold up. What, am I going to be a What's hero? What's your beef with it Gryffindor? It seems a lot of work to be Gryffindor. And are you guys not? A, I no. mean, Ravenclaws have to be like intelligent and yes. sharp. No, that's and, so yes. much easier than being like competing with Harry Potter, competing with like all those big guys. Okay, no one was competing with Harry Potter. He's the chosen one. That's fair. Everybody, everybody my... thinks that Slytherin is all evil and Gryffindor is all good because that's how the archetypes play down the. And that's just their houses. They're they're without. <laughs> it houses. depends on the person within the houses. Dude, I, I get could be it. some sort of a hero, Ravenclaw, I guess. But I'm gonna be too busy reading up on potions. See, and I feel like I want to be a Hufflepuff, so I could literally just be like Hogwarts again. <laughs> I am internally they dying at this it. conversation. Yeah, we're I mean, like dead really, serious right now. I'm as dead serious right now. There's the serious hall, conviction just... in my town. <laughs> and I feel like that's what it is. I can be like, desserts every day. And I want like, like somebody to edit like a scene in Harry Potter, but with you as an extra in the background, just like, like, there's more <laughs> treacle tart if you're interested. <laughs> Have you guys been to the Wizarding World? Yes. Yeah. I haven't. Oh. I went to the one in Florida. Come on. I, that's the one I want to go to. That's like the real one, the big yes. one. Yes, the absolutely. The one at Universal Studio, though, is doing it. What? It, it, it's doing it good. It's yeah. not doing it like great, but it's doing it really hi. good. Say hi. hi. <laughs> Say hi. You're like, hey. I feel like they're going to get, because there's bars here. You guys can't yeah. see, but there's bars here. And so I feel like it looks like we're like caged hosts. Yes, <laughs> like, we I are. Like, I like to imagine that they're caged and oh. they're like, but that's just me using that my imagination. That is you being positive. Yeah. I like to imagine that I'm caged and like they're taking a picture and I'm like, ah! Uh, <laughs> like at any given moment. But seriously, butterbeer is amazing. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> you guys are making me so It's exactly sad. what you think it tastes like. Go to the Universal Studios I'm going one. To go. I'm going to go. I have on my a season list. pass. I'll go with you. I bought a wand last time and they're interactive. You can go around and do magic around the place. Huh? Yeah. I don't know why you haven't done it. I don't know Next either. Next time, I... I'll go with you. I'll wear my Hufflepuff outfit because I have one. What is sure. a Hufflepuff sure. outfit? What's it's your just, Hufflepuff outfit? It's just a really beautiful uh, shawl that I sewed a Hufflepuff patch on. So I look like a Hufflepuff prefect. Okay. That's it's very... not a big deal. <laughs> well, you made yourself a prefect within the I Hufflepuff house? Like, what does that prefect do ever? <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just it means that they have, like, people? all the treats. They're like, I have all of the candy. What other YouTubers do you guys think would be in Hufflepuff with you? Uh, well, if we're going to be honest, I made Grace, when we did my music, I made Grace Helbig take the quiz. Yeah. She's a Gryffindor. That makes oh. sense. That checks out. Makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. Um, Jarrett Sleeper, I made him. He's also a Gry Gryffindor. Uh, I feel like Joe Beretta, he was a Gryffindor. Wasn't yeah. he? He was a Gryffindor. Yes, he was. That's we that was the old one. The, quiz too. the old he quiz. Was, he was a they Gryffindor. They changed it a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Like he was, and then he got like kicked out. He got and kicked had to out. Come back. He's not oh. good anymore. Oh. Um, I think you know in your heart 
already. Yeah. And I think it, if you get it the wrong answer, you know, or like if it's split, like if Ice, for example, hypothetically speaking, sure. got Ravenclaw and Slytherin, like I know I'm a Ravenclaw. You know you're a Ravenclaw. So I'm going to go with Ravenclaw. Very I mean, and I I've said this, and this. I mean it, and I know it's insane because I'm a 31-year-old woman. Uh, people that usually get Slytherin, I don't get along with. Does anyone? Does yeah. anyone? I mean, did we ever see any Slytherin not hanging out with a Slytherin? In Kingsley, any I'm so glad that you're on board with this conversation. <laughs> right. I, it just didn't happen. It just doesn't have happen. Have you guys, have you seen the new book? Have you read the new book? There's a booth over here for the Fantastic, Fantastical Beasts. How to Catch, what is it? <laughs> Fantastic Beasts? Fantastic yeah. Beasts? I don't know exactly I'm, what it is. I'm messing it up and I feel horrible about it. But there is a book out right now and and there's a booth here that's really interactive about it and it makes me so happy i have to go and stop by and be like hello Hamora. yeah yeah you i know? have to like i have to like work my way up to it i'm one of yeah. those stubborn people like oh there's no ron hermione harry i'm not reading it I'm i don't out. care yeah yeah it's not what but i'm about. gonna read it oh yeah it's her so it's the same <laughs> if it's thing jk rowling i'm oh, gonna look, read there we are mm -hmm. guys there we are oh hey. hashtag yeah. on live is the best thing this week i'm so happy Oh, Lee and Elliot are awesome with Kingsley. That's you. Yes, it is. That's you. James is watching at 2 a.m. in the Philippines. Oh, my what goodness. They're watching at 2 a.m. In, in the Philippines. That's amazing. See, Dedication. the internet's really That's great. That's incredible. Um, oh, and, then, and it's back. Perfect. That was That's fun. That's awesome. James, that is dedication. That's absolute dedication, 100%. Look at all I'm that. so glad that you guys get to watch this now. Like, there's so much that happens and so much that goes on, and it makes me happy that everyone gets to be a part of this. Yes. It's so much bigger. It's very, really than cool. This. And if you guys have any questions for us, by the way, you yes. can feel free to use the hashtag, and it'll probably pop up on there, and hashtag we can answer VidCon it accordingly Live. if you would like. Do you want to say the hashtag again? Say it again. It's hashtag VidCon Live it's or hashtag VidCon, hashtag Live. VidCon 2016. Wow. But if you want us to see it, it's hashtag VidCon Live. Yes. Oh, is it just VidCon Live? Okay, yes. great. Oh, that's, yep, you're right. Yeah. That's Come the one on. we're feeding in. Hashtag Come on. VidCon Live. From Sweden. I love Sweden so much. Elvira, I went to Stockholm this summer and I had the time of my life. I've never been anywhere except London. Kingsley? Not complaining. But I'm just like, <laughs> I've never been anywhere you have besides to get that, out you know, more. one of those places. I know. I just got my passport this year. Are you oh, gonna collab? So you gotta go and collab with a whole bunch I of people. I know. There's so many. I, we were just talking. There's so many overseas people. Louise, yes. Marcus, Caspa. Oh, I'm just, so, so excited. Many. Yeah. Anyway, well, guys, we are running a tad bit late right now, but the great news is uh, we can now watch a little bit of the good old-fashioned source-fed Q&A. Our friends uh, over there. So I hope hey they're, yeah. they're doing great. Enjoy. Ian White Kid. Not White Kid. Not Don't White worry. Kid. Not White Kid. Don't worry. Um, is he a White Kid? <laughs> I would say I would say two experiences. One, the good, right? When you get to actually meet everyone in person and it becomes a real thing, it's the most mind-blowing thing. Whether it's here or you meet someone at a food court or an airport, amazing. The other experience is um, living in my car for a month because this is something that I really, really loved um, and I wanted to do before we could actually make money from it. So just know that there's ups and downs. That's the number one thing before jumping into to creating content on YouTube. That. Uh, it, it, it seems awesome, and it is awesome, but there's definitely a scary side to it. I think my advice is there's no such thing as being good anymore. You actually can't get through with just being good because there's so many people that are great. So if you're really going to commit to this and you're going to start your own channel and you're going to dedicate your time and your energy to it, you have to be great. The best thing is, is that each single one of you have the ability to be great. But what you need is determination, motivation, and then developing your skill set, which means anything you don't know how to do, learn. We are on the internet now. All your answers are all there. So if you want to learn how to edit, there's online tutorials. If you want to learn how to do graphics, you're capable of doing that as well. And that's the difference between you know having millions of people that want to be content creators and people that actually do it for a living. So here's to being great. You can do it. Good on you. 
I'd say there's also a lot of consistency involved because YouTube is very much about representing yourself genuinely. So you have to continue doing the same things over and over and make sure that you're permeating your personality across all over the place. So the more honest you are, the genuine you are, it's difficult because you're vulnerable, but that's what works. Like strangely enough, that connection that we have with you is because we're being honest on camera and it's terrifying all the time. Also, you have to be okay that you're cringy. Like sometimes when I watch back videos, I'm like, I want to die, but I guess it's going to get approved, so let's just put it up, and you have to be okay with it. But you, A, get used to it, and suddenly you're like all of a sudden not cringy any longer, and it's kind of a beautiful thing. Um, I would say, first of all, never forget who you are. Like, don't chase, it, like, there's a great desire, I think, when you want to be on YouTube or we want to be a YouTuber for things to grow really, really fast. You want to see some return on your investment. But the best piece of advice that I ever got in my career is that you're learning something new every day for every day of your career. You never stop learning. You're never not a student. Things take time for a reason. So start small, do something that won't burn you out consistently, and things will come as they come. Come. You can't rush anything. Just make good stuff. Great stuff. I agree. Great stuff. Uh, <laughs> I like, okay, here's the thing. You got to make things for yourself. I mean, right now you probably like consume a lot of like uh, media, like you watch a lot of things, and because of that you have a very heightened sense of what's good and what's bad. And if you play to your own senses and say, this thing that I made, I would like it, then you're doing a good job. If you make something and you don't like it, that means something because you know what you like and what you don't like. So always play your sensibilities to yourself. Um, don't worry about what everybody else is doing, even though you know at some point you're gonna have to. But I'd say just as long as you stay true to yourself and you know that the thing you're making is good to you, you'll do good. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Boo. Thank you for clapping for me. Uh, I'm going to just repeat what a good friend of mine once told me, uh, Tom Hanks. He said, what the hell are you doing in my apartment? How did you find my apartment? And I said, uh, star maps. And he was like, I don't care. You need to get out of here right now or I'm going to call security. And, and then I said, can I just get one piece of advice from you, Mr. Hanks? And, I, and he said, hurry up, but the cops are almost here, so do it, do it quick. And I said, what is your advice for someone trying to break into the industry? And he said, stop. There's too many people in the industry already. Don't try. And I said, thank you, and I left, and I was arrested. That was really brave of you to tell that story. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, when you're the seventh person down the line, it's kind of hard to come up with a different answer. How but do you say the same thing in a different way? Get ready for this, kids. Listen up. <laughs> Take out your phone. Start recording. Um, what you want to do is never give up. Never surrender. Free? You want to go? <laughs> yep. Yes, I do. <laughs> My advice would be, do not do this for any reason other than the fact that you love it. That's it. Uh, you guys all make stuff, right? You all make videos and, videos and stuff. Raise your hand if you make videos. Yeah, hell yeah. Everyone's hand should be up. At some point, you're going to make something and it's going to blow up. It's going to get hundreds of thousands of views. Now what you do is you go through your phone and you call everyone one by one. You say, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> Family, friends. Next question. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Cheyenne Adnan says, who's the funniest slash best YouTuber? I'm going to work it all the way right back. You, you had such a good answer, Mike. You, you're the first one to answer this time. I had seven people to think of that answer. <laughs> Damn that. Um, I think everybody up here is really funny, so you guys can't say that. Nah. Uh, a ton of people, man. I, I admire a lot of my friends. It's real easy. I think Steve's one of the funniest people I know. Elliot Morgan's fine. 
A lot of people. So many funny people. Bree says funny things once in a while. Everybody. Everybody. Oh! <laughs> I wasn't a gunshot, Will. Everybody okay? Good? I thought we had heightened security. <laughs> we can't be protected from the mic. <laughs> Who on here? I think it? the funniest person on YouTube is Mike Balzone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I don't. I've never been into watching comedy uh, people on YouTube ever. I don't like to laugh ever. That's never been my thing. But Steve's pretty good. He's pretty good. Don't get, don't get uppity about it. Yeah. Uh, there's top YouTuber JD Witherspoon. There's Ross Everett. I think, honestly, How To Basic. How To Basic is the funniest motherfucker on the internet. End of story. Uh, I'm gonna say Falzone. Out here that does it for the reason is Falzone. Just because. No, everybody look at him. <laughs> Doing. It's Falzone. Yeah. Uh, I'd also, I'd agree on how to basic end on Falzone. Falzone makes me laugh more than just about anybody. Um, man, I don't know. I like nuclear family. <laughs> Oh. Well, obviously Mike Falzone. <laughs> like, is there any other answer? <laughs> no. Yeah. Are you guys subscribed to his channel, youtube.com slash Mike Falzone? <laughs> Yo, who know the Wi-Fi in here? So my favorite <laughs> moments that I've ever had, the hardest I've ever laughed, uh, I'm a little bit like Sam, I don't, um, I don't watch too much. I watch a lot of Game of Thrones and that's kind of it. But when I want to laugh, I just listen to these lovely people. The funniest moments I've ever had <laughs> was when Will told me his teeth hurt when he eats crunchy peanut butter. <laughs> I have never laughed so hard on a table talk until then. Look, all right. That's just hypersensitive. Why the hell? Does crunchy peanut butter exist? It's the best. It's Where my crunchy good. peanut butter is at? A lot of answers out here. See? No, crunchy no, no, folks no. up in the left and the right. It's like peanut butter, except it hurts you. No, no, no. no. It hey, it's crunchy you. or go home. <laughs> it's creamy or go to bed. It's crunchy or go home. It's creamy or go to bed. It's crunchy or go home. It's creamy or go to bed. Let's agree to disagree. Are, are we fighting or is this, um, is this oddly It's creamy or they haven't even reached home. their final form. Nikki Philippi, Nikki, Nikki Philippi, Nikki Philippi, Nikki, Nikki And now someone's pregnant. That's how it happens. Also, like smooth peanut the other butter fun. is like really easy to choke on. That was just my two cents. <laughs> I am so confused. Um, my answer, unfortunately, is not Mike Falzone, although I love you. Um, I think it's a... Uh, fight! 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 fight, fight. fight. Uh, this new guy just recently found Joe Santaga Santagato. Hey, there we go. There's some love. I've, I've recently found him. But I, I also, on YouTube, I generally just have, like, these amazing things where all of a sudden someone's my favorite YouTuber for about a week. And then I'm like, you're the funniest person, and then I stop watching your videos. But right now, it's Joe. Um, casually, like, almost accidentally, but on purpose funny, probably um, Rhett and Link, A Good Mythical Morning. So just naturally, just naturally funny, guys. I saw them drink pee recently. <laughs> they drank But did you laugh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh no. Hey Maud. Yeah. Can can you fill in with a fake question while I look for another one? Yeah, someone will yell something out surely and I'll listen to it. Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> What's our favorite dance moment? Ooh. Should I do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump down, jump down. Oh jump man. Down, jump down. Take a risk, Will, jump down. That seems incredibly unsafe, but it's whatever you want. Alright. I love Will's doing this. 
<laughs> Ten bucks says this ends in horrible feedback. If, 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 if <laughs> Will touches any of you inappropriately, just raise your hand. You mean like bad the people comments? In no, no, I'm not the one. Nobody t- I'm not. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to know how often do how is. often do fart jokes Hi. get made? What's your name? Danielle. Danielle. What do you? Yeah, Danielle. Was it, the question was fart jokes? What yeah. How often do fart jokes get made? And we, what's the best one? We work with Steve Zaragoza. Yeah. I know. Every day. It's it's constant fart jokes all day. I got I, a really important one right here. Oh, did we answer that yet? Steve doesn't. What? Yeah, Steve it's just doesn't. Steve. It's I think it's literally just Steve. I don't even like fart jokes anymore. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. No, yes, only do. when Will, they're real you farts. you do the, um, maybe the most fart jokes recently. Well, it's because I have something going on in my ingestional system. Yeah. Okay. Will you, you might, finish? Well, it's personal. No, I have a condition, and you guys think it's funny. It's you personal. Keep to it to yourself, to your man. Farts. You finish sentences going, I need to do a shit. I've seen your me in my life. I, it's... It's all right. Hi, I'm Beth. Um, Hi, Beth. So, why are Phil and Mike wearing the same thing? Oh. Fight, 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 the reason why they're wearing the same thing is because they both shop at Ross. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Everett. Phil shops at Ross Millionaire. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Ross What's going on? I love you, Steve. You're so weird. Um, so this is a question that was from someone, and then I lost their name. When you, uh, when you have a kid, how soon will you let them be on YouTube, like in control of their own channel? No, no. Immediately. In control of their no, own no. channel. Trying uh, to make money. This is, I don't know, this is like a thing that I struggle with. Is as far as in control, I hate it because I know some of you are probably younger than this, but like I, I probably wouldn't hand off until like 16, 17. I'm like super, I'm helicopter parent. Um, but but I'll, I'll, I'll run it for him if he wants to so he can express himself, but I don't know. I've seen too many examples in the past two months of just really young kids uh, kind of losing it when they get any sort of fame. So I'd say for a very long time, nope, not happening. What is it like for you? You put photos of Trey up and then all of a sudden there are memes that other people are using. Like that, you don't really have control over that and there's a sense of vulnerability. Yeah, I mean, when, when, whenever you put yourself or your family or anyone out, you need to know that someone might just grab it. The only creepy ones are when I personally find it creepy when people take pictures of like my son or other kids of other YouTubers I know and then they create role play accounts where they act like they're that kid or they act Oops. like they're that parent. That's a little, that makes me feel uncomfortable a little bit. But um, You're but, telling me I haven't been DMing Trey? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, you just, you need to understand that people are going to just take stuff and once you throw something out on the internet, you need to be ready for like a roller coaster ride if anything. I think as soon as you put something out there, you're inviting people to have an opinion on that. And I think that when you're quite young, it's really hard to have strangers tell you what they think of you. You really need thick skin, and I think you kind of need to have a sense of who you are before you put yourself out there. I was talking to Sam about this, actually, where there are kids that are playing around on the computer, and these videos are going viral for all the wrong reasons. There's a girl who accidentally ripped some of her hair out when she was curling. There was another kids where their mother walked in saying, Oi, who did that shit in the toilet? You got a floor. kids you know so yeah I s- even go up like who allowed that to go up exactly i saw that but who uploaded that video what? the kids were like i'm That's just gonna, gonna snitch on myself yeah. uh-huh. and now what's even worse is those kids can't flush the toilet for the rest of their lives because then it's off brand <laughs> and then they're gonna lose all their uh, sponsorships all their sponsorships no more poopery it's gone gone can't say goodbye you had college taken care of. Yeah, Febreze, Lysol, dead to him. <laughs> Shouldn't have where does Darren away. think he's going? Is Darren, 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 where are you Darren, going, Darren? Darren, Darren, Darren you can't out. leave. No, nope. you can't leave. Don't he has nowhere else again, to go. Darren. Oh, you bored, Darren? 
Awesome. What are you gonna go back to the Calvin Klein thing? Oh, Joe Beretta. What hey. is that, Joe Beretta over there? Apparently they say that Joe Beretta does is it better. Jo is that Joe Beretta over hold there? Hold him back, hold him back. He's not on payroll, he can't come up here. <laughs> Joe spent most of last night telling us how much better his cast was than us. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh my, he didn't oh, they were, oh, they left. I don't even like Keith Lee Jr. I'm gonna have a vasectomy live on um, Ustream soon. So if you guys want to see that, just check my Twitter for all the information. What so. bad movie is going to be playing in the background? Uh, there will be Howard the Duck will be playing at the same time, so we can watch that together while perfect, I get my reception. Perfect. All right, so uh, when, you, when you're tweeting as well, you can also just ask a question for one specific person like Dr. McLean, who says, Mike, I know you're a wrestling fan. If, if, uh, what entrance music would you use? If you, when you entered a room. All of them at once. <laughs> I think they're all so good. If they all played simultaneously, loud, hurdy loud, that would be the best. Do that kick that you do every single morning. Uh oh, oh no. Hit him in the chin, just do it. <laughs> Should we take a question from the audience again? Do you just want to get up, are you tired? Actually, and while he's walking down, just a question for whoever is working with him directly. Um, with Joel Rubin from Funhouse coming on, how is he helping you guys with content and shows? Um, Joel's an incredibly smart guy. Well, he has a dog, has first of all. Dog. <laughs> Sheep dog oh, named oh, Billy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, shit. What? Randy just said that Joel had the best no, 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 no. dog. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Zelda I, is I don't, the I don't best know if, if well, anyone no, on stage is going to no, argue. <laughs> I take yeah. it all back. Zelda is the best dog. Thank you. Riggs is the best dog. Oh, I will I'll find you! I don't question understand over here. anything yeah. that's being said. I got a question. Fight, 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 fight. Kiss. <laughs> I don't want to have to do that again, okay? Hope you learned your lesson. I got that's, a question over that, here. That's getting is gifted that in like three is? seconds. Hi. Hello. That was hot. Hi, Sahara. What about dogs? Um, so my question was, how do you go from a um, an idea or a concept of a series on your channel, like D and D or something like that, yes. to actually executing it. What was your name? Sahara. Hi, Sahara. <laughs> Hello. Um, well, D and D was something that I wouldn't back down from. So I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for four years now. Yes. Because I get laid. Um, <laughs> And I, I love it. So it's so immersive in the RPG elements and storytelling. And I came to this job and I was like, we're all a bunch of storytellers. And everyone's a closet nerd, whether you'll admit it or not. So I pitched it to the table and the first thing that I got back was, Trish has been trying to do this forever. Get over it, give up. And I took Sam's advice and I didn't give up. It's the only advice you've offered today. Yeah. But I didn't. And um, ended up doing some of these campaigns which have been going really, really well. But I think it's the, it, you've got to have a solid idea and um, information and knowledge to back it so that when you bring it to the table, you don't slip and fall. You can just charge. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that like d and is a great example or really with, with anything, figure out like how is it different than something else? Like what makes it better than something else? Because like with D&D, yeah, there are a lot of like D&D shows out there or tabletop shows or storytelling shows, but it's like, let's come up with something that has a great story that's also really, really funny. And I think that like that's what makes it different. Like figure out what you wanted to do and then just try it. If you don't like how it came out, figure out what you didn't like and try it again until it's something that you're proud of and then just start replicating that thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not on D&D, but in terms of just making a show, um, if, if you have fun doing it and you feel like you're, for me, if I feel like I'm adequately using my voice to express an opinion that isn't so basic, then I want to do it more. That's how I start on a show. Yeah, sometimes the mod is right. You gotta have some solid ideas, but you also have to have tiny ideas. Have the tiniest ideas you can, oh. and then try to implement them I, in tiny ways. And that's what birth Sam's tiny place. Cut to a clip. Can you go ahead and play the <laughs> hashtag sponsored? There you go. But just have. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm full of stupid ideas, and I want to try to execute them as much as possible. So like, I got. I found a bathtub around the office. Made a show out of it. Is it good? Well, it's okay. <laughs> it's a B plus if we're being honest. Just. Don't overthink it. I know everyone, I was in like your guys' position where you don't know what you want to do. Like, cause you want to, you see all these people, you watch them every day and you look up to them, you're like, I want to be like them. 
you can, but you can also be you. And I'd much rather watch all of you guys because you probably have a bunch of awesome ideas. So get in a bathtub, get in a tiny place. <laughs> Find your, Find tiny, your place. tiny place. <laughs> That's what it is. I feel like I'm very thankful to have an outlet where we can do some of the most insane shit we can think of. Especially on Nuclear Family, where they let us do insane stuff. And I think, I don't know, I guess I'm just thankful they let us do all that. And, they, and we can like actually make it, and you guys like it, and then we make more. Wash, rinse, repeat. Everybody, who likes Dave and Ross a lot? Oh, thank you, Sam. It's the best, right? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, really quick, uh, Mitch at VidCon wanted to point out, guys, there's a problem. Now Sam and Mike are wearing the same thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Take it off, Mike. I'm like, does he bite, have a third bite, shirt? Bite, 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 bite. Sam, you've got this. Uh, Sam's trying to take it off. Please come with your so shirt off. No. So please I'm, come back I'm just with like, your shirt off. Please tell me he comes out shirtless. I, I need a couch buddy. He better be shirtless. No, come back. Commit, 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 commit. Commit to the commit. bit. <laughs> if he's gone, can I pull a couch buddy? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. Blue dress. Blue sh heart. Yes, yes, yes. And this is where it went <laughs> off the rails. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, my God. Oh. I was doing half and half. I have a new couch, buddy. It now. worked. Boo, you're not naked, is what that was. That's what they just did. She can, take, she can still come up here. Oh, questions yeah. down there. Oh. Yeah. He can still come up here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ow! Woo! Got you covered. Yeah. <laughs> so, when uh, you first episode. started on SourceFed, what were your first thoughts? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, hanging around Sam was a really weird experience. <laughs> like, you thought he would be, like, funny in real life, like, not just when he's scripted, but he's... <laughs> <laughs> How much money did Sam Venmo you? A lot. That's, a, that's what I thought. What? I said, how much did you Venmo that, that person? <laughs> Do we have another question? <laughs> no, no more questions. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we'll go, we'll go. Hashtag oh. one more time. If you guys, grab your phones out. We've got a hashtag if you want to submit your questions this way. It might be easy as well. Is it SSF? Ask SF Philly D. Ask. Right on the screen. Ask SF Philly D. Ask. Um, hashtag sponsored. Ruben Delight at VidCon says, uh, where do you draw the line on leaving comments or deleting them? I've, gotten, I've recently gotten a ton of hate trying to figure it out. I, uh, if, someone, if someone's just blindly hating and spewing out like the worst garbage ever, not without an opinion, uh, that's, that's a mute, a mute or a block at least. And then if someone just hates me but they have like an argument behind it, I'll leave it because I, like I like to have those people to bounce off of because if... It's very easy, especially in LA, or actually, I mean, anywhere, to, to kind of get in this echo chamber where you're like, oh yeah, everybody thinks this, uh, but that's not the case. And that's kind of one of the beautiful things about YouTube, um, and one of the reasons I try to see both sides is just because everyone's got a different opinion, everyone wakes up thinking that it's, it's a valid one, um, and then let's have a conversation. So sometimes people get that, get that same thing across in a dickish way, so I don't block those people. A lot of people do talk about censorship in these comments where it's like you shouldn't censor what people have to say to you. I have the same, I treat the comments how I would treat someone coming up to me in real life. If someone's going to come up to me and yell at me and threaten rape and you know that I should die of cancer and my family not miss me, I don't think that they would do that and that's not acceptable to say to someone's face. So it's not acceptable in the comments. And it's like you don't have to listen to that. If, if, if someone came up to you and started yelling at that, you wouldn't stand there going, what else? Get it all out. Did you want to, you know, add insult? Did it keep, keep, keep it going? No, you would walk away, and you would say that's not cool. I, I don't have to listen to that, and I feel that that's the same in the comments. But if someone again is having a constructive argument with you, hey, I don't like this because. That's a conversation that you could have to my face. And I'm like, hey, I'll take that point on. And you're right, you're not gonna be like, ooh, anything negative doesn't exist. Because that's just not reality as well. But there is absolutely a line that you can censor and say, not cool, delete. Thankfully, 
Thankfully, the super ragey things are rather few and far between, um, so we're lucky in that aspect, but they definitely do exist. Um, Subtic and I had a rule of thumb when we were on uh, Super Panic Frenzy, and it was generally, if it was mean about us, we would keep it up there, but if they're mean to each other, we would monitor it. But yeah, if it's about us and like we suck, we know, so we're gonna leave it up there. Yeah. Um, this is like kind of related and kind of not, but just sort of like, a, if you're just starting out with a channel, um, one thing that I learned pretty early on at SourceFed, don't respond to negative comments, like ever, and not necessarily because it's like feeding the trolls, but because the more you respond to someone's negative comment, even if there's like a whole thread of people defending you, it bumps the comment up to the top because there's so much activity on it. And sometimes people, when they're watching their video and, and they haven't made an opinion yet about you or about your content, and they see a bunch of people hating on it, they might think that that's just how it is or it's not worth watching and stop watching or think that that's the truth about you. Um, so just ig ignore it if you can, is what I would say, yeah. Uh, it's like, how do we respond to negative comments? Or it's, <laughs> what, how do you feel about censoring negative comments, like removing like, them? What do you do like for people be like, if somebody's like, I hate you, die? I was actually thinking of this today when I was in the hallway. I was thinking, like, if you have an issue with people saying, I hate you, don't do this. Yeah. This is not something for you. If, if It's just some people are like that, and if you don't want to deal with that, you're in the wrong room. Does anyone here hate Will? <laughs> There's like eight dudes. At least they're hey, doing hey, it to hey, your hey. face. Hey, really quick. Fight, do you notice fight, what's, fight, do, fight, wait, fight, fight, fight. Do you fight, notice what's fight. the same about all eight of those dudes? What? <laughs> Just think about it, Will. White men. <laughs> I like to take all the negative comments about me and I decorate my walls with all the comments. I post mine to Instagram. I like it. Yeah. Keeps me on my toes. <laughs> There is an account called I Hate Matt Lieberman, and as far as I know, I'm its only subscriber. I'm sorry I started that account. It was just, it was my bad. Dude, put up new videos. I haven't seen any in the longest time. Oh my god, wait, do we have any more? Baby what? Trey. What? Baby, Baby Trey. Trey. What about Baby Trey? Just think about him. Just think about him. Make Just think about him. Think about your son. All right, so this, this question came from the beautiful Atlins DeFranco. Ah. Um, Oh, Bill, where are you? I want to make love. What? Um, so the question was, what did your parents want you to be? What, like, what job did they want you to have? Uh, and for me, my dad wanted me to be a doctor. I think a lot of people that watch me know that. Uh, and I was horribly equipped for that job. Uh, and so luckily I found YouTube. Uh, he got over it, though. Mom wanted me to be educated. <laughs> it didn't matter what I studied as long as I went to college and I got a degree. Um, but I, I, do, you have, do you have a degree? Hell no! Oh, okay. I didn't go to college. I don't want to spend so much money figuring out what I could maybe want to do. Uh, I ended up getting my first job in television at 19 when everyone else was in college. And I think by 21 I was earning more than the lecturers at universities, but that still wasn't good enough for my mother because it wasn't a degree. But she's moved on now. I don't have to get a degree. I now have to own a house. So there's always something, you know? <laughs> um, my mom wanted me to be an artist of sorts because she's a floral arrangement designer. Um, and she wanted me to work with like colors and she wanted me to paint stuff. I was not about that at all. I wanted to work in the sciences. I wanted to be like an FBI agent. I wanted to work forensics. I completely went against that. But now I'm kind of doing art and I feel like she should respect that. <laughs> but otherwise, I think she also wants me to be a chef, which is never going to happen. No, 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 no. I don't want that. Um, my folks basically just said, you can be anything you want, but you can't be an actor. Um, <laughs> it's like that kind of like double message. I think my dad really wanted me, he was a, he was a banker and he really wanted me to do the same thing. Um, my mom just wanted me to have something with a steady paycheck, so I guess I'm winning in that regard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when I was 17, I graduated high school and I wanted to be a journalist because I wanted, if, I wanted to be Jon Stewart more than anything. So I told myself I was gonna go to school for journalism, learn how to be a smart person, and then work for the media. But my dad was like, no. He made me go to film school. 
And coincidentally, the film school I went to was very, very close to where DeFranco was at, and then I got my internship there. So they wanted, they wanted me to be, my dad wanted me to be a movie director, I wanted to be a journalist, and I feel like I found something in between. And then I just really recently just messed it all up and did something else. But so far, you know, daddy proud, <laughs> mommy proud, catacomb proud. Sister proud? Yeah. Uh-uh. No. No. Baby Trey? <laughs> Baby Trey proud of you? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. uh, my parents were always extremely supportive. They didn't care what I did as long as I left my room. Uh, so, and they were just always like, you want to draw? Do that. You want to direct? Do that. You want to do sketches? Do that. You want to play with puppets in your room at 3 a.m.? Do that. So they were always supportive. In fact, my mom is still supportive. She calls me up and says, mm-hmm, Santa. Aww. My mom says that. So I've, it's weird my mom watches that, to be honest. It's a little inappropriate. My mom doesn't watch. <laughs> Ever since she saw me, you, and Joe talk about Jesus, she's done. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to your mom, I'm just happy she doesn't think I'm racist anymore. Because she was so sweet, and I was like, yes. She wanted to get a photo with you the last time I was here. She was here. I was like, you can't be taking photos <laughs> with my friends. Yeah. Wait, Will, what was the thing that your mom said about Steve? Don't let that man touch you anymore? Don't let that bearded man touch you. <laughs> if she had saw all that. And that was like three years ago. Yeah. Oh, we touch a lot. Yeah. We touch too much. Uh, I'm the third out of like a litter of kids, so yeah, I, could, I was up to any, but I could do whatever I really wanted. They really forced music, which is the opposite that every parent ever forces them to do. So I played like violin and saxophone and everything, ditched all that, ended up here. So life's kind of a. a... There you go. <laughs> I'm the helpful one on the stage with advice. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, and not Sam. <laughs> Uh, my parents just wanted me to be happy, which is why I spend most of my life poor, real, real poor. I do a lot of things that are creatively fulfilling, and that's very nice, and I consider myself very lucky, but my parents were always like, if you could pay your bills, then, uh, then they're happy and they support whatever you do just because you're able to pay your bills and, and work your own way. So that's pretty much it. Oh, I got one. Thank you, Mike. Uh, well, when I was nine, I told my parents that I wanted to be a mechanic, and my dad bought me a toolkit, and he was more supportive of that than when I said a year later that I wanted to be an actor. He was like, do whatever you want, just not acting, just like Matt's parents. Because my dad used to be an actor, and he got rejected a lot, and he knows exactly what it's like, and he wasn't wrong. It's like one of the hardest things to do, but I love it so much. I don't care. Bye, Dad. <laughs> Aceland? Um, well, growing up, my mom wanted me to be a straight Christian female, and I'm now a pagan, gay, trans man. So... <laughs> it's been an interesting experience. Whenever, whenever a Steve's era goes a hug starts, I never know when it's gonna end, so I was like, okay, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Uh, Will, are you okay to go into the crowd again real fast? Uh, cause, cause we have a, we have a question, well, it's not really a question. Amber says, I have a pie for you, can I please give it to you? What kind of pie? Uh, what kind of pie? Yeah. Oh, Amber, it's you? Okay, so what Will. Pie? <laughs> Calm down, jeez. Is it poison pie? pie? Will, That's my Will. favorite. This way. This way? You have to. Uh, what is that pie filled with? I've definitely made you before. What kind is it? Oh, no. What just happened? Guys, if you don't know Amber, she's in the SourceFed subreddit picture. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's yeah. The one. yeah. That she's was the one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. finally, you have the answer to the question. It's her. She's Will. the one in the picture. Okay. Will, 
the I'm fact that confused. she's the fact that she's in the banner did that make you like less weirded out by potentially eating this food? Uh, I'm not eating it up here. So I but feel safer about she it. She told me that there's a Drake build a bear in here. <laughs> what? Is that really? That's Open amazing. It. And she also told me there's a button on it that I need to press and I'm scared. Open it. Oh, it's what? happening. Show us. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my that's god. so adorable. Shut up. <laughs> Eat the bear. I don't think Does I've ever have seen Will this happy in my life. I wish it was Is it saying something? <laughs> I don't think that's gonna work. Oh. This is terrifying. Why, I was like, why are you going lower with the microphone? Started from the bottom, now we bear. It's disturbing. From behind, that looks horrible. <laughs> I'm at the wrong angle. <laughs> Maybe it needs a battery. Oh, it's Hotline Bling is what he's saying, yeah. <laughs> it's loud up here, but thank it's you so It's too loud, much. but that's awesome. Mm-hmm, Santa. What else is in the sack? Oh, thank you. Chocolate. Thank you. Is it chocolate? Chocolate. Uh, chocolate. So, so a single question to Mike Valzone. Have you ever straightened your hair, Mike? Yes, it's very long. Very curly hair. How long? Uh, How long my, is your hair? It's down to my ankles. What? My fiance does it every once in a while. She says it's a relaxing experience. And I hate it. Oh. It is hot. But hey, thanks. I still hate it, though, so no, much. No, I meant it's hot when you straighten your hair. Oh, thank you very much. That's, I wish I had more to say, but I don't. All right, so then we have, uh, let's see. Uh, well, this isn't a funny one. 10% uh, Ethanol says, uh, have you ever had a moment or a period of time where you've wanted to give up making videos? Uh, I've had like five over the course of 10 years. It's very easy to just get really down on yourself. But um, I don't know, I just, I, I, I think I've done this long enough to realize there's just ups and downs of my emotions that what I'm feeling today is not gonna be the way that I feel tomorrow. So whether it's kind of YouTube or anything, that's, that's kind of helped me. But uh, I, I don't know, I, I love it too much. I, uh, I've had lots of opportunities to, to jump ship off of YouTube and try other things. And I don't think I'll, unless something drastically changes with the website, I don't think I'll ever actually do that. There's only so much that a person can take and when you do put yourself out there so much and you're constantly getting that kind of feedback, both positive and negative, and you're kind of giving a lot of yourself and your truth and your, you know, it's very vulnerable. And so sometimes you just go, have I given everything that I have and am I empty now? And I think you just need to stop and recharge and then keep on going. And Phil's capacity is two years by the sounds of it. And that's really impressive. Don't worry, I'll say something mean soon to take it back and even it out. Um, I think it happens in every career or every moment. Like, I remember in college, I wanted to quit. I remember in high school, I wanted to quit. I remember training to be a pastry chef, I wanted to quit and I quit. So, like... You were going to be a pastry chef? Yes. Why uh, don't you cook for us? Because I don't want to... What is that? It's happening. It's just my helicopter. Phil says it's his helicopter. Kind of it's Phil's helicopter to take him to his room. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> what you call me? <laughs> what? 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 What the hell are you talking about? Anyway, uh, uh, it's, uh, last last fall, I I got really burnt out. I was making videos. Um, four days a week and had been making videos like four to seven days a week for like over a year. And that's too much, like when you're also have a full-time job that's also making videos. Um, so I, I needed to take a breather. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with my channel, but like, yeah, it happens. Sometimes you just, you get burnt out and you need to figure out exactly how much of yourself and how much of your life you can give to making videos. Thank you. Uh, oh, hello. Not hello? your dad. Hi. Know, I hey. Uh, I thought about quitting recently. Like a couple months ago, I was like battling with myself about the legitimacy of this industry. And I felt like I was like, I realized that no matter where I go, I'm going to be told what I what to do. And where I am now, it is the least. This is the most creative freedom I will ever have in my entire life. So since then, I've decided to live in the present and do everything I can. So I don't know. I don't have any plans of quitting for the rest of my life. So that's where I am. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they get rid of the shows you love doing because you guys don't watch them. Uh, like Comfort Zone and 
collectibles corner and table talk and between the pages and table talk and morning but, cuddle <laughs> morning huddle with bill that was one of my favorite shows but um through all the discouragement from people maybe not watching the videos or whatnot you still kind of realize that you're making really dumb videos for a lot of people that are happy about that and laugh at that and that's enough fuel for any bad thing that happens in this job. So, that's my two cents. Two cents. I'm kind of closer, can you, there we go. I'm kind of closer to all your guys' age, so it hits me a lot, and then I start to feel like that quarter-life crisis garbage that everyone talks about on Tumblr, and I don't, I, I like lose hope and I lose faith in like what I'm doing, but then I also work with a lot of people who are really talented, and you know, you're in waves that aren't in sync with everybody else, so when I lose faith in what I'm doing, I can just look at Steve, or look at Phil, or Matt, or Will, or Bree, or anybody, they're always making cool stuff every single second of every single day so these guys help me keep me going thank you you're doing so good thank you thank you very much uh, I've been doing this for 10 years now and uh, I've never wanted to stop completely whatever it is I just have this thing in me that wants to make stuff and make people happy and I think a lot of people get discouraged about like the number of people watching the videos and that's ridiculous because if that was too early because even if you have like a hundred people watching your videos 50 people watching your videos it doesn't ma like picture doing something to 50 real people and you'll never get discouraged and if you want to do that you will if you don't if it's not fun anymore you don't do it but i've never i've wanted to do less but i've never wanted to stop doing it ever <laughs> I have this thing sometimes where I, I have really bad depression and anxiety, and I've been doing this since 2009, and uh, I want to give up a lot of the time. <laughs> I, it's, I, I can only laugh about it, right, guys? Uh, and like questioning sexuality is something that I had to deal with for a long time, and there's so many things that happen as a human being because we change so much over the years and we have to come to terms with who we are and like what we make on the internet reflects who we are at the time and so a lot of changes happen and it's a lot of coming to terms with that. So yeah, I wanna give up all the time but my love for what I do outweighs it 100%. That's why I'm still here. Ooh. So no joke, I've been doing YouTube for six years um, <laughs> and I've never wanted to quit except for one time this past year my, basically people at my school found my channel and found a semi-controversial video and I ended up uh, getting people who said they were going to leak my address online, death threats from people at my school, and I also um, had half of my school basically like wear a certain article of clothing to boycott me, and that was the only time I've ever questioned it. But even in that, even when that was so in my face and it was not just internet hate, it was real life, I realize that I'm doing YouTube because it's something I love. And if people are gonna challenge me because of something I love, that only makes my love for it stronger. And it's important to keep doing what you're doing in the face of adversity. I love that. What's your channel? Oh yeah, pimp out your channel. How, where can they find your channel? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's Aceland Alexander, A-C-E-L-A-N-D-A-L-X-A-N-D-E-R. And I make music on that channel, and then I have another channel where I talk about gender and sexuality, so. Woo! Yay! All right, so we have about four and a half minutes, so it, uh, just treat everything like speed round. Cool. Speed uh, round. So the first one's actually not for everyone. It's uh, from Giggs, says, can Steve do his Dave and Ross creepy laugh live? Yeah! Can Dave you do Ross your Dave creepy and Ross laugh. creepy laugh? His creepy laugh? Yeah. Is it like, <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome, I'm gonna paint. <laughs> All right, here we go. If you had to switch outfits with a person to your right, how, would, how good would you look on a scale from one to 10? Oh, God, no. Oh, damn. No. Do it! <laughs> oh, yeah, do it! That's a, that's a weird, yep. Anyway, uh, horrible, one. 
I'd be one. Raina, I mean, I wouldn't fit any of it. Hey, I don't understand. So, so the, I would, the question? I would wear mine, and yeah. I'd wear leaves. So it's <laughs> a body <laughs> swap question? You would swap outfits with the person to outfits. your right. Oh, outfits. I wouldn't fit any of it, especially the shoes. We have very different feet <laughs> sizes. Not? Oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'd give it a red hot go. You, you'd look great. These shorts okay. would be this They would be, uh, that's a thong, your shorts. That would be so far <laughs> Let's see. What about you and Leibs? I would so wear it. Are you kidding? First of all, <laughs> vest. I feel like if you did it, it would just look like you were cosplaying Lieberman. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Right? Yeah. And Lieberman also, cosplays. these fucking shoes, banging. Did you Legit. know Levi's made shoes? What? I didn't know Levi's made shoes. But then the question nice. is, how would you pull off Will's? How would I pull off Will? Uh, you know what? I... Will's an incredibly stylish person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I would need his T-shirt in like two extra sizes bigger. Maybe the jeans the same, but you know I would wear I would wear that outfit. No I'm question. actually excited to picture Will in Steve's clothes right now. <laughs> They've this done it before. Outfit? Neon jungle. Ah, uh, I could do the Forever 21 look. Yeah. Is yeah. that shade? Oh, yeah. Forever oh, yeah. 21. Yes. That's your shop at H and M. <laughs> what? Down. Hey. Sit down. Uh -oh. You do oh. shop at H and M. Wait, you? I'm throwing shots at him, not you. Fight, fight, I am fight, a fight, defender. Fight, 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 fight. fight, 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 fight. <laughs> All right, we you got two minutes. We got two minutes. You silly bastards. <laughs> Steve, how are you doing over there? I'm great. No, I mean with with his clothes. <laughs> oh, with Sam. <laughs> I'm solid. Thanks Sam, for asking. I would totally wear Sam's clothes. Sam is a stylish man as well. I like the button-ups he wears with pugs on them, and he has some good shirts that I covet. That's about it. Thank you. I'd wear your pants. Thank you. Can you hear it? There it goes. Mike, we're, um, some nice person out there pointed out this, so I think we'll do pretty well. I'd wear your stuff. Look how cool his shoes are. Everybody clap really quick for his shoes. Wait, why did I just All right, do that? stop, stop. Thank you, that's perfect. <laughs> All right. We look good. Can we switch faces? Yeah! <laughs> I want your beard so bad. Just for Ooh, a second. I have beard envy real that's bad. That's it, that's all I want to do. No, this, that, that bit is over now. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> all right, and then... Minute. We look dope. Yeah, I think you'd look good. It'd be good. Uh, the last question is from Susanna, who says, "Will you guys ever come to Australia?" Um, actually, so yeah, we could we could we could use this as like a way to announce it. Uh, we're definitely gonna do it if Franco does Australia. What? Woo! Yeah, so it's gonna be before the end of the year, um, and then we're definitely also for overseas stuff. We're gonna do uh, the new VidCon over in Amsterdam. That's, so that's right. Be awesome. Ooh. Yeah. This is news for us. Say what? <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I, I decided, well, we decided like two hours ago. Oh, so it's like brand new. yes! So, yeah. Wait, what? Are you taking me or what? Yeah, you'll find out. You'll find out. You gotta get also, you also get because I've been told that we have to do it, uh, in the same week we're going to do it if Franco does New Zealand as well. So don't get angry and tweet me angry things. <laughs> Wait, do I need to start writing some songs? Yes. Son of a bitch. A warm up, <laughs> Guys, you need to know this if you're going to go to Australia. Uh, Steve, like before you leave, I'm giving you, you have to go center. You have to go center stage. We have eight seconds. What's the last thing you want to say to all these beautiful people? Every single last one of you is a special, amazing person. And I love every freaking one of you. Thank you for coming. Woo! You're all amazing. Yay! Thank you okay, guys okay, so okay. much. Oh, nope, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not doing that. That's a weird thing. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Hey, everybody.
everybody, it's Brent, and welcome to the live stream of Hashtag VidCon Live. Now, much like Rome, VidCon was not built in a day. It takes an army to build up everything inside of the Expo Hall here at the Anaheim Convention Center. Now, back in 2010, the very first VidCon, it was held in Century City at a hotel, but it has absolutely exploded with vendors, creators, and fans coming together even the night before VidCon to celebrate everything that is amazing about our community. Now, stay tuned here on live.vidcon.com or on youtube.com slash vidcon to not miss anything that we're showing today during our live stream. Elliot, Lee, and Kingsley are going to be using the tag board social media aggregate to be finding posts on hashtag vidcon live. So keep interacting on social media. Stay tuned. Vidcon has just begun. Looks like you're wearing. Hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to the VidCon Live uh, <laughs> stage here in the convention hall. My name is Elliot Morgan, and I'm here currently with Lee Newton, as well as a wonderful person by the name of Kingsley. Yay! 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 How are uh, you? Great. What a lovely introduction. It Thanks, nice. man. It yeah. was very nice. Can I had like... it written on my, I'm not going to show you, but I have it written on my, my palm. It's contoured oh. on your palm. Like, welcome back it's to the thing. contoured on there. <laughs> he contoured <laughs> yeah. it on his palm right uh, there. And I actually had it right here. This is a cheat awesome. code. Yeah, so this is any, nice. Any gamers out there. We just watched the uh, the Q&A with the SourceFed crew. Phil yeah. Franca, it was nice. That we'll, we'll probably hang out with them later. I didn't hear too. You know what they were talking about? What? They what? were talking about how you handle quote unquote mean internet comments and that's always a fun uh, fun subject. It is. Kingsley, it is a how do fun you fun subject. How do I handle mean <laughs> yeah. internet comments? Assuming you get any. I, I don't, don't know if you really do. I don't pay attention to mean internet comments. Yeah. When I first started out I did. Yeah. Um, I would like tweet them back and be like I, I would just drag me, them me, back. Me, me, me. I'd yeah. just be like in an internet fight I guess. But now I just ignore them. If they're really rude, like saying the F word or the N word or like oh my goodness. something out of yeah, control, out I of just control. block. Yeah. Block is block. good. Block is good. It's also a nice little uh, reminder, in my opinion, because Maude kind of said it in that Q&A where she was talking about like if someone were to say that kind of stuff to your face, like you wouldn't just be like, okay. like No, no you'd be like, go away or I'm leaving <laughs> or even like I'm pressing legal things, you know, like <laughs> I would actually take action. I'm pressing so legal. block is a nice little reminder to be like, hey, you can't behave that way. Like that's exactly. not you know, a way to behave. If yeah. you're doing it for attention or if you're doing it for whatever, because I think so much of it is, especially like trolls and so many of the comments, so I'm many of like the vicious comments. There's been stuff like as a woman on YouTube, uh, I'm sure, but everyone in this group, I've, as anything on YouTube. You can put me as a woman on YouTube. I'll put you as a woman on YouTube. <laughs> Thank as you. a hashtag girl love woman on, on YouTube. Yeah. There's like things that you get that you're like, oh my Oh my God! Like this yeah. is insane. Oh yeah, you get you've gotten. I've read some of your uh, stuff. Some it's, of the stuff that I've gotten so is bad. literally like so dark that I'm like, well, is this an episode of Dexter? Like, what is that <laughs> yeah, happening? It is a serial killer. Type. It's so <laughs> insane. But how do you handle the serial how killer? How do you handle comment? the serial killer element? But it also is that like you know that if you were gonna see that person in real life, like that stuff would never be said ever, true. ever, ever, ever. Right. So that's I, no way to behave. You can also so, do the whole muting thing. Yeah, mute, mute, hey, block. I know. Oh, we're having fun. Wrong. That was at home, uh, counting Kingsley's waves and Kingsley's. Oh, that's another one. <laughs> yeah. Kingsley's peace signs and Kingsley's waves. Those at home. Um, I'm trying to keep track. Oh. You were just. Kingsley's literally like <laughs> head nodding. You know you are? It's like Night at the Rocks for you when it's like, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I got two. See? See? Join oh, in the fun. Uh, Join the fun. Join the crowd. But yeah, no, I mute people Hi. all the time. Yeah, hey, guys. All right. I, this is very, you guys can't see it, uh, but it is very like, Love it. So packed. It's so wonderful. Fun. Everyone's so happy having the time of their lives. I think it's only going to get more packed, too. Like, oh, I know. Be... This is the beginning. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. people are waking up now. It's noon. I You're, forget normally, it's only noon. I would be. Normally, I would be waking up. No, I still got 45 minutes on my normally mess. wake up clock. Mess. <laughs> No. Wait, so are you, you are, you're the guy that like puts, you put all of your life into your day, don't you? You're like. I wouldn't say I put all of my life into my day. What time do you normally day, wake up, I can't Kingsley? sleep that late unless I'm like cuddling. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I, like, sure. I just get up early. That's nice, man. Wait, what time up. do you wake up? Like what? Maybe like anywhere between like eight, nine. That's pretty good. That's an adult yeah. time to wake up. Yeah. That I is will an sometimes, adult time to wake up. I will, I'll stay out late at night and I will set my alarm for like 7.45. And I will wake up and I will actually laugh at myself. I will yes. be like, what? <laughs> yeah. no. 100%. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. uh, there's like a rando Samsung camera just coming up and just taking a picture. I love just like, boink. 
<laughs> I was this wondering if anyone knew who that was. I was like, oh, I was oh, like oh, oh. oh. It was so intense. Um, um, anyway. Yeah. I do the wake oh. up thing really. I'm a late. I'm a night owl. Like 100%. Scientifically, I'm a night owl. But, <laughs> like um, biologically speaking, you are biologically. part owl. I, I saw a, thing the other, a meme the other day that was like, some people are morning larks, some people are night owls, some people are constantly tired pigeons. <laughs> and I was like, I'm a constantly tired pigeon. But I was, the other day... I'm one of those. I was up like 2, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. watching TV, and my boyfriend came in and blew my mind. He was like, you know you can watch this in the morning, right? <laughs> and I literally like... I had never, never thought of it. Isn't that weird? You never, I would never think to do that. I would never think to do that. To turn the TV on, to like, just, in like, the morning? To just, like, be like, oh, I'll go to bed and then wake up at night and then watch it at night. That seems like a very old person thing to do, to, like, watch TV during the day. During the yeah. day. It like, right? just, just be like, I'm just watching my programs. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just oh watching God, my programs. I'm sorry for the ears listening to this. Just my bad. I'm just cackling all over <laughs> the place. I, uh, I remember, because you remember being a kid and, like, being sick and you'd watch TV during the day and it would be, yeah. like, Price is Right and then, mm -hmm. like, you oh, know, Murphy on Fire or what, Mur whatever I, that There was, was a time where I got so looped into General Hospital and I was I like, was this is... My yeah. grandma, it was, like, Young and the Restless, all my children went like to yep. live General it's Hospital in a row, just depressing, just yeah. over dramatic. Another. And I remember thinking, this is so bad, and then, like, cut to day five and I'm like, what is... Fernando gonna do? Yeah. Like, what is he gonna do? So I always just remember that was like nap time for me at my grandma's house. Yeah. Like that, like, cause mm -hmm. you even as a kid you can tell that it's filmed very weirdly and very differently and dark. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's time for me to. And my grandma would be like, all right, you gotta go. Time for the bed. Got time hop in. Bed. Exactly. Grandma, watch my stories, my programs. Yep. Um, so useless Jack said, I'm watching hashtag VidCon live. Oh, I, I turned <laughs> as soon as I said it. And then oh. someone said, I'm learning so much today. Merv said, I'm learning so much today. Hashtag VidCon Live. Guys, yeah. you can use the hashtag VidCon Live. We will be watching it and seeing it up on our tag boards. I think you guys get to see the tag board as well. Yes. So you guys can see that you're actually interacting with us using that hashtag VidCon Live. It's so exciting. It's really fun to see. It's really also, fun. Yeah. I'm also really, I, I got a beautiful makeup artist today that, that beat my face up good, She's so it's nice to see pictures. Own. Wave, Eva, say hi. <laughs> Eva's yep. like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> She's like, no, uh -uh, uh -uh. nope, no, She's thank like, you. Mm -mm, no, thank you. But that's what I noticed. You I was like, great. oh, cheekbones. You look great. Hey, cheekbones. We, she was uh, putting makeup on right before we came on, and she's like, I thought she was going to ask if I wear makeup in my regular day to day life. Instead, she asked about videos, but. I've been thinking about just grabbing some powder and just adopting makeup into my everyday Maybe you routine. Maybe should. I in think your it's time. Life, Why not? Get a little lash curl, get it in there. Do you do you it know? for your videos ever? Uh, I used to, yeah, and then I stopped because I stopped caring. Like I, I just did. I was like, look, if I'm shiny, this is me, and here we are. And this is the truth of it all. I feel you. Yeah. I want to get on the makeup train because yeah. I've been noticing sometimes yeah. I start perspiring. Yeah. And you I just didn't know that. you could avoid that. And yeah. I've always wondered how some of you guys just look so great it's for the and entire it's time. It's 90% makeup. Yeah. Looking super fly. Looking I super it. good. I need lessons. I yep. need like a beauty You know con. what it is too? There's, um, I just found out there's a thing called a beauty filter oh. that people use <laughs> in uh, Premiere. And a lot of YouTube videos are made with this. You download it. It's some sort of add-on. And it literally That's will make you nice. look nice. Is it like that second Snapchat filter? Yes. Yes. Okay. That second Snapchat okay. filter. Or the fourth right. or like the eighth one that's like the one kind of that blue. Like wipes yeah. you? Yeah. Are you? I'm talking about the one that has like the pink flowers. The, the Coachella that, that filter. Like, oh yeah. my goodness. Glorified like, face I've tune. never looked more attractive yeah. in my life. I don't think I ever will. Well, and like I'll use it and I'm like, if I wish the flower thing wasn't there because I'm like, <laughs> I look <laughs> great. And I'm like, I look great and I don't want the flower thing yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know why that's a year round thing. They need to reconsider that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so, guys, all right. right now we actually have a clip from yeah. uh, the heartfelt moment from the SourceFed panel. So, uh, take a look at this wonderful heartfelt moment from the SourceFed panel. Well, that was really good. Be a mechanic. And my dad bought me a toolkit. And he was more supportive of that than when I said a year later that I wanted to be an actor. He was like, do whatever you want, just not acting, just like Matt's parents. Because my dad used to be an actor, and he got rejected a lot, and he knows exactly what it's like, and he wasn't wrong. It's like one of the hardest things to do, but I love it so much. I don't care. Bye, Dad. <laughs> Aceland? 
Um, well, growing up, my mom wanted me to be a straight Christian female, and I'm now a pagan gay trans man. So. It's been an interesting experience. Nice. Uh, Lee, what did your parents want you to, to do? Um, my parents are, I, I think, quite possibly the most incredible human beings that I've ever met in my entire life. They're like, lovely. I, I, they're lovely. Mm -hmm. You've met them. Mm -hmm. I, I, every day I feel like so hashtag blessed that they're mine. I'm you don't blown have away. To say it. You don't no, have to but say it. I do. I feel like <laughs> so crazy that they're mine. I'm like blown away that they're mine. I get to say that they're mine. I'm so proud of them. They're very strong, wonderful people. And they, I, I think from day one, at like 16, I was like, I want to do acting. And then their whole lives were like making sure that I found a way to like be supported and do whatever I wanted to do. And then I was like, I want to be a teacher. And they're like, great. And then I was like, I want to be a hairdresser. And they're like, great. I was like, I want to be a massage therapist. They're like, great. Everything, it was just like, if I was in a swing and I was like, I want to go higher, they were the ones behind me pushing. That's like great. they were just 100% there. So everything was like, they also very much wanted me to be grounded. And so even when I was younger and I was like, I want to go audition, they were like, not yet. Like they were like, no, you have to have a childhood. You have to have a life. You have to have everything. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I, um, I started acting when I was like nine and yeah, it was in did. Florida. And, they, uh, and then I, I started doing theater and acting and all that and then I was like because we were near Nickelodeon back in the day Nickelodeon used to be in Florida and then they moved out to Los Angeles but it was like half an hour away so I started I was like I want to go audition for Nickelodeon and then yeah. my mom was like all right and so she started taking me and like the first audition I went on Nickelodeon cast me in a commercial if you can find that commercial it's there. please Put it online and, it's out and there. say hashtag VidCon Live. <laughs> yes. It's sweet baby Elliot Morgan at nine years old dancing. You know what? what? I look it's like the, I'm nine. I'm actually 13. Thing. Huh? I'm 13 in it. I look like I'm nine. Oh my God. Same, you look like a, you look like a baby in yeah. it. Yeah. You can find it. I have it on my channel. It's called Because you We Can. You were 13 in that? Yeah, something this like that. 12 or 13. This enlightens me so much to your life. So I'm just a tiny little, and then it's me dancing, and they're like, it's I went into the audition, dancing. and they it's were like, like a little kid dance. It's so cute. And what? It's like, like a Nickelodeon it, They literally commercial. made a series of commercials that was just called Because We Can. This was like when like Hey Arnold was still on, and like oh, SpongeBob yes. was like just sort oh, of picking up. Actual and Nickelodeon. Invader Zim. I don't know. Good Nickelodeon stuff. right now is a myth. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I remember <laughs> filming the commercial, and they were like, "Yeah, we got this new show coming out called uh, Invader Zim and Fairly Odd Parents, and we think they're going to be really popular." And I was like, "All right, whatever. Whatever. Maybe new information. So we'll dumb, Nickelodeon." Goes. And it was very exciting. Uh, oh but my God, can we get Nickelodeon as a myth trending? <laughs> Especially since they're like literally right there. I know. I, but the, I love Nickelodeon as a the myth. The Nickelodeon. Uh, what fictitious. about you, Kingsley? How is your? Yeah, how are your? What did your parents want you to uh, be? My parents wanted me to be college. Um, <laughs> be college. <laughs> Just the entire. I entity. didn't really find my passion until my junior year of high school which was journalism when I joined like newspaper and stuff so I went to school for journalism and they were oh. just supportive they were like yeah. glad that I finally found something that I liked cool. to do it's taken them a while to understand all of this but they've they've come around yeah, yeah. this yeah. is this throws them for a loop a little bit mm -hmm. I, the parents. even we were at something recently uh, oh lip sync battle we were at like the spike thing and you were like I wish I my parents could lock into my eyes and see it's because it's fun. Because like, I do. I wish that stuff. like they could see the stuff and be like, this is this is the life that I get to live. This is like the insanity and the beauty and like this weirdness. is what it, the weirdness yeah. of it all. Like this is how I get to live. So I wish I could like lock them in and be like, but yeah. instead I just have to like show them pictures and they have to be like, how do I find exactly. your sketch online? <laughs> yeah. I wish they were here like how right do now. I the best tweet that I saw, I think it was Melissa Stetton, she said earlier, she was like, my mom figuring out how to use Snapchat is akin to the Raptors figuring out how to open doors in Jurassic Park. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's um, the best comparison I've ever heard It is the best comparison life. I've ever heard of. Just like, <laughs> yep, this is akin to the just the Raptors opening those doors. Did you guys see the new Snapchat filter that looks like a baby seal walrus elf? It's a, it's Sea monkey? It's is not, it a sea monkey? Is a, that? I think it's either a sea monkey or it's a hippopotamus. We had a very strong debate no. on there whether or not it was a. That strawberry though. That strawberry was though. Horrifying. I don't like that. Have I you ever think heard? I think that guy would be like, I'm a strawberry. Like that was his voice. <laughs> Yo, you know why it grows? There's this thing called trichophobia. Do you know what this is? No. What? Trichophobia is a fear of like weird patterns of holes. 
and that thing I have it all the time. Like it's really like a it, pattern of hole. Yeah, yeah. A Look it up holes? or don't Google it. It's horrifying. But I like, get like creeped out by like blisters and like have yeah, you ever seen like, like that gif of like a moving? It's like a circle, but there's something in it. It's like a black circle, but there's like a, a fist or something, and it's moving. I don't no, know. That sounds about. horrible. <laughs> I just pictured it and I had to hold it all in. Thank you so it's much gross. for that live feed. That's what I thought when I heard a, a weird it. assortment of holes. Well, that's what this strawberry thing looks like because it just makes your face look all like dimply. Yeah, weird. it's like it's a Swiss good. cheese app. And yeah. you're like, I'm not okay exactly. with it. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a Swiss cheese. And you're like, no, too no, much. no. Too it's much. creepy. Too much. Too much. But I do like the sea monkey one. And I'm going to. I know, 100%. percent i want to really just be do. all sea monkey. All, or I think it's sea monkey. I think it's some kind of sea monkey. Are you sea monkey? Kingsley's not even on board. Kingsley's on Snapchat. He's been Snapchatting this whole thing and he has yet to see the sea monkey app. I don't know. Well, I don't, I'm the sea monkey you. app? Yeah. Was it, no, this is a what? It's Snapchat It's a filter? filter. A yeah. sea monkey. Yeah. There's too many. Sea you guys, you walk in one spot and there's different filters than like over there. Check this it's, out. Is that true? Yeah. Look. Oh, that's what it no. is. No! It's terrifying. You can't see it. It yeah. is terrifying. That's too, no. It's so weird, right? I kind of am on board with it. It does look I like think a hippo. it's kind of cute. There's some cute ones. I There's a lot of stuff I that I would get. Put in that under like a bullet no, point that's not under cute. cute. <laughs> I would not categorize that. But there's that. a lot of stuff no. that I get in trouble with because I think it's very cute. And I think if I were to actually focus on the real life, then I would is that true? be like. You know what we can all agree is terrifying? What? The face swap. Yes. That's oh, just every level it. is yeah. terrifying. Yep. It just makes me self conscious. Like, are we not cute? <laughs> on any other body, like is it, it's a combination it's of all you. of them. It's, it's all yeah. you. Oh, look, oh, there wow, it is. Look at that. You found oh, it. Oh, oh, that's oh, terrible. They spelled my name wrong, but that's okay. Uh, oh, yeah, my like God. Yeah, like 12 or 13. <laughs> all my glory. Oh, this is so much fun. I'm actually anyway. having the time I'm of my deceased. life right now. I'm uh, deceased. What's How weird many? is I'll occasionally people will stumble <laughs> on it and be like, I remember watching this. Oh, they spelled your name wrong. Yeah, yeah. That's sure. hurtful. Yeah, I'm going to go talk to them over there. Nickelodeon is a myth. It's Elliot. Two T's, Morgan. Yeah. How long was the shoot? <laughs> Two yeah. days. Two days? One day they got pushed that they didn't film at all, but it was Two an days. entire day. Oh, my God. For that 30 seconds. Oh, I'm yeah. so glad that we could share that. That, that was, was nice. amazing. That was very nice. Real thank moment. you, whoever found that clip. That yes, was beautiful. thank you. Very funny. Look at that tiny, sweet angel um, baby. I on that note, I got to go. I got to go. I know. <laughs> on that, like, you peaked. <laughs> yeah. Like, you got to oh, go. absolutely, yeah. Oh, this, today's Thursday. We have two more days of VidCon. Elliot will not be joining us. Nope. I'm going to be in my room crying. <laughs> That's amazing. Just redoing yeah, the it's dance. It's very fun. They I had, would like to redo that. I would like to like put you yeah. in the same outfit. Yeah. Like, it's been, I want to do the same outfit, but I want to get those same kids 10 years later as well. You should huh? Just like for freaking Nickelodeon. We'll go over to the booth. You say, hi, I'm Elliot from the Because We Can dance. You know. <laughs> I'm sure you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you know. Uh, my celebrity doppelganger is Elliot from the from Because, because We, we Can, can dance. Dance. You know, I know. You I'm know, having a because. very tough time getting a hold of these t oh, things in my life. Fan. I know. Fan these things. Um, you anyway. guys look great. Sarah said, uh, yo, what's up from Romania? One day and I'll be there at VidCon. Oh, hi. Romania is a real place. Romania is a very real place. Oh, my God. Yes. Very real. Um, I went. You, it's beautiful. You guys have just went all over the place. Well, Kingsley, oh, yeah. you have to decide that you're actually going to go. And have, then you go. But you have a passport now. Someone said, I'm a go. Gryffindor. Hashtag That's, VidCon Live. We oh, have nice. been talking earlier about Harry Potter houses. And I'd like to know from you guys what different YouTubers you think are in what houses. You know, like, Mamrie Hart, I feel like, is a Hufflepuff. Who? Mamrie. Mamrie a Hufflepuff, huh? Mamrie, Do you think she's a, a, a Gryffindor? She's so smart, too. I know. She I might went be to afraid. Hawaii with Mamrie for Hey USA. Oh, we yeah. We swam with dolphins. She just got she's right She's a Gryffindor. There. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's, she's a Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Yeah. I believe she's it. Gryff. I think I Hank it. and John, I think John is probably a Ravenclaw, and I think Hank is a Gryffindor. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Can they oh. be split up like that? Oh, good question. Is that allowed? Do they go into the same house or they do not go? I don't remember. I don't I, know I'm either. sure that there's a preference or a rule. I mean, no, it, you know what? they, no, they can be because be. it's based on the personality. You can't just shove somebody in a school with somebody. But like who's all the Weasleys were Gryffindor. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. But I don't remember any other siblings. That's Guys, right. we're going to get distracted in Harry Potter land again. We have to change. We have something. to go. We have, I mean, that's we what have. Uh, I can talk a, about this for three we're days. We're going to cut yeah, I mean, to <laughs> a three day video of us at Harry Potter land. Yeah. <laughs> This is the end of this the stream. This is just, sorry about VidCon. Um, Hashtag. 
I Hate Wasp uh, is graduating college, and she was asking if she has any advice. Are you graduating advice? high school? I think she's graduating high oh, school. Oh, high school. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, any advice for college. That makes sense. She's in oh, graduating high school. Oh, do you have school. advice? Oh, God. You Actually, to, I'm you doing a panel to, I think today about Elliot college. I went to college, too. Yeah. I, I went to two years. I went to more, but... You still went, you know, you saw it. Yeah. I still went. I didn't I saw finish. it. I made my own determinations. Exactly. Yeah, you didn't exactly. finish either? No, I did not finish. Elliot, you're the only one that finished, right? Oh, you are yes. a legend. So I can uh, <laughs> give you advice. Apparently, just don't, you don't have to finish. No, <laughs> no! It's a complete no! total option. There by choice. Uh, what did you, you were in journalism for a second, yes. right? I would just say have discipline. Um, it's a very different than high school. You're going to yes. have a lot of freedom. Your parents aren't going to be all over you. You yeah. just have to be diligent and focus and have control of yourself there were some times where i just would not go to class because i was exhausted and i had like an 8 a.m spanish class which i don't i don't think that should be allowed yeah there's oh, no, you're right. No there's things that you're like, this should not be yeah, allowed. Yeah, like, why am I speaking another language before I've had breakfast? It yeah. doesn't make right. sense. <laughs> yeah. so, why am I speaking? So why am I talking? Tired. <laughs> exactly. Lo comida, comida, comida. That's all I remember. But food, 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 yes. food. That's like the one thing I remember from. Spanish. Oh my god, I can't wait for your new biography, Comida, Comida, Comida. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that as a title. Just, Just questions. Comida, food, food, comida, food. comida. That's uh, what it is. Yeah, I was. I did zoology, and so a lot of my classes would be like. It would be like seven o'clock in the morning, and it would be like physics two, uh, or like organic chemistry. And at some point, I remember thinking, I think I'm gonna go to Los Angeles and try to be an actor, <laughs> and not and work in Hollywood, and not. But do then this. you you were a vet tech for a very long time. And then I time. worked at an animal hospital yeah. for a long time. Did you say zoology? Yeah. yeah. That my friend Kelly does that. She was obsessed with animals. She loved animals, had the craziest classes. I had to walk across yeah. campus with her because she was like into horses. Oh, so yeah. She would like ride and Girl feed and do horses. all that stuff. Yeah. What was, was her great. name? Kelly. Kelly. I thought you said her name was Elliot. And I was like, you oh, had a no, friend no, no, no. named Elliot who majored in zoology? No. I would have been much more animated. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're just going to move right yeah. past that? I would have um, given it my yes, all. I would Come have. On. I would have lip synced for my life. <laughs> we had a class in the zoology uh, degree uh, at Florida where we learned how to wrestle crocodiles. And so this they would true. like, they took us to this crocodile farm and they were like, all right, you're going to jump on it and you're going to uh, stay along its center because if you don't, it could ah, eat you or whatever. No. And so. So in in college, I like learned how to like grab it, and uh, you grab it and you wake it up and you make sure the alligator or the crocodile is you know aware of your presence. You have to kind of like startle it essentially. Sure. Sure. And then you literally like dive on its back and then like grab it and then you hold it. Was this like a big? Uh, did, was this curved? Was this like sixty percent of the class? Yeah, because I, I know wouldn't too, have like, done that like if it wasn't what's required the, or giving me something <laughs> great. You, like how much of your yeah, like the grade was wrestling with a crocodile? You know what? Like it was optional. I think it's pretty low. Yeah, it was. I don't know. You know, I like to throw in a little crocodile wrestling whenever. I, but I like. I want my brand on YouTube to be the person least likely that you would imagine has ever has wrestled a crocodile has ever like grabbed a crocodile yeah yeah 100 percent. i think i'm nailing so far so. i feel like i've been to black friday and i feel like i could wrestle a crocodile because i've wrestled for like a, a ceiling fan i've wrestled for like all those different things yeah, yeah girl in college that was one of my jobs i worked at toys r us and my <gasps> first day was black friday oh oh i no. didn't know what the hell was happening that like the, the only time that i'm ever like terrified for the world at hand is when black friday happens to me like this is insanity. It's like the purge. It is like yeah, the purge. It's literally. Just it's like the purge. Killing people. One hundred percent. College tips. I I like to piggyback on like be diligent about like that's a really good tip. That's really really good advice to be like be diligent about stuff because you're right. Like it's one hundred percent up to you to go to your classes to do everything right. On the other side of that too, though, there's this is the time to like figure out who you are. This is the time to like. High school is so True. full of like weird stuff and like a lot of hierarchy and like a lot of weird things, uh, and it's insecurity. I don't know. I, high school is one of those places that's like that. So, college is the time that you get to like really figure out who you are, what you love. If your major has to change, like let your major change. Yes. You're 20. You're 18. I know. And then, so they're like, so you're 18 now. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? With the rest of your life, <laughs> you it's know, so right? baffling to me. And then there's ones that like. I went to a college, and I actually was fortunate enough to have a professor that uh, midway through my college experience, I went to Cal State Northridge, and 
I got offered a job. Like I got offered a real acting job and she was like, you have to go. I was doing theater arts as my major and in the long run, I don't know how that would have necessarily helped me because it doesn't guarantee you a yeah. job in anything. True. But I literally, she was, she was on the phone with my parents and she was like, she should leave. She has an opportunity. You got to get her out. And huh. that was one of the best things I ever seen. Yeah. So it was great. Um, well, on the, we'll talk more about this in just a second, yes. but real fast, uh, we have a video of Brent out <laughs> in oh my about God. having a great time, and he's talking to people, and we're going to see what they're saying and what he's doing right now. Oh, how fun! Yeah. Hey, everybody, it's Brent. Thank you so much for tuning in to Hashtag VidCon Live. Stay tuned all day for more amazing panels and keynote speakers, but there's way more happening here at the 7th Annual VidCon than that. Right behind me, frankly, all around me are some incredible exhibits here on the Expo Hall floor, which is a huge part of what VidCon is all about. So we're going to go wander around and have some people show us their booths. Booths? Booths. 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 All right, we're here with Melissa at the M&M booth. Yeah, booth. How do you say this word? I, I say that booths. 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 All right, settled. Anyway, so what's going on here? Um, well, what we're doing right now is we're celebrating the 75th anniversary of M&Ms, actually. So you're giving away 75-year-old M&Ms? No, no, no. We're giving away the new M&Ms. Oh. But in celebration, Aloe Black and Zed have remixed the old song Candyman. And what I'm doing here is you can actually remaster it yourself by using actual M&Ms and our new app. Wait, hold on. This is actually kind of amazing. Yeah, you want to try it? Yes. All right. So you're going to put into the headphones. Cool. And then you're going to drag each color into the screen, and it's going to make a different sound, so it correlates with a different instrument. Oh, you just kind of blew my mind a little bit. Let me get the red. The red one is the singer. Let's see. See, we don't even have to learn how to play instruments anymore. No. Well, I just I play the M and M's. So you can record it and then you can share it on Facebook or Twitter if you have an Android. I can't hear anything you're saying. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And plus, who doesn't love M and M's? <laughs> Booths. Behind me, we're making art. I think. We're charging our phones. Booths. How's it going, guys? How do you say this word? Booths. Booths. <laughs> Booths. <laughs> Fine. I guess it's not that hard. Hey, quick question for you. How do you, how do you say that word? Booths. 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 Anyway, tweet at Olga K. Hashtag shoe all mind. Thanks, guys. Hey, how's it going, man? How do you say this word? Uh, that's booths. Booths? Booths? Yes, booths. Uh, no, but really. No, booths. Booths. All right, cool. Will you hold that for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. This is at Strawberry17's booth. Uh, hashtag she won't mind, Twitter. Seems like the world's most uncomfortable couch, but I like this booth. We'll come back to this one. How do you say this word? Booths. 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 Like that? How do you say this word? Booths. 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 What? It doesn't say what. It says booths. Booths. Damn it! I was really hoping he'd be here, you know? It's like wondering what his hair looked like in person or maybe what he smelled like. He's busy. Booths. Booths? It's fine. As you can see, it is organized chaos here on the showroom floor. Keep using hashtag VidConLive and tweet at me, at It's Brent. Tell me what you want to see here on the floor. There is tons of stuff that we've yet to even show you. A lot of exhibits, a lot of booths. Booths? Seriously, why can't I get an answer to this question? It's fine. Hashtag VidCon Live. I'm mostly just stressed about Joey. Just wanted to see him. Just wanted to see him. Back to you guys. Oh! Ah! Hey! I gotta ah! grab my microphone when I say things. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> That's very crucial. Yeah, yeah it's We're very new. crucial. I, yeah. I keep feeling like you can just hear me when I'm talking and there's a microphone to you. No! Newton. We have 
demands. We have some serious demands, don't we? Yes. So everyone is freaking out because we showed that little video of uh, Nickelodeon and Elliot dancing, and they want you desperately to reenact that a uh, Nickelodeon dance. But but I don't know if I if I remember the. I don't know if uh, I remember. I, I, you don't I think know you if remember. you remember it. I don't think it's very com it's complex. Do I can you try. Like you I can maybe try. give you a beat. I don't think I could do. I don't even think I could even. I don't even think it's worth trying to do. That's like I don't like even think how to do I don't even think I could time. even try it, to do it. It feels like you're on board. I don't think it's worth it. I think it's worth no. it. I don't think I should do it. Fifth Harmony said should... it's worth it. Oh. Okay. Do, 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 Who said it's do, worth do. it? Fifth Harmony. Oh. Okay. Well, in that case. Are you ready? Oh my God. Hang on. I have a earpiece. So there we go. I okay. feel like I'm witnessing history. This is witnessing history. Elliot Morgan is going to reenact that Nickelodeon dance. But, 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 go, go, go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh my God, he's been Oh, my God. I he remembers the I choreography. Crazy. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Oh, oh yes. I don't like the tears. It yes. Is, you don't. Why are you crying? He's an adult now. Oh it just God. feels so good, you know? Oh, yeah. it's a good thing? It's, yeah, it's nice. It felt like a sad thing. I loved joy. every second of that. I did too. That Thanks, was great. Guys. That was very good. Uh, it and now, nice. if you guys could just take that and just make it about four and a half hours long. Yeah, yeah. Get make it. a whole video. That'd be fantastic yeah. for us, at yes. least. Uh, just so it's out there in the world. At least like an hour. Make it like a Game of Thrones episode. Oh, that's nice. A 55, we'll 57 it minute, you know? Yeah, if someone can make nice... a gif of that. Yes. <laughs> right ah! next to the old. Oh, there you go. <laughs> The fastest oh, I've ever. Uh, oh, you're doing a little. I get it. All right. Look at us, what is, wow. I like that. Kingsley, look at Kingsley's mouth going. Nah, 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 <laughs> yeah, the beat helped a lot. Really brought it back. You know, that's very good. That's what I do. What it is. I do look like Gumby, don't I? You do. Oh my God, Gumby! I look like a, like a human Gumby. Yeah. yeah. I love We've you guys. Already Just know. That. Like, that's 100 percent true. I mean, and that's fine. Of all the people to look like who's sure. like fictional, sure. I'll take Gumby for sure. Live your truth, sure. buddy. Live your truth. You know. And somebody complimented my hair earlier. I forget who it was. Oh, yeah, your hair is oh, on point. Oh, if that's what Chester we're doing. Something. Someone so complimented I'm, I'm back. my skin. I forget who it was. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to give myself a compliment vicariously, so I felt bad. I was like, Someone yeah, but uh, somebody said my hair looked good. Integrity so as a human being. I forget who it was. I, okay. <laughs> that's true. Somebody did. Someone did. I forget. Keep yeah. letting us know. <laughs> Who complimented you? <laughs> what do you guys think? I compliment myself Good. every really? day. No, I'm do just you? kidding. I don't think I've gotten any compliments today. Oh my God, guys! No, you're using the hashtag #VidConLive. Please send Kingsley some compliments. I'm totally yeah, I'm just kidding. Dana from Clever TV and Jocelyn told me that my outfit was just on point, and I was so happy. Oh my God, dude! Wait, I was admiring the like shirt a lot. Thank you I so like, much. I do like that shirt a lot, and I, I like those shirts. You hashtag host love. Yeah, I love your oh, shirt. I love your oh, skirt. Oh, oh, I love stop. your fashion. Your watch. Oh, your stop. shoes. Thank you. And I, I do your love hair. your hair. I love how you're. Yeah, it's thanks, great. man. I was yeah. admiring yours yesterday. I didn't say anything. I like to internalize my compliments. Yeah, he does Silence. like to internalize. And every now yeah. and then he'll lay one out, and you're like, thank you. Uh, it means so much more yeah. when that uh, happens. You know. You know so what? Can fun. I tell you guys something? Like yeah. it's a VidCon sort of like confession yeah. this year. Uh, I forgot to pack any other pants other than what I'm this wearing. This is true. He did. So after this, we're going to, uh, you know, in a few minutes, we're probably going to head over and I'm going to try to get some pants from the, the Calvin to. Klein. And I'm going to be very honest. Yes. Like, I don't, I just don't have pants. I don't have pants. Please give me some. I'm going to be very honest. I packed uh, with a very strict theme in mind. Um, I'm going tropical. So this is a tropical top. -ish. Let's see what's this going like, on here. This we, is the beginning of it. You can't really see, but there's like lemon. There's like an old timey camera. Celestials. There's a mixtape. My and then 90s mixtape. A mix boombox. The words chill out. Chill Polaroid out, a camera. Pineapple. And then I got some Bengal tigers on my feet. Can you can yes. you see that? I don't, I don't think they can see it. See it. It's but really I got some sick ass Bengal tigers on my feet. Very catty. Nice. Very catty. I love it. It's a tropical theme I'm going for. Those are the coolest shoes You'll that you see own. It. They are the coolest shoes I own by far. These shoes were given to me by Mike Falzone. He also has the exact oh, same pair. Oh, he does. We coordinate on a regular basis to make sure we're not wearing the same shoes. Oh my God, you really do that? Oh, You're yeah. like, hey, are you wearing yours? I'm not. Are you He's wearing yours? I'm not. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And, and well, now he's gotten to the point where he just doesn't ever wear his because I always wear these because they're so, so sad. comfortable. That's so sad. He gave you a present and now you took away his. I know. 
It's I don't feel bad at That's all. very, very mean girls of you. It you know so. what? On Wednesdays, we wear pink. And he's like, on every day I wear these shoes. <laughs> Joke's on you, Mike Calzone. <laughs> Just to, like, like spite him. Just basically. to spite. I don't want any. 100%. Um, um, Elliot Lee and Kingsley, you guys are so funny. Couldn't be a live stream without you. Yay, thank you so much. Hey. Uh, uh, thank you. So happy to be with you. At Donut1992 really 1992 says, for the first time ever, I'm actually grateful for the time difference because I can watch VidCon after work. Well, welcome home. Oh, yay. I hope work went well. Welcome. How was work? What'd you do? <laughs> um, how was it? Can we get real here? Can we? I know this is just like a live, you get know, it. What, yes. what? supposed to be light, supposed to be fun. Why is there three Ys in your handle? Oh. Oh, oh you want to get that real? Yeah, I didn't that, know. That's like, where you okay. want to go. I, I know it's like so Barbara sorry. Walters-y, This is not what I was planning, but I'd like to know as well. If you must know, uh -huh. the owner of at Kingsley with one Y is just some random guy who hasn't tweeted since like 2014. I know. And then I got so desperate as to try two Ys, and that, that guy right. hasn't tweeted since like 2014, 15. So I just passed the three Ys. It has like a bit of a ring, you know. Yeah. Three is a charm. Yeah. Can I? It do also you think does feel like you're saying Kingsley. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Exactly. I get it's it. like, and I'm Kingsley. Just, it's like a. Yeah. Have you um, checked to see if there's a Kingsley at this point with four Ys? No, I didn't bother because as soon as I got yeah. to use three, yeah. I was just like, I this pressed is the it. button. That's you being in the moment, like yeah. you do. Yeah. I was do you in the moment. Have a middle name? I do have a middle name. Have you told the world yet? You I don't know if I want to tell the world. You shouldn't. You know. Um, that's yours. Keep yeah. that. Keep I, that. That's yeah. yours. Oh, you guys are making me tell my middle name. No. No, I said that's oh. yours. Oh, yeah, I said that's mine. yours. That's your middle name. We're, it starts we're in with full an A. Though. Of you not saying. Andrew. No. Anderson. You're never gonna. Get Angley. That. No. Ongers. No. Apollo. Alec. What? Ongers. I'm Ongers. just saying things. You know that Kingsley popular name. Ongers. <laughs> Ongers. <laughs> That's what it is, right? I Kingsley think that Ongers. name has expired. Well, I think that's what your new middle name is. Kingsley, Kingsley Ongers. Yes, that's what we're going to go with. Great. It's that's actually it. spelled exactly like Angers. <laughs> but it's, it's just the it's word the exact, Angers. It's just Kingsley Angers. With the two like, dots what? over the A? That's Messy. Um, Messy. What do we got here? What do we got? What are, what are you guys saying? Such sweet words from Steve Zaragoza. Uh, Someone said, uh, I like your shirt a lot to Kingsley. Yeah, I love the circles, man. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, my God. Thanks. They're a really good size. I just saw, oh, no, it went away. Someone was saying that they hoped that their channel is big enough next year for them to come here. Yeah, and there's just, a lot of different ways yeah, there's to no, do that. There's no, like, criteria. No. You just yeah, you buy just your pass. Buy your pass. I think, and there's, like, creators and, and other passes as well. There's, like, mm -hmm. featured creator. There's regular creators. Yeah. Um, my personal in, favorite, industry. just kind of sneaking in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you can't no, do you that. you can't do that. They made sure. They've that. actually been really intensely diligent about not sneaking yeah. in this year. It's I, a lot of fancy I was wearing stuff. my pass around my side, and some guy was like, keep that on you at all times. And I was like, meh, you <laughs> yeah. got it. I'd gotten in trouble four times, or felt like I was in trouble, like, four times. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Like, I want to be like, it. here. And yeah, they also, like, like, they printed our names. That does now, feel nice. And so, because usually they, we write it with a Sharpie and we decorate it, and I have terrible handwriting. This is great. This is great. It's perfect. It feels great. I'm trying I to like give you a real behind is, the scenes. I, I do like, hi. I'm waving now. Did you get a wave? Yes, I waved. All right. So those at home, waved. keeping the wave count and the peace sign count, add another one to Kingsley. Um, This is, like, a new little design that they did, and it feels very, like, megabyte yeah. doesn't it? It feels like... <laughs> Did you say it? megabyte <laughs> Megabyte-y. It's megabyte. Like it feels like it's like the internal hardware of a computer. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm crazy. No, you're not crazy. I, I see it. And also, it. if you can look, I'm it's gonna a get in trouble. star in there. Symbolism. Illuminati. Oh, not the <laughs> Illuminati. No, check Illuminati. No, oh, she's, jo she's joking. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not in the... Now we're not. In the uh, Illuminati. Now we're uninvited. Um. <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever like uninvited. Fell, uh, have you ever fell down an Illuminati wormhole and come out the other side oh, believing yeah. in the Illuminati? Oh, yeah. 100%. Interstellar 100%. was my like biography. Yeah? Really? Yeah. 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 Please tell me you guys have seen Interstellar. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, what? Interstellar. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Come on. My boyfriend hasn't seen it, and I'm I'm, I'm upset. It's on Hulu. It it's easy sense. to stream. It's on Hulu. It's on the Hulu. Yeah. Of all the things, done deal. Yeah, you have reason. to watch it. Yeah. It Hulu also is Plus. one of those where it's like very like, I don't know, it kind of mixes up your whole world. You're like, I don't know what to believe anymore. Now, whenever I see anyone like do anything like 
when I see a pin drop or when I see some weird thing out of place, <laughs> Not I'm always a like, pin drop. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like when I see something like when I see something fall off a shelf or when I see anything, I'm always like, <gasps> someone's in a different timeline trying to yeah. communicate. Oh, my dad, yeah. he's come back for me. Finally. My dad, it's my dad. You're my dad. Yeah. Speaking of Hulu, do you guys binge watch television shows? Oh, oh yeah, still... viciously. Oh wow. We just I still haven't. You don't. Into you don't a... binge. I have binged, uh, but I don't binge. Like everyone's freaking out about Orange is the New Black. Oh. But for I me, don't... it's I like binge. I don't want to watch the whole season in one day. Right. Because then what do I do the rest of the year? You're very yeah. smart. I have binged. I'm a TV aholic. I'm the first person to admit it. I have a deep love of television, but it's I think it's beyond like escapism. I think it's beyond like trying to get out of it. I think it's like it, it inspires me constantly. I loved it like diving into different things that I wouldn't normally get into. Um, I recently got into Third Rock from the Sun and Ooh. I started binging that because there's uh, five seasons and it's such a good show. So the reason why I binge like older things that like yeah. have oh, already so had full Frazier. seasons. I did the entire the, uh, season of all nine seasons of The Office. Stop at season eight. Um, I say stop at season seven, but that's a debate know, for right? another time. Oh, uh, but yeah, I do that. I binge hard, but Orange Is the New Black, I do binge. And then uh, I, I recently, and we've talked about this, uh, binged the new Maria Bamford. Yeah, Lady uh, Dynamite Netflix show. It's what is this? Lady Dynamite. Mm, I don't it's, know what that uh, is. Maria Bamford, you don't have to binge it, but watch it for sure. Yes, oh. it's it is so good. Brilliant. Yeah. Now it's we're so, so just good. doing our. We did. Lee and I do a podcast. Yes. It's called Shooting Stars, and it, we try to make it a pop culture. Wasn't that good? Wasn't it so that good? Subtle. It was pretty good, right? Yeah. Called Shooting Stars. But <laughs> we a try to make it a pop podcast. culture. It usually ends up becoming about what we did. One podcast that was we mentioned Lady Dynamite, and then the entire podcast. Yeah. Became it was just us talking about it like for an hour, Lady being Dynamite. like, I love it. I love it yeah. too. <laughs> That's the beauty of podcasting. Yeah. You yes. can do whatever you want. You can do just whatever you want. Yeah. Even a tangent like this, we could do right there, just yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, I do binge watch. I wish I didn't, because sometimes things will end and I'm just devastated. Whoa. Speaking Don't of... Don't know if you guys heard I that. I hope that that came through on there so you could hear that the insanity <laughs> of me being like, what is happening? Every oh, Kingsley Wave. You keep getting oh, these good Kingsley screenshots, wave. Lee. Like, this, that's a great shot from... It's a great shot from I my new wasps. wasp. Oh, it's a wonderful shot. That's like a nice, candid. Just oh, I me. wish there was a more. I love when things happen. Like there's a photo. Like say you're flipping your hair and someone captures the moment like of your. Like, it just did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that like, like nice like, love hey, more yeah. now moment. That's I what it love is. that. I, like, I love what it. What I personally like is that my necklace is shining in the light, and this is a necklace with my dog's name on it. Oh. Because I love him more than life itself. It's real. I don't know what I'd ever do without him. That's how I live. I've been trying to get a dog for five years. Kingsley, I will help they're, you get a they're dog. They're everywhere. You what do you mean? No, you I just, I'm gone all the time. No, no, no. Oh. I watch him. I, I want I to him. train. No, I want to train my puppy. No. We'll adopt, don't shop. I'll train your puppy with you. You understand? I've I've helped three friends get dogs now, and no, they've been the see, loves of their life. What's gonna happen is that you're gonna have him. I'm gonna be gone, and then it's not gonna wanna come no, to no, me. No, it's no, no. I'll be like a mommy, crazy like, Aunt Lee. I? It'll be so great. We'll 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 discuss this. We'll later. discuss this, but I but. really feel that you'd be a great dog owner. Yeah, I, and yeah. I feel like you need it. I do need it. It's you time. need it. It's I, time. I want one so I bad. wish you guys would stop arguing so much. <laughs> <laughs> hard. It I makes love me that we're arguing about you getting a puppy. Yeah. But I feel passionately, so I'm what not kind of gonna ease up. I really want a Shetland. However, nice. I know that's kind of a, it's a, big a, it's journey. a medium breed to have like in an yeah. apartment, so yeah. I don't want that yet. Um, I, any small dog that I can fall in love with when I visit these shelters, which I've been going to. Yeah. And it's great, and it's just so heartbreaking. You know what you can it's do? What kind of satiates me a little bit is you can. Um, Follow a thousand dog accounts on Instagram. On Instagram. That helps. Mm -hmm. That's what I do too. One hundred percent. all right, so we're gonna throw over here, we're gonna look at our tag board. Look at our beautiful tag, tag, board. tag board. Tag board here. Uh, and see what everybody's saying. So we got uh, at L Shog saying anyone who wants to get inspired and know more about YouTube and YouTubers, go watch VidCon Live. Creativity is all over the place. Ooh, it's um, true. And yeah, there's gonna be we got more coming up too in a little bit that's gonna be very inspiring and very fun. Yeah, there's a lot of I mean again. Uh, we're it's like really very cool. We're here from nine to five, showing you pretty much the whole All day. All day. All day long. You'll get very sick of us, um, but if you won't. You don't have any um, taste. And then if you guys want to like uh, bring stuff up to us at Kingsley with three Y's, at Lee Newton says, at Elliot C Morgan, um, 
and then and then we have a lot that you guys can engage with. Yep. yep. So we're going to leave you. You guys can check it out. Watch everybody pour in all of their comments. And uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Yeah. Thanks a lot.
Hello. Hello. What is up, VidCon? First day, yeah? Woo! Um, so we're going to get started in a minute. And by a minute, I mean about right now. Let's give Este, Swoozy, George, Mikey, and Luke a big round of applause as they come out on stage. You guys have name tags, too. Hello. Yes. Thanks, bro. I like your hat, too. So, I'm going to hold this. There we go. Thank you guys so much for coming today. Uh, this is a topic that I think is very cool, and I'm really excited to get into it with the panelists up here. It's one that I don't think is necessarily best fitted for a group conversation. I think it's more like these individuals up on stage telling their own Genesis story about how they got started online and about the trajectory and how they transformed and iterated off of that and where they ended up, and then hearing a lot from you guys about what you want to know from them. So we'll have a lot of time for audience questions um, at the end of it. But basically, this is all about defying the vertical limits and people kind of breaking out of the box that they first got in on YouTube and kind of growing as an individual and as a creator um, from that point in time to now. So really excited to get into some of the stories that these people have. We're just going to go down the line and everyone's going to tell a, a little bit about like their origin story and kind of how they ended up where they are now. So George, you want to kick us off? I guess I've got no choice, you know, being right next to you, I sort of have to. But uh, yeah, this is pretty new for me, so if you hear a few voice breaks, it's not that I was drinking too much last night, it was just, uh, this is a little bit new. But uh, yeah, my name is George, George Benson, and I run two YouTube channels, one called Herder of Buffalo, which, uh, yeah, I probably going to be some really confused faces. It means absolutely nothing to me personally, well, it does now. But uh, yeah, that's sort of like a FIFA football YouTube channel, and then I do a daily vlog as well on George Benson Vlogs, and I started daily vlogging about eight months ago, and it's going really well. I really enjoy it. Should I pass the mic along, or? Um, why don't you, so tell us how you got started and what you were doing when you got started, and maybe how your like content and kind of the tra your trajectory on YouTube has changed since then. Sure, I mean, when I first started, obviously, I think everybody, un unless you're, you just have an amazing idea in which you are the, the forefront of that and you actually start something. I was watching other YouTubers and I thought, you know what, this is pretty cool. You know, I like, I used to like playing video games a lot. I don't really do that very much anymore. But uh, I saw people doing that and I thought I wanted to give it a go myself. And I was making FIFA videos and I did a few bits and other funny accent videos and impressions videos as well that hit pretty hard. But uh, I always sort of watched the vlogs and I just saw people living life and traveling and experiencing really awesome stuff. And I just thought that YouTube is such a great platform to not only meet new people, but to give you the opportunities to go to these places, to do all of these things. So that's sort of how I transitioned into the vlogs. And I think it's really important if you ever start on YouTube to actually follow something that you're really passionate about. Because if you don't, you can sort of dig yourself into a bit of a hole. Obviously, some people think that creating content is easy and anyone can just do it and actually make something good. But uh, I think if you really want to progress as an individual and actually take it seriously as a career, it's important that you actually always just follow what you're passionate about and that can often change. And was that a conscious effort? Was that like, okay, I don't like what I'm doing, I want to change this, or you just kept going after what you liked? I think obviously YouTube has progressed so much over the years that more and more people come in, more and more people get involved, and you sort of see a saturation in virtually all fields of YouTube, like whatever genre it is that you're interested in, there's obviously more people this year doing it than there was last year. So I sort of thought to myself, you know, if I want to maintain this as a career and not only just look at it as a job, because it's a pretty amazing job, I don't think there's anything else I'd rather do. But uh, for me, the main thing is enjoyment. It's happiness in yourself, because if you're not happy yourself, it's going to reflect on the content, which reflects on the audience and sort of the message that you put across to them. Very cool. Thanks, George. Mikey, tell us what's up. Um, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Mikey. 
Um, I am a filmmaker, vlogger, YouTuber, whatever you want to call it. Um, I do a little bit of everything at this point. Um, I am someone who started YouTube making videos talking about stories that I experienced, things that I've done, doing things for the first time. Um, and it wasn't 100% what I was planning on doing, yet it was something that I knew would work, so I was doing it. And I started to really enjoy it. Um, but then there was a point where I started to make videos that I put like a massive amount of effort into. Um, videos that took me days to shoot and then days to edit. And um, those videos are the ones that I found were even more fun to make. And I was even more excited about those. Um, and that kind of led me more into like the filmmaking side of my YouTube channel itself. And um, now I, I mix it up. It's, it's a vlog where I just sit down and talk and tell a story or do something that my audience challenged me to do. Um, and then I break it up and I, I make some sort of film or some sort of narrative that tells a story or a way for me to just get whatever it is on my chest off my chest. Um, and that triggered a lot of different things and led me to filmmaking in the traditional sense and um, acting in the traditional sense. And uh, it's just something that YouTube kind of brought into my life uh, just through doing something that I was passionate about, as George said. Do you feel like you have a different audience for your different kinds of videos, or is it one audience that follows you all along? I think it's, it's, um, it's partial. So I think that there's a percentage of people that watch everything, and then I think that there's a large group of people that want to just see the narratives, just want to see the videos that are film-oriented. And then I think that there is a very large group of people that want to just see the vlogs. They want to just see something that is very YouTube driven. Um, there's YouTube videos and then there's like films. And films aren't something that like, they're not huge part of YouTube. A huge part of YouTube is like an entertaining personality and fun stories and short content that you can relate to and relax while watching. Um, and I think sometimes films or narratives or things that involve story sometimes take more effort than what is wanted when watching YouTube. Um, and so I think that's a that's where my audience splits. Got it. Swoozy. Yo. How's it going? Things are good. How are things with you? I'm great, man. Uh, getting started on YouTube, I actually got cast for a TV show on DirecTV, and I didn't think it was going to last. It was too good to be true. It was essentially it was a video game competition. So it's who wants to be a millionaire meets Survivor meets Street Fighter. And on the weekends, I would fly up to LA and we'd shoot. And during the week, since I thought that the show was gonna be over any day now, I would go back to work as a lifeguard at Hard Rock Hotel. Um, and then I was always late coming back from my breaks, like housekeeping would find out that I'm on TV or front desk would find out. So as I'm coming out of the lunchroom, they're like, whoa, stop, you're the TV guy. Talk to me all about this. I wanna be on TV too. So I was always late and I was a broken record. I'm like, listen guys, stop, relax. I'm gonna make a YouTube video. I'm gonna film my travels. I'll upload it and you guys can leave me alone. So I, uh, the next tournament was in New York. You got that, that's the first video on my channel. If you go back to the Stone Age, it's up. Um, and I just kind of started vlogging and traveling and filming the green room, behind the scenes, the stage, going to the video village and the trailer. And then like every TV show, we have off season. So I stopped making videos. And then housekeeping would pull me aside like, yo, where are the videos at, bro? Like we need something, like we, you got us hooked. We wanna see more content. So I was like, well, I don't know what to do. And nobody was vlogging back then. Nobody was setting up cameras. I mean, this is back when YouTube started. Um, so then I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this even though my ex-girlfriend is probably gonna laugh at me for setting up a camera in my bedroom and talking directly to it. And that's what I started doing. I just, first kiss, let's go. And I wanted to treat my audience like they were my intimate circle of friends. So the stuff that I would just share with my boys, those are the stories that I then go and tell to YouTube. Because I figure like if I want an audience, I'm gonna be really genuine with you guys. And it kind of bites me in the butt now because there's a few million of you and it's like, all right, well yeah, I just, this girl gave me a hickey and I wouldn't normally tell this to a million people, but I'm trying to stay with that trend of being genuine with you guys. And then through that, the videos just kind of took on a life of their own. I just wanted to give people that gossip worthy stuff. So when you watch my videos, cause you could be doing a million other things in life, let alone on the internet, 
So I wanted, that, I wanted my channel to stand out in that sense. So uh, I started that back in the day and just kept going. And then I started talking about my life working at Disney and working at Hard Rock. Uh, and then I was still doing this while working at Hard Rock. And then I met Chris Brown. He came through the pool and girls went nuts, like legit. I saw like, a, imagine all you people out by the pool right now and all the girls were going crazy. And I watched this and I was like, I want this. Whatever he's got going on, I want it. So at that point I was like, I have to be famous. So I started putting all my energy into YouTube and here we are now. <laughs> So, 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 was that an inflection point with how your content changed too? Yes and no. Um, I actually told that story about meeting Chris Brown on one of my videos, and even the reaction there. Like, I noticed like a lot of black girls started subscribing to my channel, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like, depending on the videos I talk about, like different people will watch it. So naturally, I started twerking on all my videos. Um, but no, I, I did pay attention a little bit more because at, at a certain point, it's like everybody has community. So we have the anime lovers in the crowd. We have the Disney lovers in the crowd. We have people that love Gossip Girl in the crowd. And so it's like if I make a video about Game of Thrones, there's a whole unit that's going to just watch that because I'm talking about Game of Thrones. So at that point, I kind of realized like, there's a strategy behind this. So yeah, after meeting him, it kind of opened my eyes to the power that celebrityism kind of has, especially in terms of YouTube. And then what about the animation component of your videos? Has that always been like, how have you played that up or down or has that changed over time? So I love to draw. I've always loved to draw, but my problem was I edit, like these guys, they'll tell you that editing takes up a good portion of your life. And I felt like I was editing and YouTubing so much that I didn't have time to feed that habit of drawing. So I was like, you know what, let me integrate the two. So then I started kind of just drawing. My first art video was prom night. And it was a two-part video, and the reaction was nuts. And I realized like, I could tell a story in a way that I could never tell one before. I can exaggerate and talk about something exploding, and I could draw it versus me sitting in the room. It was like, oh, well, I kissed her, and then it was like floating on the cloud, and there was explosions and fireworks. Me saying that is one thing, but me drawing it and animating it is something totally different. So when I saw the reaction from my first animated video, I knew what I had to do. Very cool. Am I Who's supposed next? to talk swoozy right now? <laughs> you know, okay. okay, basically I started about five and a half years ago. I do beauty, fashion, and lifestyle, but I've always come at it from a point of view where I have no idea what I'm actually talking about. So when I move, I am Canadian originally and I moved to England to be with my boyfriend who's in the audience and I really had no friends. I had nothing else to do and I found, I was like, oh, maybe I'll go shopping, make myself feel better. So I looked up what are the best lipsticks to buy and I discovered this huge group of girls and people talking about makeup and I thought, okay, maybe I can do this. And as I started making these videos, I realized this isn't actually about the makeup. This isn't about the clothes. This is your big sister. This is your best friend. These are people you really connect with. And that's sort of when I started realizing this is next level. Like this isn't just talking about the lipsticks anymore. So yeah, I guess I, I've been doing that for five and a half years now. Kind of crazy. Um, I don't really know what else to say about that, <laughs> but that's what happened. Was there... So how does your content different today than when it was kind of when you first had that realization? Well, I think today a lot of people are starting, especially in the beauty community, there's so many girls who come to me and say, how can I be a famous beauty YouTuber? They want to do that as a career. Whereas when we all started, there was no career to start. We were really just doing it for the passion of talking about makeup and talking to each other, you know, on a personal level. It's changed a lot in that sense and also just the, the way brands are kind of taking notice to, you know, integrating products into a video, for instance, like they have a direct link to an audience that wants to buy the stuff, you know, so it's becoming a bit, you know, more commercial in that sense. And it's a, a bit more difficult to navigate that sort of stuff, um, which is really interesting to see how that's all changed and is changing for the better. I don't know. But that was your, in terms of the content you're creating, your big aha moment was when you realized that you're the big sister or the best friend. <laughs> from like, yeah. instead of just reviewing stuff, like you're playing that yeah, role. Yeah, I think so. And it's like what Swoozie said as well, like when you make videos, you realize you're talking to these people like 
they're your your bros or whatever, you know? So my girls. Um, so you're talking to these people in a completely different way than what you'd normally talk to a huge crowd of people in front of you, you know? And when you realize that, I feel like that's a big aha moment for a lot of YouTubers because it is that relatability. It is, you know, the type of content that you can't get by watching TV, you know? Very cool. Everyone think of some questions because we're gonna open up right after, uh, right after Luke. Hey guys, uh, my name is Luke Corns. Oh, this microphone's short. Um, you know, I kind of grew up on YouTube. Um, I, I started watching YouTube when I was like 11, and I always had this this passion to create. And I would I would beg my parents every day. I was like, "Can I make a YouTube video?" And they're like, "Wait till you're 13. Follow the rules." <laughs> uh, but uh, finally, on my 13th birthday, no, not really, but um, around that time, I uploaded like this stop motion video. And back in the day, that was like huge on YouTube. So I was like, maybe this is gonna go viral, maybe. Uh, it never did. But um, <laughs> I, I got this just passion to create, and even though for the first two years of my channel, I only had um, a minuscule amount of viewers, probably like, I think I had 200 subscribers for the first couple, at least the first year. But um, I, I did these short films with my friends, and I had this passion to be this filmmaker. And then slowly, um, I, w I was starting to gain subscribers, and I kind of froze up because to create a, a short film every week was out of my reach. I couldn't do that, so I discovered this thing called vlogging, and that's when when vlogging was kind of being introduced into the YouTube world. So I kind of more transitioned into kind of a, a vlogging thing, and like don't get I, I love it. I, I love vlogging, but I think my roots are are still in in filmmaking. So uh, throughout my growth in my channel and just th throughout the last couple of years, I've kind of been like... Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to VidCon Live. My name is Elliot Morgan and I'm here with just no nobody. They all, they all left. It's, it's fine. It's lonely. It's, it's very lo It's sad, you know, but I'm going to push through and I'm going to be okay. We're going to go uh, straight right now over to the Kia Arena, you guys, for a variety show. There's also going to be a tribute to Christina Grimmy, and we're going to see this hosted by Kingsley, who uh, left a little bit ago to run over there. We're going to see a little bit from John and Hank Green, the Thirst Project, Anna Akana, 10 Second Songs, Glozelle, Jack Douglas, Louis Cole, Issa, and Gigi Gorgeous. I, I think I said all of those correctly, and if I didn't, I'm so sorry, guys, and I, I apologize. Please, just please forgive me. And then after that, we're going to have a QA and a with Lily Singh, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere, have fun, pop some popcorn, and uh, we'll see you guys in just a little bit. Bye. Um, hi, good morning. Welcome to the uh, seventh annual uh, VidCon. Uh, my name is John Green, this is my brother Hank Green. He started the conference, but I was on the phone with him, so I am technically its co-founder. <laughs> Thanks, John, for all the support you have given me over the years by, well, I'm not gonna, actually, now I feel bad, because you did do a lot for me over the years. Oh, You're a great brother. oh, oh man, don't make me cry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm emotional anyway. Listen, before we start the show, if I can figure out how to make my camcorder work, which is an open question. You've been doing this for a long time, John. You know, we're about to celebrate our 10-year anniversary on YouTube, and yet somehow I'm still pretty incompetent. If you could just say, good morning, Hank, it's Tuesday. I realize that it's not Tuesday, but it will be Tuesday in the fullness of time, and that is when I will need this video clip. So if you could just say, good morning, Hank, it's Tuesday, on three. One, two, three. Good morning, Great, thank you. Good morning, you guys. Now I feel, I feel like I have to say that. <laughs> um, Welcome. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for coming to this show. Thank you for being here. I, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to have. So we started VidCon uh, back in 2010 because we were and remain obsessed with the explosion in creativity and community that online video has made possible. 
VidCon has grown a bit since then, and, and you might think that seven years on, we look back at 2010 as the good old days, and we're nostalgic for when YouTube was smaller and this conference was smaller and we could all be silly and just fun in games. Um, and sure, maybe we are nostalgic, but I think that has more to do with us just being old guys now. Uh, because true. in fact, it was always a big deal. We always felt like it was a big deal. And in addition to it being a big deal, it was silly then and it's silly now. And I love that we get to be, we just get to have, have a good time and not take it all too seriously. Yeah, I mean, Hank said before that silly is not the opposite of thoughtful. And I think online video embodies that. My favorite creators are goofy, and serious. We get to see them be both hilarious and heartfelt. We get to see, we get to laugh with them, but we also get to engage in the big questions of being a person with them. And that's what uh, this celebrates for me. This month, our community experienced. Hank's not even going to make it through that. Um, a terrible tragedy. Uh, Christina Grimmie, a passionate and dedicated and innovative and talented YouTube creator, was killed after her concert, and then the next day, 49 people were murdered at a gay club in Orlando. At no VidCon, we, uh, we uh, have these wristbands. Sorry, I only have two hands. Um, these are available at the DFDBA.com booth. Uh, if you give any donation of any amount, they will give you one. It's just to the left side of the booth. You don't have to wait in the main line or anything. Uh, and I hope to see lots of those around. Uh, the money that we raise at VidCon will be given to the families of the victims of the killings at Pulse. So stop by. Um... <laughs> You'll see a volunteer there, and uh, they're great wristbands. They say, love is love is love is love is love from uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda's beautiful speech at the uh, Tonys. Um, Christina um, was, I know, she, her innovation and her generosity will affect this industry and this community forever, um, and I'm proud of that. Her memory will always be with us. But a bunch of her friends reached out to us because they wanted to share a tribute that they were putting together for her memory. So please join us in listening and watching to uh, dozens of YouTubers and her friends who worked with her uh, performing one of her songs. Thank you.
Thanks to all the performers on that uh, amazing video. So traditionally, in, in moments like these, we take a moment of silence in our culture, and we encourage you to honor Christina's memory in whatever way you wish. Um, but she was a talented and innovative performer, and we would like to ask for, instead, a minute of applause for Christina. For who she was and what she did. And for all the gifts that she gave to us. Thank you, Thank Christina. You, Christina. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your support, uh, for the support of this wonderful community, and for being a thoughtful part of it. And thank you so much for coming to VidCon. Uh, and now, as part of just some of the amazing things that this community can do together, yeah. we would like to invite to the stage the Thirst Project. Thank you. Andrea Russett. I am Remy Cruz. <laughs> and I'm Melissa Violet. Uh, and I'm Seth Maxwell, and I serve as the founder and CEO for Thirst Project. Right now, on our planet, still today, 663 million people do not have access to basic, safe, clean drinking water. 4,100 children under the age of five will die today from waterborne diseases. The Thirst Project is the world's largest youth organization project. Uh, we aren't by any means the oldest, but we're definitely the largest youth water organization in the world uh, because of the support of so many people like you, so many people in this room. And 100% of all public and student donations that we raise is used directly to fund projects on the ground without us taking any overhead or admin to operate off of. The online community has been a huge part of making the Thirst Project's worst work possible since the beginning. Um, and John and Hank just did an amazing job uh, talking about Christina, and this pr particular community is super special to us. And I think that sometimes it can feel frivolous to come together and celebrate in the wake of such incredible suffering like what our nation's seen in the last couple of weeks. Um, but I think that the best way to honor our brothers and sisters is to not let the light and love of our work be put out by the darkness of the hatred of others. And just three months ago, Christina actually performed a concert fundraiser for Thirst Project to help raise money and awareness for those who need it most. And then just a few days later, we woke to the news of the greatest mass shooting in our nation's history. And I think that one of the things everybody keeps saying, even President Obama said it in his speech, was that that particular shooting affects the LGBTQ community more than any other. And the thing that I struggle with is that I think that he's right, but I wish that he wasn't. I wish that it affected everyone equally. You know, I think that for us, when we think about the work we do with Thirst Project, the greatest medical and scientific discovery of our generation wasn't the discovery of the Higgs boson or any other fascinating discovery like that, but it was the sequencing of the human genome which revealed to us that every single thing that makes you different from the color of your hair to the color of your skin is determined by less than 0.5% of your genes. So whether you're someone struggling for survival in a refugee camp on the other side of the world or whether you're a movie star in Los Angeles, 99.5% of all of your genes are exactly the same. And isn't it funny that we spend 99.5% of our time focusing on the 0.5% that makes us different when we should spend 99.5% of the time focusing on what makes us the same? And no matter what place, you, yeah. No matter what city you live in, what state, what country, what religion, what gender, what sexual orientation you identify with, the issues of the people who are suffering in Orlando from 
a couple weeks ago and the suffering of someone attacking someone like Christina, those are all our issues. This issue, the water crisis, is our issue no matter where you come from. I think the thing that strikes us the most is that a tragedy like that can shrink you in an instant. It can feel like one bad person with a gun can do more damage in a minute than you can do good in a lifetime. But there are people today in communities that Christina never met on the other side of the world because of what she did with us, who, as a result, mothers will never have to worry about whether their kids will die of waterborne diseases because of the work that she did, because of the work that you guys do here today. These basic waterborne diseases are being addressed. And I think that the best way to honor her and them is to say that tonight we bring our best to them. Last year, we as a VidCon community again funded two new freshwater wells in Swaziland through the Thirst Project. We're making progress. Check out this video of one of the actual wells that you guys funded last year. That's a real water project that was funded by you guys last year. The work you guys are doing here matters. And, and this year, we're super excited to announce a brand new initiative. On World Water Day this year, we launched an initiative called the G20. This group of 20 influencers have come together to host fundraising campaigns over the course of the next calendar year and have collectively committed to raise $1.2 million, 100% for water projects, to help end the water crisis collectively. And I'm super excited today to announce not only that initiative, but some of the inaugural class of the G20. All of us standing on this stage are members of the G20, and we are committed to this fight. And now we want you guys to join the fight. Text the keyword VIDCON to 97779. I promise it's not a donation. Your phone won't be charged. But it's a pledge for you to commit to start your own fundraising campaign to help us end the water crisis. Between now and Saturday, we're going to select one person who pledges to launch a fundraiser to receive a free television from our partners at Vizio. Yeah. Remember, text the keyword VidCon to 9779. Oh, wait, did I say that right? 97779. Three sevens. To join and be under to win a sweet television from Vizio. What we do here matters, and you guys matter. Water is a human right. Join the fight. Thanks, guys. This is what, see, at rehearsal, they told us there was going to be this loud-ass, dramatic yes. voice that was like was Kingsley like, and Miles, and that just did not happen. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like very silent. Yeah. And they were like, go. <laughs> Thanks. Woo. Thank y'all. How are you guys doing today? <sighs> well, I didn't come out here to, for Japan for that. You know, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he said, how are you guys doing? 
Uh, same, same. Hold on, I kind of want to pit them against each other. Okay. I've always wanted to do this and I've never had the chance. So oh, like, wow. we're gonna divide you guys like the Hunger Games and there's gonna be this side and then this side and then okay. that side. Okay. So, how many of you are excited to see the variety show today? Okay, okay, excuse me, sir, excuse me. Okay, now, how many of y'all are ready for the variety show today? No, they know what's up. They do, they yes. do. But how about you guys in the middle? <laughs> okay. That was okay. That was all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was great. Yeah. Yeah. I this weekend I was at EDC. I oh. don't know how many of you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So I'm like mm -hmm. in pain. My ears are busted. I was wearing like these raggedy boots, trying to be cute. I don't know why my feet are in pain. I'm just going through it right now. Girl, your feet are in pain, girl. Yeah, you were on. He, you, you I don't. Where were you? Tell them where you were. <laughs> I oh. just came back from Japan, <laughs> and I was running around those streets, girl. My feet are so calloused. How and... was that? I've never been to Japan. <sighs> it was so lit. It was really lit. Like the clubs were banging. They knew what was up in. Japan. If y'all haven't been, you need to go. Like, it's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you there? I was there for about two weeks, and then um, before that, I was in Korea. So, yes. Oh, we doing a little okay. Little yes. <laughs> Just all over the place. Yeah, you know, trying. I'm a traveling girl, so, you know, I like to ride through those streets, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a really, really amazing show planned for you guys. Yes. Lily Singh is here. Lily. Do any of you guys know her? <laughs> I think they do. She's fun. She's a bae. She's amazing. She's talented. She's brilliant. She's beautiful. Her hair is really long. Mm -hmm. She's from India. She's from Toronto. Yes. She has, like, different personalities. Yes. One day, I hope she, like, whips me in the face with her hair. Just, like, that would be a blessing to me. You know? <laughs> That's some Fifty Shades of Grey type. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I mean, I want to get whipped in the hair by Lily's face. Uh, by her hair, you know? Oh, my God. I said whipped in the hair by, by Lily's face. face. I mean, you know, either or. I don't care. Um, <laughs> Anna Akana. Yes, Miss Anna here. Akana. Yeah. She is my fave. I love her. Ten second songs. Yes, ten second songs. Todrick Hall. <laughs> yeah. And then a bunch of people are coming out to do yes. something really, really fun later. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys know who they are, but I, I, I kind of want to surprise them. I don't know if yeah. we should tell them who they are. I don't know. But they're going to do like a challenge. Maybe their edges might get snatched. Yeah, they should get snatched yeah. all the way off. Just, we're going to scalp you guys real quick. Yeah. So. <laughs> but speaking of variety, we yes. wanted to talk to you guys about this year mm -hmm. on the internet because I don't know if any of you guys participated in anything we're about to talk about, but if you did, you might need medical assistance. Yes. Um, let's start off with what you said earlier. It's oh. lit. Oh, yes. Who, who started that? And why did you guys participate? And what does it mean? And why? Like, yes. you used it. What is it? What is that? Well, litness, King's Lee. Okay. The definition is that it is on fire. The term meaning that it is hot, which means that <laughs> it <Okay>. is. <laughs> okay. So, like, yes. your shoes yes. are lit. These shoes are lit. <laughs> <laughs> that side of the audience is lit. lit. I don't think they're lit. That was no. the, that was like that was like that was pretty cold. Yeah, the that fire was, like was out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they were. What about them? <laughs> okay, they lit over here. They lit. Okay, y'all lit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they're one also person well. was lit by themselves. <laughs> yes. Um, you see you. The the the, the dab. Mm. People were doing this, and that, you guys know how when you're like trying to like slyly see if your armpit smells like ass. Right. That's what I thought people were doing oh. when they did that, but apparently it's a dance. I well, you know, two in one, Kingsley, I always say, why not check yourself and, you know, look fresh at the yeah. same time? Okay, all right, you that's fresh enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the Kylie Jenner lip challenge. Oh, ooh, see, ooh, I can't. I'm not doing that. That's not that. lit, apparently. <laughs> Everyone, oh. A lot of people were doing that. Yes. You guys were sucking bottles <laughs> trying to get Kylie Jenner's lips as though it's not makeup. Like, what yes. the hell is wrong with people? I don't, I don't, 
You know, I could have just settled with the alternative and just draw a big circle around your lips and then call uh -huh. it a day, you know? Same thing. This is a mess. Um, finally, prom proposals. Did any of you go to prom this year? Okay. So did any of you have any proposals at your school or Anything on Twitter? Extravagant. Yeah. Okay, we got one over that, here. That was, that was extra. That was really, really extra. I don't even remember. Like, I'm jealous. Yeah. Because when I was in high school, I didn't even have any money. And people are like renting out their courtyards and, and balloons and flowers just to ask somebody out for one night. I mean, it's cute, but what, what are y'all doing? Girl, well, the most. The it's most. The most. The absolute most. And their best. <laughs> They're doing their best, Kingsley. But personally, um, you know, promposal, I just feel like, you know, if you can do it, then you do that, you know? Just make it all extra and stuff. What is this reading rainbow oh, voice? Girl, I just love what, what are you? What are you doing? I just have to know, be really it. inspirational. You know, I just think it's really nice that they're all, you know, being very um, encouraging, you know, and they really bring it out in people. You know what I'm saying, Kingsley? You know what I'm saying? I don't know him. <laughs> I literally just got here and they were like, you're going on stage with him. And I was like, okay. Yeah, I just snuck in the panel. I don't know about y'all, but I'm but, actually not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually really, really close to starting. And I yes. think the first act mm -hmm. are these amazing yes. group of guys. Yes. And I feel like the name of their group kind of explains it all. It's, it, I think mm -hmm. it's like, it's, is it two seconds? Like five, four. Uh, I, no, it's. Not, I think it's more than that. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. But there's four guys. Oh, there's four guys, but they all do this thing where they like. Right. They do these songs for like ten okay. seconds. Tell yeah. me the team. Ten fucking seconds. My ten seconds. Oh, oh, scram. Ten seconds song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> wide your frame of references. So today, we're going to be taking care of... I'm joined with my band, Set the... Well, we're normally called Set the Charge. Today, we're just going to go by the name Anthony and the Pipsqueaks. I'm gonna ask again, how you all feeling today, VidCon? Okay.
Thank you, everybody. We're 10 second songs.
That was a lot. I know. You guys are amazing. Snatch my edges. That just snatched. Snatch <laughs> that was like fighting with your friends over the aux cord, but oh I liked God. it. <laughs> that was great. That was amazing. Oh my goodness. Yes. Give another round of applause. <laughs> I know. Like having it on this stage. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I love you guys too. Oh, so very cute. sweet and unexpected. Oh. So this next, you, you, Miles loves this next I, person. I don't. She has so a I'm just place gonna in my heart. stand here and learn like yeah. a kindergartner. Well, her name is Anna Aquano. You guys know her. Uh, I love this girl. She is actually here with a little something something special. You might have heard of it, Miss. 2059? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm actually so stoked for it. So um, without further ado, here it is. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. What, what are these voices? Well, like, girl, I got to give them something. They didn't come I, all the way here I, for I, nothing. My sister Arden sacrificed her whole life for this tournament. And through her bravery, humankind pushes on with dreams of tomorrow. There's just one problem. Eight billion people watching and her nose looks crazy shiny. What? Like you weren't thinking it. Matter transference will commence in three, two, one. What? Oh, thank God. We can finally switch. We can't it. switch. You've got to win this tournament, Victoria. You've got to win the whole thing. What? Remind me again what happens if I just quit and come home. Aliens invade the Earth and kill everyone you've ever cared about. That's like 100% for sure. This is not a pageant. Really? Because I just spent last week starving to death next to a woman who wanted to kill me. Seems pretty similar. Too slow. You know, some people respond better to positive encouragement. The other competitors are gonna do a lot more than hurt your feelings. Oh, come on. Still not hearing positive vibes. You're the hero, Vic. Better get used to it. What makes you think you can take on the most powerful force in the universe? Don't you get it? They chose the right sister after all. Let's go finish this tournament. <laughs> Who am I? Oh my God, what is going on? Oh my goodness, look at this audience. Guys, uh, hey. how did you like the trailer for Miss 2059? Was it okay? Oh, thanks, cool. Well, we are here today to promote the show. And yeah. in the spirit of the show, Chris and I are gonna hold a tournament ourselves. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. Uh, we are actually gonna do YouTubers versus three of yourselves. Yes. Yes. Who's into that? <laughs> All right, so let's actually, let's introduce our YouTube team first. Can I please get Brad Gage, Mitchell Davis, and Whoa. Megan Camarena? Wow. Here we go. What's up, Team YouTube? We'll have you on this side. For shizzle. Get over there, get over there, get over there. Sexy yes. people. Sexy, sexy people. <laughs> Are you guys prepared to win? <laughs> yeah. To represent all YouTubers? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't say that. That's too much. <laughs> uh, we, we, don't, we also need three lovely people from the audience. Oh, oh Chris! Okay. Whoever how, gives Chris the most money will be able to come up. How are we supposed oh my to God. do it? There's one. Here, come up. There we go. We got one. Uh, two. Two, two, two. Ready? Three. We got you. Come on around. All right, so around. Jody will show you how to get up on the stage, guys. Mm. Right Ooh. over here. Let's give our volunteers a hand. <laughs> yes. yes. Thanks for volunteering as a here. They have no idea what's about to happen. I know. <laughs> They're going to regret it oh. real fast. 
This okay. is exciting. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to say come. that they're going down, but they're going down. Get up here. All right, come on. Shit, shit, it's fine. Yeah. Hustle, guys. We're waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's let's just, let's just dance. What I don't want to explain the game without them because then they won't know what they're doing. <laughs> dun, 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 so stop. who here's enjoying VidCon so far? <laughs> yes. Yes. How much do you guys like to scream? <laughs> Give it up for pizza! Yeah! Okay. We don't, hey, have, we don't have pizza. Wait, no, buy a one more. One more. One more. Uh, Who? Who? Kittens, like oh, kitty kittens. 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 Kids! Kids! I thought you said kids. Here we go. I was like, up for cans. Let's get their names. What's your name? Victoria. 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 Elia. 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 Sarah. 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 Victoria. Woo, 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 woo. I got Sarah. my eyes on Sarah. Elia representing all of our lovely audience. So the game we are going to play, Chris and I are basically directors, but you are the audience. These people are going to act out scenes from this 2059, and you will do a like or a dislike if they did it oh, as good as the series. Brutal. Chris, do you have anything to add before we begin? Uh, just good luck, okay? Don't try die. Try your best. Okay. That's all we want. We just want you to we try your best. We just want you to try your best. Okay. Okay. First challenge. She gets it. She gets it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Nervous. This is for the YouTubers, okay? Okay. Yeah. We want you to act as if you're tearing out your own heart. What? And action. Wait. Three, two. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. We're tearing out our own I heart. I gotta Who's put this heart? down. Yeah, put, yeah, you won't need those. I'm gonna use this. Three, two, two one. one. And action. action. <laughs> okay. All right, this is this interesting. Is oh, this is good. Megan's this is good. committed. <laughs> that was beautiful. She's got the pot. She's got the pot. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah! Okay, okay. Time is up, my friends. That was okay. very dramatic. That is not <laughs> vegan. That is just, not I vegan. just threw your heart Should in the Should we compare that to the clip? Let's compare it to the clip. Let's compare it to the I clip. I feel like we nailed it. The clip. What are you happen. doing? You can't. That's a guy's oh. heart. That's a guy's heart. We need to get out of here. That guy just wow. pulled the guy's, wow. that guy's yeah. heart out. That Would you guys give them a, a like or a dislike for that performance? Like or dislike? Like or dislike. Like or dislike. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Look at let's, those just, let's just I count real quick. Some I see pretty it. thumbs out uh, there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good looking thumbs. What a thumbs up. Oh, I love those thumbs up. You guys Feels right. good. Okay, we'll give Feels them nice. a win for that one. One point wow. for the YouTubers. Yeah. Okay, next challenge. Are you guys ready? Okay, your challenge. Come on, guys. You have to cross the stage like you're dodging an alien laser gun while all of us throw these balls at you. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Let's all grab balls. Whoa. I would like you to aim for the head if possible. Okay. Are you ready, guys? And go! Action. That was pretty good. <laughs> Megan totally <laughs> Megan just yeah. threw it immediately to the ground. You just like shot at a three-point line. Yeah. Guys, that, that was, was good. LeBron. That was awesome. That was like an action movie. That was but great. But let's compare it to the clip. To the clip. Ooh. I yes! In your face, electric space away. Man. Woo! Awesome. I didn't see any cartwheels from them, so I don't, I don't know. I don't, what do you think? Oh. Would you give them a like or a dislike? Like, like, oh, overwhelming yes. like! I was impressed. I, that I mean, is I, two I enjoyed points it. for the Anytime audience. Anytime I can throw anything at people, I have a good yeah. time. You do. It's it's true. Dodgers. Violence is fun. <laughs> okay. This okay. Show we ready for the next challenge? Crazy. I think we're ready for the next challenge. Okay, guys. Oh, heart gets you ready? Was it for us? It's for you guys. Bring it. Step off. Bring it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, guys. Please stick a gummy worm up your, all the way up your nose. What? A it's a sour you? gummy Bring worm. Bring on the gummy worm. Can I just do the up laser thing? I just want to do the laser up thing. Up your nose. It's Wait. the laser thing. All the way up your nose. Up in your nose. It's fine. I've done it before. It's fine. What? We've, we've what? Yeah. What? Yeah, to show off. In middle school, I, sh I shoved a Three. worm up my nose. Okay, so everyone Two. Just, one. Go. Oh, fail, oh, fail. I, oh, my, oh my God. God. Whoa, 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 whoa! No! Stop! That's my boyfriend. <laughs> no fear. Oh, wow! Oh, wow, that's pretty good. 
Megan. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I, I feel like I made the right decision just launching. Hey, okay. <laughs> Mitchell, I got you a worm. You want to? No, 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 no. I just I got it for you. Yeah. Let's let's see the clip. Let's check. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. What is up with this place in bugs? You had help. I you like that snort. Yummy. I like the snort you made. It's delicious. What would you say? Would you give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Lots of thumbs <laughs> down. Oh my god, I've oh, seen so many thumbs, thumbs down. down. I'm gonna throw you my thumb in the air. How was I yeah. supposed to do that? I was I supposed to do that. Fail. That's crazy. Fail. That's Fail. crazy. Let's go back to our winners over here. These weren't real All right, worms. Guys. That is crazy. Your next challenge. You have to give us five dance moves in 30 seconds. I'm gonna oh. dance for 30 seconds. Don't worry, oh, you look we'll so scared. Are you okay? You're like thinking rapidly of all the dance moves. Are you guys ready? Play the music. Play the music. They have music? Ready. There's one. one. That's one dance move. Chicken we need dance, two. Okay, okay, we need some more. Victoria, three. you gotta get oh. in there, Victoria. Oh, oh that's a three. The Macarena's a three. Yeah. Bring it down. This is my favorite song, too. So. Great dance, oh, Gandam, baby. Gangnam style, that's one cool. More. I have Milking the, the cow! Yes. Milking the cow! Yes. I saw five. I saw five. I saw five. I saw more than five. Yeah. You were really going for it, Sarah. Well done, guys. You That's too. pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. So we see the clip? Of course we should see Let's the see clip. Let's see the clip just to check. They're, they're getting easy stuff. Arden, I promise you, just because you have fun for one minute doesn't mean something bad is going to happen. Thank you. Can you. Uncross your arms. So good. I'm assuming it's our Would turn. they be thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up or thumbs down, people. Come oh, on. it's a... Be critical, oh, no, be critical. I see, I see a lot of thumbs up. I see one of one I this. I see a million thumbs up. Okay. Fantastic. Woo! How many points do they get? I'm impressed. They have more points than the YouTubers. That's all I know. 35 points uh, that, go to this side. Right. We have to do our last challenge since okay. we are on the clock. Okay, okay, Chris, guys, take it away. It. This, is it. this is the final challenge, isn't this? Final is for challenge, everyone. final this is challenge. For everyone. Okay, you've got to act out having an excruciating headache. Okay? Yes. Okay, Three, both. Two, two one, one, go. Ah, okay, they're crying. Oh, no. They're crying. Oh, Everyone's oh. falling to their knees. Okay. No. They're all silent. These are silent wow. headaches. Okay, let's let's see the clip. Okay, let's, let's, see, the clip. Oh, let's see the clip. Baby Tylenol is all I need. A head massage. Roll the clip. You guys hear that? Do you hear that? Uh, the pain. Not... Wait, what's happening? Hey, what's wrong? Good way wrap. Oh. Would you give these headaches thumbs up or oh, thumbs guys. down? Who won? Who right. won? Give me a cheer for this side. Cheer for this side. <laughs> Clearly, we that know way. who the winners that are. Way. Thank oh, you, guys. We have a bag of prizes for you behind for our lovely Sabrina. Thank you so much, guys. Miss 29 is available on Go90 now. The app Ooh. and the series is completely Ooh. free. Have a final round for our losers. Loser. Thank you. <laughs> Best losers of the night. Losers. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Oh, and we're gonna throw some t-shirts in the crowd. Oh, that's oh, right. T-shirt time. Oh, oh. I want, I want yeah, to throw, I can some, chuck. throw some shirts. I played baseball in high school. I could do this. We'll go all the way. One more time for Miss 2059. I got emotional backstage at like the abuse of those sour gummy worms. I just that don't was... think those are the type of food you just waste like that no. and put in people's nostrils. Like that could have been down my throat. Yes. I'm upset. Like, I'm where's the rest of the bag angry. at? Speaking of. Where so, uh, <laughs> wait, what, what are you looking for? The rest of the gummy worms. Uh, like, that, that is a good question, <laughs> and we are going to find those coordinates when we go backstage. Yes. But in the meantime, <laughs> this next human being Ortiz. is one of my favorite people <laughs> on the planet. And she is 
just so beautiful and talented and motivational. And she has, yes. I guess, face whippable hair. Yes, face whippable hair. <laughs> and I just have to say her outfit right now is on point. So yes. please give a welcome to Lily Singh. I love you. Hey, let me do whatever everyone wants to go. Superwoman, make some noise. Snap, crackle, pop. Y'all having a good time? No, hold on, hold on. That was kind of lame and kind of weak. I need you to seriously, as loud as you can, make some noise. Sick. I am so excited to be here. And you should be so excited to be here because I have something really super special to tell you. Are you ready to hear it? Okay. Well, uh, I have a friend. Uh, to be honest, he might kind of be like my best friend. To be honest, he might kind of be like my boo thing, you know what I mean? Kind of like my boo, my boo thing. And he has a really special announcement, but he couldn't be here today. So he wanted to tell you through a video. You want to check it out? Yeah. All right, let's check it out. Listen to me. You must discover the secret of the forest. Once a generation, there comes an event so epic that it dominates our culture and alters our perspective on life as we know it. Something larger than any of us is happening. to change the course of history and challenge humanity to rethink everything. The only question is, when this change rocks the world, I should start a YouTube channel. Hey, Ray, go ahead and uh, call the president of the internet. Tell him Rock's got a hell of an idea. Yeah, it's time to change the game. Yeah, but first Rock's got to clear his, um, his browsing history. Yeah. Hold that call, Ray. This could take a while. Hey, what's going on, VidCon? Dwayne Johnson here. I am so sorry that I can't be with you there in person. Uh, instead, I am here shooting, filming, very late night right here, Fast and Furious 8. I just want to thank somebody. I want to thank my homegirl, my ace. Lily Singh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, myself and Lily, we're gonna do some really, really cool things in the future. We can't wait to bring them to you. So I wanted to create something cool. I wanted to create something big, something epic, something epic. And I thought, you know what? Let's create this YouTube channel. Let's create something that's gonna be awesome. Let's create a platform for entertainment. More importantly than that, you're gonna see stuff that you're familiar with, stuff that you've never seen. You're gonna see stuff from me. You're gonna see stuff from them. You can't even see who they are. Here's the best part about it. I just wanted to create a platform that shines a light on the incredible YouTube talent that's out there. YouTube talent that a lot of people have seen and, and YouTube talent that no one has seen. I wanna shine the light on them. I can't wait to bring you the channel. Me and Lily can't wait to do our thing. Can't wait to do our thing for you guys. Um, thanks for coming by. Go to, uh, let me think, the channel is called YouTube.com. What is YouTube? YouTube.com slash The Rock. Shut the f up, Vin Diesel. I know what it is. Son of a bitch. Sorry about that, VidCon. Okay, stop on by YouTube.com slash The Rock. Have a great night. Snap, crackle, pop. Okay, but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. I know we're all super excited. You know I'm excited. Uh, I'm super honored to officially welcome Dwayne The Rock Johnson to YouTube. That's pretty cool. 
And although he couldn't be here, I thought it might be kind of cute if I send him a text video of this moment. You guys want to be in it? Okay. So what's going to happen is I'm going to say, hey, Dwayne, just announce your stuff. And then when I turn it over, maybe on the, like, I'll say, hey, Dwayne, just announce your channel. The audience has something to tell you. You all say, we smell what The Rock is cooking. Can you, can you handle that? Let's try it. Count of three. Ready? One, two, three. We smell what The Rock is cooking. Amazing. Now, but can you do me one more favor? In your spots, can you stand up so we can, so we can do this right? Okay. So I'm going to press record. And I'm going to say, hey, DJ, just announced your channel. I'm so happy for you. The audience has something they want to tell you. I'm going to turn it. We smell what the rock is cooking. Then you cheer. You got it? You do it? You're pumped? OK. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, DJ, I'm here at VidCon. Just announced your channel. And we're so excited. And the audience has something to tell you. We smell what the rock is cooking. We're so proud of you. Welcome to YouTube. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe to youtube.com slash The Rock. Make some noise one more time. Have some fun, VidCon. <laughs> oh, my God. 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 I'm like that. Oh, my God. The Rock has a YouTube channel. Oh, my God. He has a YouTube channel. I can't read. I mean, everyone, you can also know what he's cooking. Like, does anyone know what he's cooking, though? Because no. I've been trying to figure that out I can't since I was like a child. Cooking channel, honestly. Do you think it's a cooking channel? I think it's a cooking channel. I can't wait, honestly. I would love that. Some I, I quality, just, healthy yes. recipes by The Rock. And mussels. Yes. <laughs> so, this next person, I just, we were backstage fighting if they even needed an introduction. Yes. Um, I don't think they do, but if you put like Beyonce and Mickey Mouse mm -hmm. and just charisma Disney. and Disney and yes. work ethic and everything into a blender, um, this, this guy might pop out of the blender. Maybe. <laughs> just, just, yeah, I, but, I, do you guys know who it is? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And they know who it is. Please okay. welcome to the stage, hey. Todrick Hall. Todrick Hall. Flashing light is how I survive and I need to be fair, be fair. Cause tonight we're the geeks, we're taking over the streets. We've been plotting and planning, saying we gon' do this for weeks. And we're acting a fool, we're breaking every rule. We're gonna howl at the moon just cause we think it's cool. Then gone, let me hear you scream! So who let the freaks out, let the freaks out.
I am so excited to be here today. This is my first VidCon ever. It's a very special day for me because I dropped a visual album on my YouTube channel. This is the title song for my new tour coming up, Over the Rainbow. Little boys don't cry, little boys aren't shy. Little boys are tough, they do stuff that little girls don't try. Little boys don't dance, little boys wear pants. Little boys are bold, you've been told you don't hold little boys' hands. Dad said, I don't believe in magic, but I do believe in you. And son, if you believe in daddy, take a look at this book and believe it's true. Somewhere oh, oh, over the rainbow And if you change the way you love Then maybe you can go The streets are paved with bricks of gold And if you want to see Come pray with me That somewhere oh, oh, over the rainbow There's a man who's powerful and he wants you to know where the rain goes after the pain goes. They'll be dancing with halos somewhere over the rainbow. Thank you so much. I love you back. Todrick Hall! How you doing? That was incredible. Thank you. Now. Oh my God, for those that don't know, uh, that's from Straight Outta Oz, but you just released the entire visual album on your channel. Yes, well, since I've been here, so it's been so crazy. I know you guys haven't had a chance to see it, but you gotta go watch it today. She's like, I will, I will be there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and Straight Out Oz is huge. I mean, uh, it's obviously a dream come true for you. Uh, I've heard you talking about it. I, I know that it's big, but it's also got a tour, and it's got the albums out right now. Uh, a lot of this stuff, um, for those that want to see all of it, it's obviously on his channel, but we're also excited to announce that you just partnered with Awesomeness TV. Woo! Give it up, yeah, you guys, this is incredible. We're doing a full behind the scenes film for the entire experience, the tour, the visual album. So you guys are gonna be able to see everything. Now with this project, what are they gonna get to see that they might not be able to see otherwise? I think that sometimes people don't realize that. How many aspiring YouTubers do we have out there already? A lot of these people are wanting to like make names for themselves online and sometimes you don't really know how much work and how much effort and blood, sweat and tears goes on behind the scenes. So I had an MTV show last year which was awesome, but awesomeness has really, uh, thank you, but awesomeness is really uh, taking a leap to another level and making sure that people are getting to know the real me. And I can't thank you enough, Brian Robbins and Paula Kaplan for making this happen because I'm so honored and I can't wait for you guys to see it. It is incredible. It is insane. Now, speaking of people taking, you know, leaps of faith and just trusting you, there's been some incredible words shared about you since then. Jordan Sparks was one of them, said insane things about you, and she's in Straight out of Oz, right? Yes, she is. Tell us about some of the people who are in this project. Um, well, we have uh, uh, Pentatonix, isn't it? Like a little quick cameo from them. We have Jordan Sparks, Amber Riley, uh, Nicole Scherzinger, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays the wizard, uh, Wayne Brady plays my dad, uh, Grace Helbig and Chester C are in it for a second. It's just really, really cool. I'm so, so beyond blessed, and like I feel so flattered that they took the time to come and lend me their talents. Uh, they all donated their time and came and shared their amazing gifts with me, and I'm just so blessed. And thank you guys so much for watching. And you have to, have to, have to watch Straight Out of Oz and also get tickets. We're going to be at the Grove here in Anaheim, August 15th. 
That's insane. That's incredible. The tour uh, is actually available now to buy tickets. Anyone can go buy tickets to see a bunch of the tour stops. Uh, the album's out now, and of course, the visual album. Is there anything you want to say to your fans? I mean, this is a long time coming for you. I know that this is your favorite piece of entertainment, The Wizard of Oz, and you're doing your own take. What do you want to say to your fans who might be watching right now? I just want to say that um, this road is so full of so many journeys, and in this country, a lot. this is a very scary place to be living right now. I applaud you all for not living in fear and coming out and supporting VidCon and for supporting all of us and for supporting the people, um, Christina Grimmy, who unfortunately passed, and, um, and the people in Orlando this is a time for us to realize that life is very short and very fragile, but beautiful and special. And I just love that everybody here is embracing everybody. You're coming out here with your hair and your makeup and your clothes, expressing yourself. And that is the most beautiful thing that you could possibly be doing. So keep doing that and never wait for anybody to help you make your dreams come true. Make it on your own. Go make your own way because I know you all can. Yeah, she's got the Holy Ghost up here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard it from Chadrick himself. Give up one more time. music. Yeah, I like walking out to that. I was like, dang, okay. What are you, what? I just got my whole life from that performance. What the <laughs> Lord Jesus. I can't believe he just dropped a visual album like that. I know. That. Like, how do you just do something like, like how that? How dare you? That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Congratulations to Todrick. Yes. Um, we're about to play a game right now. Mm. Um, it, it's a popular challenge on YouTube. Uh, mm. It's called Laughing Without Smiling. Mm. But we need some assistance. Yeah. So a if you guys yeah. would please like w w just welcome these people with us. We have a Glozel. Glozel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where is she? In? Yeah, she's she's making her way out. Come on, Glozel. Hello. Keep cheering. Keep cheering. Keep cheering. Keep cheering. Keep cheering. Step right in, Miss Green. Yeah. <laughs> and next we have Miss Lord DIY. Hi. Welcome. Come on right over there. Yes. Please welcome Louis Cole. Last but not least, Jack Douglas. <laughs> Come on out, girl. <laughs> so, these are our contestants. Yes, if you guys okay. don't know how this game works, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Basically, they have to laugh, but they can't some mile. Miles, do you want to give an example of how this works? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. And after each yeah. person, well, no, after they all go, you guys are going to cheer for the person that made you laugh the most. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys ready? Are your faces ready? Are you down for this? Do your facial exercises. Yeah, we're going to start be. down here. Do you guys need any like mouth exercises? Water. Yeah, just, yeah. All right, Jack, you're up first. You ready? Three, two. <laughs> okay. This challenge is really creepy. Yeah. Like, I don't think you're supposed to laugh without smiling. Like, I don't just, I don't, okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Okay. Three, two. That was pretty, that was pretty good. Okay. Yes. The, the 
reflection on that was lit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to handle the, la the yes, ladies? Yes. Okay, so now our ladies, Miss Moore, can you give us an example? Kill it, sis. It's about to be ugly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mariah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woo! Okay. Now, Glozell. Glozell. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. Here you go. <laughs> oh, girl! I dropped my gun. <laughs> That's your mic. <laughs> Crazy. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh we're, we're just gonna let that marinate a little yeah. bit. You know, you guys get those laughs I in got your my head. Mic blessed. And uh, turn to your neighbors, and on the count of three, you guys do what they just did. Yes. And if you have the, the well, you don't have to do what Glozell did, but just do what yes. everybody else did. <laughs> on the count of three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. I see you up oh in front. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> Laughing without sound. Where? I see you. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that... Is that... Is that... Y'all, y'all are beautiful. Y'all are very, very beautiful people. So many people. beautiful laughs and faces. Yeah, the lights came on. That was My great. My favorite one was in the back. I saw. Well, her. thank you guys uh, for being good sports. Yes. Now I want you to replay in your head their, their, their laughs without smiling, and we're gonna go through. Gonna put my hand over their head, mm. and you cheer for the person that you think won. All right. Give it up for Jack. All right, all right, all right, all right. Give it up for Louie. All right, all right, all right. Give it up for Laura DIY. Oh, yeah. she is she is spilling your yeah. She's like she you gave her life. Scanning and and give, give it up, give it up for for Glozell. Uh, uh, oh oh! Snatch it off, Glozell. <laughs> Snatch it right off. <laughs> <laughs> she snatched her own weave. Yes, that's what y'all did. I th Glozell is obviously the winner. Yes, I, mean, I mean, I just... Congratulations, Wait, Queen. Yes. Thank all of Thank you guys you. for playing. You guys were amazing and beautiful. Yes. We loved all yes. of your laughs. Yes. Please enjoy the rest of Acon. You guys yes. are free. Yes. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I feel cleansed. I don't know about y'all. I, I feel like a piece of meat. Close, I'll just slapped my ass. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, well, that was cute. It was. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. Yes. That wasn't really cute. That was just the first adjective that popped into my head. I don't know what that was, <laughs> but I liked it. It was something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so last year at VidCon, mm -hmm. they um, had, are you guys familiar with a segment on Jimmy Kimmel called Mean Tweets? Yeah. Oh. Well, they were here last year, yes. and I guess it took a whole year to edit the video mm. because you're about to see it. Please give a warm welcome to Jimmy Kimmel. 
Thank you, Kingsley. Thank you, Miles. Jay, hello, people of VidCon. I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you look up from the little screen on your phone for a second, you'll see me on this bigger screen up here. Yeah, here I am. You are together in a room full of talented, innovative, creative people, but to the trolls at home, you all suck. So I gathered some brave YouTube talent from among your ranks to expose the terrible things people write about you in a special Mean Tweets Creator Edition. Enjoy. Smosh is by far the worst YouTube channel out there. I can't believe how damn popular they are for being as unfunny as they are. Mind blown. <laughs> Vsauce is fugging terrible now. <laughs> Fug you. Fug fugger. At II Superwoman II, your videos was worst. Well, your English was worster. Markiplier is the worst thing about humanity. <laughs> f the game grumps, but also f the game grumps. Am I right? Probably right. At MatPat GT, I think you'll fit right in here in Texas. We have a lot of annoying, unlikable, egotistical <laughs> here. At Kingsley, I'm trying to do homework. Shut up. If you're trying to do homework, why the f are you on Twitter? I just called Gen X Pen an <laughs> hashtag YOLO. I mean, let's be real, who's the real <laughs> I'm not the one saying hashtag YOLO. <laughs> Plays. You are a fat loser and you have body odor. Hashtag school of rock. <laughs> Yo, Jesse Welly, your haircut is terrible and the back is horrendous. <laughs> is it bad? Yeah, it does look like <laughs> <laughs> you. Bernie, you would remind me of a fatter Seth Rogen if only you got some talent somehow. Makes sense. Eat a at Mame Town. Sorry, I just, I had a big lunch, so. I stumbled upon a Hank Green video. It was the most annoying thing that I've ever clicked on, and I thought his brother was a douche. <sighs> Tyler Oakley is so annoying, why does he think that every situation needs his input? F out of here, ho. This guy just ran who makes vines and is not even funny, some dead of his videos the popped quit. I, I think this guy's having a stroke, so maybe we should... Why are Rhett and Link always doing stupid <laughs> like they're the white people my mom is thinking about when she goes, white people? <laughs> Good luck, Matt. F*** you, Atlo Anthony. Your mother sucks <laughs> in hell. Why don't you say that to your face? that unfunny tw Grace Helbig has a TV show. My taint is funnier and easier on the eyes. Yes, retweet, favorite, follow. This isn't my phone. Be sure to subscribe to Jimmy Kimmel Live on YouTube. Share this video with your friends and fans and let us know who your favorite creator is in the comments. guys so much for coming in here and dealing with our shenanigans Thank and butt touching and lit learning and it's Glozell's weave flying off. <laughs> it's just, sucking it's on my been, microphone too. Yeah. Let's not forget that. Did you guys have a good time? Are you excited to go back out there into the madness of the rest of VidCon? Yes. Are you excited to get more stuff to see your favorite creators? Okay, now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so it's pretty much over, so you guys can leave whenever you want, but yeah. we, we really want to Snapchat. Yes. So I'm gonna put my phone up here. To really, you know, yeah. mark the event. Yeah, mark so our territory yes. on this we stage. We were here. Yes! yes. Mm. So we're gonna say VidCon 2016 Variety Show, and then after show, you guys say, that's a wrap. Yes. All right, okay. are you ready? You ready? VidCon 2016 Variety, Variety Show! Show. <laughs> That's a wrap, yo! Woo! Have Thank a good time! You beautiful creatures! You guys are beautiful! Thank you so much for coming!
coming. Check, check, hello, hello, hello. There are some good looking people in the crowd. They didn't tell me all this. Team Sexy, make some noise. Oh my goodness. I'm single, I'm swoozy, by the way. I like long, romantic walks on the beach. But we're not here to talk about me, are we? Who are we here to talk about? Hey. Who? You guys are like at level four right now. I'm gonna need you guys to crank it up to level 14. Who are we here to see? Yay! I've hyped you guys up enough and teased you. So, Lily, where are you at, homegirl? Yo, 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 oh yo, 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 yo. What up, oh big car? Make some noise. <laughs> Snap. I think we have some questions for you, boo. Do we got some questions? Let's do it. Because we could get up here and do a panel, but that's like a video. There's no interaction. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So I think the hashtag was Ask Lily. That's what it is. And I think they can join in still. So you guys, even right now, tweet Ask Lily, and that's what I'm pulling from. And it's L-I-L-L-Y. Two L's. With two L's. Oh, you got them. We yeah, got some so good questions, Let's though. do it. Like, I, I was, see what, they got like a sit? setup here. I don't, I don't know how I what's feel going about on that. What right do you think? Here? I think, which one should I should have this one? I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of like far from that. I feel like I, I want to be closer to you all. We can, I mean, we could do it. It's your show. It's your world. I'm just a squirrel. Okay. I mean. We could start up here. Let's start up here. So. Yeah, I'm going to put my phone over here and we'll start up here. Can we first, like, talk about how Lily's great in Mario Kart, but I'm, like, really number one? Can we talk ha! about this? No? Ha! You don't want to talk about this? Maybe next panel? Okay, let's just tell a story real quick. Tell first of all, first of all her shout, version. shout outs to Suzy for doing this. Everyone give Suzy a round of applause. Right? Like legit, I'm honored. Because honor. now, in addition to Mario Kart, oh, I'm God. stealing the spotlight once, once more. Uh -huh. um, we played Mario Kart. Tell them. Suzy lost horribly. You lost horribly. This is your version, so I'm not going to okay, interrupt. Please tell me what your version is. I did, that's your own. That's your version? Is no. we played and I the lost? The version is that I, I, when I moved to LA, I specifically brought Mario Kart with me, my game, and he, he guaranteed that he would beat me. And I whooped him, and I whooped King Batch, and I whooped Day Storm all together is what happened. You done? I'm done. That's it. That's all. That's good. Okay. Let's ask some questions. <laughs> Legit. Like, this girl is a beast in Mario Kart. Don't get it twisted. However, comma, Mario Kart 8 is a different story. Okay, whatevs. We'll Let's, get to that later. We'll get to that later. Let's answer these lovely questions. We gave him a few Shout seconds. Shout out for wearing a Unicorn Island shirt. I see you in the front row. Shout outs. So, first question out the gate mm -hmm. is coming from Kina. Kina. She Kina? wants to know, cool. who have you not collabed with that you want to collab with this Ooh. year? Ooh. Oh, okay. There's a few people. Someone says Smosh. Smosh, I would love to collab with Smosh. Um, Dan and Phil, I would love to collab with. Yeah, I think they're really sweet and really awesome. Um, who else would I who have not collabed with? I think collab with everybody. The, the, the number one is definitely Dan and Phil. I, I want to collab with them so badly. Um, and Smosh also. You just announced, you had a special announcement a little while ago. What was that all about? Oh, right, right. You know what, what I'm saying. You know about? what I'm saying. Right. Call at me. I mean, the person who I feel like I'm going to collaborate with soon is going to be The Rock. There I we mean. go. Come on. Come on. But that's a given. You know, that's a given. We're collaborating in life as partners. You know? I, and parents. I seen you first, though. So Whatever. he's going to have to get through me to get to you. OK, calm you down. You feel me? He's going to have to get through you to get to me? Push-up competition, Rock, where you at? 
I'm just Boo saying. Boo his arms the size of your body. Okay? I get it. I get it. But see, I'm low to the ground, so I have the advantage. You feel me? I feel you. I feel you. Okay, so somebody else, I saw it on here, but it's gone because you guys are tweeting so fast. They wanted to know how you came up with the, that is a wrap oh my and God. zoop. You know, I never have been asked that question, actually. That's I told you these are good questions good coming questions. in. Good questions. Good job. You're holding it down to question. Handle it. These, these guys, I can't take full responsibility. I don't know what it is. I think I just, after making like 10 or so videos, noticed I kept saying, that's a wrap. And then I didn't choreograph it or anything. Just naturally, my body does this weird thing every time I say it. It was completely organic, not planned. I'm just weird and do weird motions all the time. You know that used to be my outro is, that's a wrap? Your outro is, that's a wrap? I have videos from 2006 of me ending videos with, that's a wrap. You didn't steal that from me, did you? Who are you? <laughs> Honestly, what she doesn't know, we have a lot in common, Lily. Do I don't we? think it's an accident that we're both on stage here. Okay. Every time I live stream, my nose itches uncontrollably. Did you guys hear her complaining about her nose always itching? Oh, okay. I, what I'm gathering from this is that you're just stalking me. No, I'm not stalking. I'm just saying, I hear you talk, I'm like, that's me. This is him, okay? This is, I'm gonna tell you what Susie does in our friendship. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yo, Lily, pulls out his phone, right? Yo, Lily, I'm <laughs> um, yo. <clears throat> Just saying, I got this collab idea, right? Oh, tell me, yeah, okay, so guys, stop, this, pause, pause, <laughs> pause. She's talking about... This is turning into our story time, I'm sorry. <laughs> friends with, but they, they love this, though. Okay. Friends with no benefits, it's a collab idea I had, and I was confident Lily is not going to be down. I shared it with Andrea's Choice and a few other people, and they're like, dude, if she says yes to this, this video is going to be the craziest video on YouTube. Unpause. Okay, 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 and then he texts me and he said, hey, got this collab idea, gonna send you the script, let me know if you want anything changed. In my true workaholic fashion, 14 seconds later I responded, saying, read it, seems great, cool. And the collab script is like, I, then you gonna lick my neck. Hold on a second, everything and then was I'm in thinking, the script. I'm thinking for impact, I'm thinking like, if we just make out a little, I'm like, is this for a collab? So listen. Do you okay. even have a channel? Okay. Is this a, a tactic right now? The only curveball I threw at her was how we were sitting on my counter. I wanted to make very intimate exchanges. So I was like, Lily, you may have to straddle me for this shot. And she was like, Susie, I see what you're doing here. Fine, because it's for your artistic vision. This yes. girl is a boss. I'm not, I'm not down with messing up people's artistic visions, but I have to tell you, I don't even think I told you this. No, After you that collab, the amount of male YouTubers that have messaged me asking mm -hmm. to kiss me in a video mm -hmm. is alarming. <laughs> There's like five separate creators that you all watch that have asked me to kiss them in a video. Can you give us a hint to one of them? Okay, I can give you I a like few. You guys are getting the exclusive. Mine. Nobody retweet this, nobody post. Everyone, yeah. everyone's like, okay, promise, <laughs> <laughs> promise. You guys are getting the exclusive right now, and then I guess people are live streaming, um, right? No? Well, okay. actually, within the same week, when you messaged me the next day, Yusuf messaged me. Oh, this Lucy guy. Too. Mr. Steal Your Girl himself. Recently, I did do another video where I, I, I had to kiss a guy for the thing. You say had to kiss the guy? Had to as in for the storyline, but I willingly did it because I think he's cute. It was Dietrich. Oh, that guy. Can yeah. I just say you guys blew and up? And I'm say I'm not kissing any more guys in videos unless uh -huh. it's a collab with The Rock. Mark oh, my words right here. Oh, that you Mark can retweet. Mark my words right here. That okay? you can retweet. Okay, let's get some more questions. How did A or your movie uh -huh. change your life? How did a trip to Unicorn Island in the documentary change my life? Um, in a few ways. First of all, going on a world tour is like super cool. And I knew throughout the process I would be very exhausted and tired and stressed and frazzled and I wouldn't get to remember every little detail of what happened. It was really special because watching the movie, it was almost like reliving the whole experience. And I got to remember and relive all these little precious things over and over and over again. And it changed my life because looking at yourself from a third person, like, oh wow, I can see my story the last hour and a half of my life. It really means a lot. It means a lot to see your story up there and have people relate to it. And I think it just, I don't know, I've cried every single time I've watched it, every single time. So, I, yeah. Honestly, I was there at the Chinese theater and everybody in the row was crying. You hit home, girl. I make people cry. I'm just saying. All right, so we'll move on because there's a lot awake? coming in. You still awake? Still good? Still good? All right. Can you name five Team Super members in 15 seconds? I'm going to start the clock. Ready, right. <clears throat> set. Go. Team Super India, Team Super Mumbai, Team Super World, Team Super TO, Team Super uh, Miami, Surrey, which is Team Super UK, 
Um, 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 that's like six already. That's I think I like eight, I think. Okay, dope. Yeah. All right. So you guys that asked that at home, you got. Yeah. I don't think that one's from the crowd. That's yeah. Team Super. Yeah. Honestly, guys, I've I seen pay a, attention. I stalk my fan accounts. <laughs> that, and she was on. Was it uh, USA Today or one of those places? And, oh yeah. yeah. Or, or LA Times, and they were like, okay, this question is coming from Twitter handle blah blah. She said their name. Every single person they brought up, I'm like. This sure. girl has a connection to her fans that I don't think any other YouTuber does. So That's very give it up one time Thank for Superwoman so and the connection. Thank you so much. It's very sweet. And I think that is further proof that you just stalk me all day long. Listen, I, you knew show up on my feed, okay? Swoozie is such a good friend. No matter I what try. I'm doing, he texts me. He's like, hey, yeah, the sound is fine on your live stream. Don't worry. <laughs> Watching your live stream, like, great interview. He's like there on the side. She's like, yeah, Lily, yeah. Team brown skin, you know? <laughs> if we don't look out for each other, who will? I appreciate that, Suze. All right, next question. What is the most challenging part, this comes from Maddie, mm -hmm. the most challenging part of being a YouTuber? Hmm. Mm -hmm. The tough stuff now. Uh, there's a few challenging things. I think I know the answer to this one, because I you? stalk you. You might. I mean, I could have several answers to this question, but the one I'm going to answer right now is kind of relevant to the last week I've been having, which is... I just really want to put out really good content. That's why I started. I mean, I just want to make really, really good content. And I think now more than ever, Suze, I'm sure you'll agree, there's so much content by so yes. many people. Yes. And it's great, but it's also like, dang, I want to make sure I give the audience something different and something awesome. So one of the challenges for me is making two videos a week that are scripted comedy, that are creative and different and unique, and that you guys will like. Mm -hmm. So that's really challenging for me. So, I mean, I, I think you kind of answered this a little bit in your movie, but maybe you can get a little bit more into the meat and potatoes. But Maya wants to know, what was like the genesis? What was the aha moment that inspired you to create your YouTube? Like, I know you said you got out of school, you wanted to do it, but was there a specific moment? You're sitting in your car, you're in the mirror twerking. Like, what was there? Yeah. Was there a moment? <laughs> I was in the mirror twerking, that's right. Um, there was actually. I, I know it's been often said that I started making YouTube videos because I wasn't a happy person and I wanted to be happy and it's as simple as that, but there was one specific moment when I was on vacation with my family and we're in Mexico and I was just having a really, really sad day. I can't explain why, I was just super sad, so I actually walked to the beach by myself. I left my family, walked to the beach by myself and I had this moment where I was like, Lily, you are in Mexico with a family that loves you at a beautiful vacation and you're sad, you have no reason to be sad. You must be sad because you're not doing anything that makes you happy. So as soon as you land back in Toronto, you're gonna do YouTube full time because that's what makes you happy. And the second I landed back in Toronto, I decided to do two videos a week and I started my YouTube career. Get it, girl. Yeah. All right, what about, now this is a kind of a tough one. Mm -hmm. I think they want to I appreciate yeah, your yeah. clap. <laughs> feel free to clap. I feel like y'all sleeping out here. Feel free to yell things and cheer and boo and stuff. They love you, girl. Oh, they love, they love you too. I think they love us. They love us. I love you too, boo. <laughs> Thank Smile you so much. What is it, okay, so this is my personal, because I started watching your videos, I mean, back when you had like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. She loves you. Thank you, baby. Where did the connection with the Caribbean come in? I think it's because ah. you had a lot of friends, right? But yeah, 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 I'm yeah, sure yeah. inquiring minds want to know. Yes, yeah, so a lot in a lot of my videos I reference like Caribbean soca type music, um, you know, like Bossa Nova mm -hmm. and things. Um, it's because the area I grew up in in Toronto, I was around a lot of that culture, right. and so I fell in love with that type of music. And if you've never listened or you don't know what soca music is, you need to Get YouTube familiar. search it. S O. CA, it's a type of music. A lot of people don't know what it is. It will make your day. It is so upbeat, it the is so happy. The beat just makes you move. It's wonderful. I highly recommend everyone listen to it. All right, uh, Vic Waffle wants to know your favorite thing about being a YouTuber and the thing you hate the most about being a YouTuber. Okay, uh, my favorite thing is, um, honestly, I think I learned this on tour more than ever, is when you're a YouTube creator, you're behind a screen, and you can edit things and you have analytics and the only way we get to interact with you is like we post a video and then like a hundred of you will say first. And that's our interaction with you. But when I get to do things like this where I like see real people really smiling and like listening and reacting to what I'm saying, I really like that. I really like being on a stage and I think my favorite thing about being a YouTube creator is that, that it lets me do that. It lets me be on a stage and lets me talk to you in real life and I like that. Um, the thing I hate, I don't hate anything, hate's a strong word. But um, I already said one of the things I disliked. Another thing would be, um, 
Long hours, not seeing your friends. No, I don't mind that at all. I think really? it's all okay. worth it. I think that's all worth it. Um, I think it would just be that I wish the internet was nicer sometimes. Okay. I think we can all agree that there's a lot of nasty comments and there's a lot of mean people. I'm sure you've received mean <laughs> tweets or you've possibly sent mean tweets as well. And I just think that as someone who's so passionate about being a unicorn in one love, sometimes I wish I could sit the entire internet down and be like, listen, you need to be nice to each other. And so I just wish the internet was a nicer place, I think. But the good news is, how many, of, how many people are here? How many people do you think we have here? So we got like a lot of people here, right? Everybody raise your hand real quick. A few hundred. The good news is that because you're all here, you are all an ambassador of making the internet a nicer place. So you can all literally right now tweet something nice and you've already helped fix the problem. So just putting that out there, you all can change the world. Minor detail. <laughs> okay, as a, now I'm gonna ask you this for me as a fan. Yes, as fan a fan. Fan hat. Okay, okay true, true. Okay. What is... You know, I appreciate that because it was orchestrated, it was in unison, <laughs> everything about that was the teamwork. The was on and point, too. And I like that. I like that. That was like a one, two. We love you, Lily! We love you, Lily! Do you think they were at home practicing thank that you, in their baby, bedroom thank you, thank and their you. parents were like, our kids are so weird. Okay, I draw beards on my face. I think my parents are over That's it. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fan hat on. Okay, cool. What is Superwoman's favorite video that she's ever uploaded? Um, I think my videos that are the favorite for me, my favorite videos, do I speak English? It's okay. My favorite videos are the ones that represent very special moments in my life. So yes, I love a lot of the comedy videos I've made, but like videos like my challenge with Selena Gomez, like that, watching that is like, oh, that's like one of my biggest dreams coming true. So the Selena Gomez collab is definitely one. Um, me meeting Dwayne, that vlog where I'm just like freaking out over the whole thing is definitely one. In terms of comedy, um, I really like my video called, I kind of really like the recent one I did types of infomercials. Okay. And I was, it has a lot of views and I don't know oh why. God, I think I look like a girl in it and people are like, what? Um, yeah, I, I think I really like that video because I talk about my lipstick at the end, self plug, right. what up? <laughs> but I was really proud of how I did it. I knew I just didn't want to make a video being like, hey, I have a lipstick, go buy it. I was like, no, I'm going to create a 10-minute comedy video so that you feel like at the end, when I talk about my lipstick, you're not angry. You understand, it's fine, so. Cora asks, what is your most embarrassing high school story? Most embarrassing high school story? Mm -hmm. <gasps> I'm sure you have a few. I mean, oh my God, I probably have more than a few. Like YouTubers are kind of awkward and then you know when we get in our bedrooms, that's where we're kings. So I'm sure yeah. in high school. I don't know if this is awkward mm -hmm. as much as just like, no, I don't know if it's embarrassing more than I think it's just awkward. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit of like boy drama, right? So I just recently broke up with one of my boyfriends. One of your, wait, 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 I didn't. So I meant in life, a yeah. boyfriend. I broke up with a boyfriend. Okay. Um, and then, I was chilling with a guy who really, really, really liked me. This was a little bit while later. And someone came up to us, and we're standing together, okay, like this. Like so? Yeah. Someone, you know what? He was also Trinidadian. That's weird. Hey, that's weird. Big up, um, big up, Martin. And some girl came up to us, and she was literally like, Lily, I heard you broke up with your ex. Oh my God, honestly, I can't imagine with anyone else. Like, he was the best. Like, I heard, like, some new guy likes you. Like, you need to not. And the guy was standing right, right here, here, and I was like, Oh, well, this is him right here. Wow. And I felt so bad. I think that's, that's pretty awkward. And he never called you again? I mean, boys in general don't call me unless they want me to lick their neck for a collab. I mean, you cleaned it with ice, so I mean, it wasn't that bad. Next question. <laughs> now, I know are, you Are you get, taking pictures over here? Is that what's happening? They're like really big pictures. Like, them cameras are legit. Those are $2,000 lenses I see on them, bad boys. <laughs> I know, I shoot my videos on an iPhone 3. Okay. <laughs> Your hair. My, my, yes. It's a topic of conversation. I think it has its own Twitter account, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my hair, yes, my, not my hair doesn't, but I have this baby here called Lolly. Mm -hmm. Lolly has its own Twitter account, yeah. I see. Yeah. How long is it exactly? That's what they want to know. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm 5'5". Five five. It's more than half of me, right? That's clearly eight feet long. Yeah. It's eight feet long. That's clearly. the answer. <laughs> I'm getting to the really, really hard stuff now. I don't know if you okay. want to sit down for this part. Do you want to sit? Because I'm, 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 I'm chilling. We can have a break I'm dance competition right now. now if you want. I just want to be closer to them, so okay. I'm chilling right here. 
who, let me put them on blast a little bit. I got my Maria, lipstick on the mic, I'm so sorry. Maria wants to know, who is your favorite YouTuber? <gasps> Let's exclude me, because it's kind of not fair, okay? Oh my god. So excluding oh Smoozy, oh my god. who is your um, favorite YouTuber? I have to pick just one? One, boo. Just it's one? hard, one. <sighs> I know, no pressure, take your time. Okay, I'm gonna give two, but I'll tell you why. One okay. male, one female. Nah. No. Oh. Nah. Woo. Okay, fine, fine, maybe. Okay, well, uh, nah, think nah, about nah, it. Nah, it's your show. Nah, it's nah. your world. Remember, okay. I'm just a squirrel. I'll tell you the person who my first meeting with them okay. has been really inspirational in my career. Okay. So this has to do with who they are as a person and when I met them and what I have gained from them in terms of inspiration, mm -hmm. and that would be Grace Helbig. Ooh. Yeah. I was, I've always been a fan of Grace, but then in Toronto, I was so, and this is when I was like new to the YouTube game. I was first gonna meet her, and first of all, if you've never met Grace in person, one thing you should know, and you should tweet her and, and, and tell her that I said this, one thing you should know is that Grace is stunningly beautiful. Yeah. Like stunningly Walking beautiful. Walking Photoshop. Yeah, so I remember the first time I saw her in person, the first thing I said was, oh, there's Grace, and then she turned around and I was like, <laughs> Did she turn She's on one of these? So like, pretty. Psh, and I was so motion. scared and I was so intimidated. And I was like, oh, and she was just so nice. She gave me a big hug. I was nervous, being like, hey, do you mind if we like like take a picture together? And she was like, yeah, sure. And she put her arm around me. And it was just that was one of the first creators I met, and I was just so inspired by how nice she was. Uh, and the second person I'm gonna say, and this goes down to like content, who I think makes amazing content. There's many people, but I'm gonna give a shout out to, I think Dietrich, Dominic's mm. channel. I think his content is like, every time I shot a collab with him, he comes to my house and he has like three a camera setup. people and a complete thing scripted out and he knows exactly what's gonna happen. And he does not, like for him it's not a views game. He doesn't care about views. He's like, I'm just gonna make a video that's really good and I'm really proud of. And so his stuff is really quality content. So I, I think Dietrich, for sure. Okay. Do you? I mean, of course, you. I mean, me excluded, boo. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Me All right, excluded. cool. Cool. So, don't have you, nobody else licking your neck. No, eh? no, no, no. Well, a exclusive right here, okay? <laughs> Property of Lily. Any whoosies? Um, Any whoosies? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? Your collab, your hypothetical collab with The Rock. Ah, uh, tell me more. Do you have any ideas? They want to know, like, if you do slash when you do, is it going to be like a sketch? Is it gonna be him popping in? Are y'all gonna be like friends with no benefits? Okay, this is what you need to know, right? Okay. It's like since the day I was born, mm -hmm. September 26, 1988. 80 something. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not ashamed, I'm it's, an old person, no, it's fine. Not, no, you're, you're young um, and hard. Since the day I was born, I popped out the womb thinking of a collab idea for The Rock, Ooh. okay? I spent my entire life Ooh. waiting for the day that someone would be like, hey, you had an idea to shoot something with The Rock, so you need to understand that me thinking of that idea and like writing it down in format, it's a stressful situation for me because it has to be the idea. But I will say that I do have one. It that was has, me for you, by it, the way. I, I feel you, I get it. I get that I'm your rock. Um, and let's just say I wrote it, it's been written. Uh huh. And now it's in God's hands. Ooh. Whatever shall happen. But yeah, it's definitely going to be a skit. You can't tell him right now. I'm not going to tell you right now. Yeah. But it's definitely going to be no popping in, popping out. It's not going to be no interview. It's definitely, if it goes my way, going to be a skit. Okay, we've got one from JT Greer. He wants to know, any advice on creating a successful YouTube channel? Yeah, I do. How many of you have YouTube channels, by the way? Show Raise hands. your hands. Okay. Sweet, swag, 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 cool. Um, I think the biggest piece of advice I can give you, and first I'm gonna say this sentence, and all of you are gonna be like, ugh, we hear this from every YouTube creator, and, but I'm gonna prove it with science. Ooh. And facts right now, okay? I don't BS you, I'm gonna tell you real talk what it is. To have a successful YouTube channel, you have to be authentic. You have to be yourself, and I'll tell you, when I first started making YouTube videos, my first 10 suck. The first 10 videos I made suck. I'm so awkward and I'm trying to be someone else and I'm trying to look pretty and I'm trying to talk a certain way and they're not good. As soon as I started being myself and being like, oh man, I got a pimple, oh man, look at me, I'm weird and you can even see how weird I am on this stage right now. That's when people started to watch. And the reason it's so important is, Susie can agree, being a YouTuber is a full-time job. From the moment you wake up, the moment you sleep, you are tweeting, you are on Instagram, you are meeting people at the mall, meeting people on the streets, you always, are on and on the job. Imagine how tiring it would be to have to be someone else all the time. 
all the time, when someone comes up to you on the street, when someone meets you at a meet and greet, having to pretend you're someone else. You just have to be who you really are on your channel because it won't work any other way. So be authentically yourself. I love it. Also, I don't know how to talk on a mic. All my lipstick is on the mic it's right now. It's okay. I can sell it on Amazon for like a million dollars after that, this. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one comes from Daniela. Okay. You should have known this one was coming. Okay. Okay. Kiss, Mary kill. Oh, jeez. The Rock. Ah! Connor Franta. Huh? <gasps> Swoozy. I can't help you out here. I'm sorry. This is the thing, right? Uh-huh. I'm gonna say I'm gonna marry The Rock. That's, that's fine, I can be the side because piece. Because marriage will include kiss and more. That's true. I can, I'm fine with being a side piece. Let's hear it, go on. I, I, do, I do love you, but mm -hmm. I would have to, for this moment, kill you. Kill me? Okay. I, just because- Connor? Just, just because, like, I feel like Connor would be such a sweet kiss. Oh. I feel like oh. Connor's kiss would feel how his Instagram looks. <laughs> just so beautiful. It's okay. All the time. You okay. know what I mean? I get it. You've been there, done that. It's okay. I get uh, it. <laughs> I get it. Exactly. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Are you guys feeling good, yo? Make some noise. Aight. Now, I've asked you this personally, but I'm interested to see, hear, like, have these guys here. What is going on with that I music? I was like, what's that music? Are we supposed to, like, have a dance-off or something? I don't know. I'm, a, I'm not gonna lie, guys, I dance a lot, but she would like destroy me on I'm the stage. I'm glad you said that, I'm glad you said I'm that. I'm gonna keep it real. Mario Kart, not so much, but on the stage and dancing, yes. <laughs> uh, my question, is there a YouTube video that you wished you'd uploaded that you didn't? Um, so like Gangnam Style, like oh, crap, true, I should've true, uploaded true, that. True, true. Yes, it's the first YouTube video I ever saw. Which was? I wish I uploaded this because it's just so good. It is, what the? Can we get somebody to check out whoever's practicing garage band over it there? It is Jenna Marbles, How to Trick People Into Thinking You're Good Looking. Uh, I wish I uploaded that video. It is so good, so good. Do you have any celebrity crushes at the moment? Outside of The Rock, like give us something good. Outside of The Rock and Selena Gomez, like other yes. celebrity crushes? Yes, Um. Yeah, I do. I have a huge, I'm gonna name girls and guys, cause you know, whatever. Okay, let's go. Jennifer right. Lawrence, huge crush. I'll visit okay. Jennifer Lawrence. Um, I also, okay, I recently, I just did the MMVAs in Toronto and I met a lot of really cool people. I recently met Amber Rose. And really? Oh, that's right, I saw her. that. I saw She's that. She's so cool and nice, man. I really like her a lot. And in terms of another guy, a celebrity crush would be, okay, Zac Efron. Ooh. I mean, he kind of turned into a man. He kind of did. And he doesn't shave his chest and he pulls it off. I'm, I'm down with it all. I think it's great. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask you to sit down for this one question. Okay, let's do it. It's that serious. Okay. And again, I cannot help you out on this. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. <sighs> can, you, can you see my, you can't see my underwear, right? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. The, the group Thank chat you. is gonna definitely have something to say about this question. Okay, I have a explain maybe. the group chat though first. So, I mean, there is, there, most YouTubers I feel have group chats going on. Me and Lily are, I think we have like two or three different group chats that you and I are in. Okay, yeah, maybe. Okay. The main one is gonna have something to say about, maybe I should stand, because the sound That's doesn't seem that. That's what I was saying, though, we need to. It's a tough it's a question, sign. though. Okay, it's fine. Who are you closer with? Swoozy or Foozy Tube? Again, I want you to act like I'm not even here. I need to get the beats. <laughs> Okay. So just pretend I'm gonna that King I'm going to answer the question like this. And it's called by beating around the bush. But I'm going <laughs> to answer the question like this. I feel like Yusuf has opened up to me more about his life. So he often will come over and be like, this is what I'm going through. What's your advice? And I feel like we have that type of emotional connection where like, as a friend, I will try to help him and give him advice. And I genuinely do care about his well-being. How, at the same time, mm -hmm. When I moved to LA, and I was horrified and I was scared in, De in December, December 1st when I moved, I was horrified and scared, and I was moving, and I could have called anyone else to help me move, but I asked Susie to pick me up from the airport, 
and Susie helped me move. So that's how I'm answering that question. That's, your, that's a good answer, because yeah. your real friends show up on moving day. <laughs> Quote me on that. Also, Swoozie introduced me to Chipotle. Oh, that's right. Yes. Listen, y'all. He's that the first ever sauce. person to show me and treat me to Chipotle. And she has a lifetime supply of it, and I don't have anything. I still have to pay for mine. Chipotle, where are you guys at? Come on now. Just saying. I'm just, okay, so VidCon. They want to know about your VidCon experience so far. How has it been? Uh, I mean, VidCon's great because I get to meet so many of you. My VidCon this year is a little bit chaotic. I only am here for today, and so um, I have four panels. I was on the main stage and I have a meet and greet all in one day. Um, and then I'm flying to Toronto tonight. So it's a little, bit, a little bit chaotic, but it's so worth it when I get to do things like this and it's fun and I love it. How are you guys experiencing it? Are you having fun? Amazing. Okay. Great. Which leads me into a perfect transition. Mm -hmm. Zoe wants to know, what is the one thing you miss about Toronto besides your family and friends? Um, so for those of you who don't know, I am Canadian. Is there any Canadians here? They're all very politely like, wow. yes, we're right here. Canadian. Um, I really miss, <laughs> I miss Celsius oh, and kilometers yeah, yeah. a lot. <laughs> because in LA, when I'm like, hey, how far is this in Toronto? People say 10 minutes. Here, I'm like, how far is it? They're like, yeah, 10 miles. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what are you telling me? And so I never really understand distance and stuff like that, you know, okay. the units of measurement. Have you ever procrastinated? This is from Eli. Mm -hmm. Have you ever procrastinated so much, you just said, screw it, no video today? Yeah, <laughs> I did that on Monday. <laughs> uh, I release two videos a week, but sometimes things go wrong. Uh, my flight got delayed by three hours, so I got home and it was like 2 a.m. and I couldn't release a video. But I'm very fortunate to have a super supportive and understanding fan base that, I don't know if you ever get this, but my fans are like really sweet. They're they super, understand. super sweet. They understand. They Anytime I'm like, oh man, okay, I'm working on this for you, working on this, my fans will be like, go to sleep. You're, you are not getting rest and you have to eat and you have to sleep. And so that day when I landed late, my timeline was full of people being like, mm -hmm. you, no video today. We don't want a video. You have to sleep. And they just care so much about my well-being. So they're super understanding. I, know, I, I get it. I love you guys, man. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Victoria asks, what Disney princess would you want to be in any Disney movie? Ooh. Well, <laughs> I feel like you broke a vocal cord for that, and therefore I'm <laughs> going to recognize it. Um, first of all, I think Disney princesses, their lives are a little bit delusional. You think so? I'm going to throw that out there. Yeah. I know you all about the Disney stuff, but I feel like it's no, set no, un accurate. unrealistic expectations for my life. Accurate. You know, I don't imagine any man is going to be kissing me while I'm sleeping, and I'm going to wake up and come alive and all that ish. But I will say, if I picked one princess, it would be either Rapunzel Ooh. or it would be Princess Jasmine. Get it, girl. Yes. I'm One, because I got the brown skin. Get it. And two, who doesn't want a tiger as a pet? True. And who doesn't want to go on a magic carpet? True. You know what I'm saying? Imagine a magic carpet. That would be dope. I'm just saying, my, my default picture on everything is Aladdin, so I don't know if that plays into any of this or not, but just throwing that out there. Do you guys hear that? I'm just throwing it out that? there. I'm not saying anything. It's, can you hear that? Wait, shh, listen. What is it? It's, it's the sound... Of acceptance? Of, of Susie's thirst. Oh, dang. Can you hear that? <laughs> it, <laughs> listen, no shame, y'all. Um, I love you even more. Okay, listen, so this is actually a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Annie wants to know if you could pick... And, and, and he's here, I guess. Okay. No, no, I just my, I think my, I, my hat is like it's so long. I'd like it stretch is. it sometimes. Cause it's your like, back starts to hurt, like carrying that sometimes around. Sometimes my back and my arms start to hurt. Yeah. How heavy is that when it gets wet? That's what I want. Oh to yeah. Know. It, only reason I have any little bit of muscle on my arms is washing my <laughs> hair. I swear, my hair is so heavy when it's wet. And he wants to know if you could pick three superpowers, Superwoman, what would they be? <gasps> hmm. Number one, I would love to fly. Got you know it. why? Check. You know why? I've had a lot of flight experiences that are not pleasant. Uh, thanks to Canada. You. <clears throat> and I just would love to fly and get from A to B on my own. Um, number two, oh my God, I think about this once a day, I swear. Really? Well, I would like to pause, Teleport. I would like to pause time. Okay. Oh. It's only because I want to take a nap. Uh, There's been so many times on a daily basis, I'm like, if I could do anything right now, I'd want to pause time right now in this meeting, on this conference table, take a nap <laughs> for like two hours, resume and be like, yeah, so what were we talking about? Like, I want that. And the third one would be, ooh, I think I kind of want, oh, I wish I had the superpower 
of not having to do annotations on YouTube. Oh my gosh! Like just wave your yeah. hand and it's yeah. all done. Yeah, I wish like everything I just have Explain done. Explain it to anybody do. who doesn't have a channel okay, what so you're talking about. you have a channel, about. you know, at the end of our videos when you have to like click here to so and so and click and you click and it takes you somewhere else. That process is very annoying to do. They're called annotations and they're so glitchy with YouTube. Mm -hmm. So when you click an annotation, it's like a totally different time. And when you, that, I think every YouTuber hates annotations yeah, for that it's, reason. Yeah, it's pretty so, tedious. Yeah. If I ever quit YouTube, that's why. Vash wants to know, was there ever a moment before YouTube where you wished you practiced girl love? Ooh, that's a really you. good the question. The good ones are coming out. So for those of you that don't know, Girl Love is my social good campaign. It's about breaking down girl on girl hate and empowering women to support each other, which is something I'm very, very passionate about. Um, and I think all people in this room have experienced a girl or a boy being mean to them and have also been mean to someone else before. Um, in high school, there was a girl that used to pick on me and I used to be like, oh, why can't you practice girl love? But when I was really, really young, like I'm talking kindergarten before I knew about any values or morals, I used to pick on a girl. And sometimes throughout high school, I used to be catty. I used to be like, why is she talking to my boyfriend like that? Mm -hmm. Wait, we've all had these dumb phases in life where we, we think that's the answer, that we think that's how to interact with people. Um, so girl love is a birth of me experiencing the negativity and also putting out the negativity and just trying to better myself and the planet in turn, yes. Megan wants to know. I'm mm. oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. All right, it's out. Out of your systems? No, not out of your systems. There it is. <laughs> Megan wants to know, how are you adjusting to life in L.A.? Very well. I really love L.A. Um, there's no winter. True. Which is dope. A Canada's it gets all... It down to like 60 degrees, though. I, I don't know what that means. I do Celsius. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Um, sorry. But, <laughs> but I think Toronto's very cold. But I, I do got, love Toronto, don't get me wrong. But LA is great because I'm surrounded by like-minded people. It's very easy for me to be like, Suze, like, what do you think about this idea? Like, can you help me shoot this? What do you think? Should we shoot something together? And I'm around all these great creators that are super creative. And that's inspiring to me. I like being around that energy. And there's a Chipotle, like, everywhere. So in Toronto, I have to drive 25 minutes to get to a Chipotle. That's I can just walk down my street and there's a Chipotle. That's really why I moved. <laughs> All right, we have another good question. I don't know if you want to sit down for this. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay, we're not sitting down sit. for it. Okay. Nicole wants to know, what don't you like about Swoozy and Fousey Tube? You know what's hilarious about this? People be acting like Swoozy and Fousey Tube are my only two options. We're like, not. You know, Everybody be like, why do you think between Suzy and Fuzzy Tube? I'm like, why do you think that I can't get it's someone? Yin or yang. Why do you not think that I can't date Ryan Higa? Why do you not think that I can't date Dietrich? Why do you? <laughs> Doesn't he have a girlfriend? Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's me. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe. What do I not like? Oh, mm -hmm. really, I don't know. I don't think there's anything I don't know. I'm like perfect. Yeah, you're pretty close. In every way. You're, okay, there's, here's a minor thing. It's not that I dislike it, it's just a tendency Susie has. Oh, I want to hear this. So 90% of the texts that Susie sends are GIFs or GIFs or however the hell you want to pronounce it. He doesn't write words, he just sends memes and Disney GIFs. Like that's, that's They're his thing. hilarious, they express my emotions. So too many of those, okay. not enough words. That's, that's, um, that's fair, good Yusuf, answer. and this is like, I tell him this all the time, so impulsive. That's he true. is so impulsive. Can we talk about that tweet yesterday? Yes. So out of nowhere yesterday. Text us first in the group chat. Yeah, he's like, hey, so we have a group chat with myself, Susie, Lord DIY. I mean, hold on, can we, can, we say, are we, are, can we talk about this publicly? Uh, I think we already started. I, okay, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so it's myself, Susie, Lord DIY, Alex Wasabi, Dietrich, we're all in a group chat together. And Yusuf is just like, don't kill me for my next tweet. That's all he said. Don't kill me for my I next tweet. I started refreshing. I was driving and I yeah. was like, refresh. And his tweet was, if this tweet gets 50,000 retweets, we're going to make a collab channel. None of us said we're doing this. None of us said this was a thing. No talk, no discussion. No discussion. And then we're like, oh, okay, he's joking, he's joking. And then he texts us again. He's like, so you guys are down, right? <laughs> what do you mean? He didn't even ask us. He's just so impulsive all the time. There's, there's some here that it's hard for me to choose between. Do you have a favorite product, whether it be like your shirts or your sweaters? Is there one t-shirt or one hat 
It's this hat. This is my favorite hat. It's a super. Get it. Uh, it's my favorite hat. Is it still for sale? Can I still buy it though? Uh, it, uh, you know what? It will be back on sale soon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Where can I buy it at? It was one of my first pieces of merch. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say recently, and I swear this is not just promo, like I actually believe, I really do love my lipstick as well. My boss lipstick. When is it coming out? Because yeah. that's it's a lot of It's already out. It's out. You can it's buy it. Okay. If you're in America, you can buy it in Sephora. It's in the store. Or you can right buy it now. Oh, I right, can leave right now. VidCon. Right now. Go to Sephora. Yeah. And it's gonna be there. You should miss Susie's meet and greet and, and go, go to, to Sephora because it's gonna the be lipstick. there. Yeah. Um, I'm kidding. No, no, you're, you're fine, boo. You're fine. Get out. It's all right. It's already get sold out. out. It's sold out. So uh, like, you can't even get in. <laughs> How are you gonna hate from outside of the club? We're you can't so get weird. In. Literally, all of these people are unsubscribing to us. <laughs> Who inspires you? We know the Ooh. Selenas, we know the Rocks. Give yeah, us a little something-something on the low low. Who uh, inspires oh, you? Comedy-wise, I'll tell you who inspires Let's, me. I want to hear this. And I'm hoping and praying you are all familiar with the person I'm going to say, or else a great sin has been committed. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do you all know Natalie Tran, Community Channel? Ooh, yes. If you don't know who that is, she's like OG YouTuber from back in the day. I religiously watch her videos. She is so funny, and her concepts are so amazing. Community channel, Natalie Tran, she lives in Australia. She is a comedic inspiration for me, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Why unicorns? Why not unicorns? <laughs> uh, I like unicorns. You know why I like unicorns? Because every time I talk about unicorns, people are like, you know unicorns don't exist, right? And I think that's a bad attitude. I think it doesn't matter. If I say they exist, they exist. And I am a unicorn. <laughs> And I think they're magical, happy creatures. And if I had to pick something to be, it would be a unicorn. Get it, girl. Get it, girl. <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> so is there a movie franchise that you would like to be a part of? Like Transformers, yes. Matrix? I'm gonna name two. Let's hear it. One of them is done, but if it wants to be like rebirthed. The Hobbit. No. Sorry. Although I would make a great Hobbit. I'm just saying, I thought that was we were going to go yeah, with that. Or like Smeagol, my precious. I thought, okay, that's uh, not the Hobbit. Okay, let's hear it. The Hunger Games. Oh! Which, by the way, for my housewarming gift, Susie bought me a Hunger Games poster, framed. I love you. Num number two would be Fast and the Furious franchise. Oh! Oh, show. I mean... Because Dwayne's in it. That's true. I don't think he has a love interest in the movie. Not yet. He has a daughter, and he might be single, though. Mm. Single dad? Yeah. I'm just... In I the mean, movie or in real life? Jason, my manager back there, yeah. he manages some of the Fast and Furious cast, just so... Just saying. Just saying. So Hunger Games and Fast and Furious, for sure. I like that. Yeah. Uh, but the, what is your favorite thing about Team Super? <gasps> oh, I have to name just one? I mean, they, it looks like it's singular. Flora wants to know. Okay. Miss Lily Singh. What's Flora's handle? Oh, sorry, my Lil Sing. Got it, got it, cool, cool. I feel like I know this. this That's why you're like, hold on, you said that wrong, Swizzy. You see what I mean, guys? <laughs> you see what I mean? I'm a freak. Um, <laughs> my favorite thing about Team Super is kind of what I was talking about earlier, is that they really, really care for me like a friend. Not just like, hey, it's Monday, you didn't post a video. What the hell, Lily? It's very like, are you okay? Like, do you need a break? I think you should take a break. Don't overwork yourself, you already do too much. It's very like consoling family mm -hmm. that they are, and it's really, really sweet to see. Game Because I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest oh, with you? Like, I'm going to be really honest, okay? No. It's like a real talk right now. Sometimes my creator friends, I'm not going to say who, but sometimes things can get a little bit stressful, and my creator friends will be like, oh, man, my, my fans are getting really, really angry about this. And like, Lily, how do you deal with that? Like when, your friends act like, when your fans act like that. And I'm just always like, my fans are awesome. I can't relate to anything you're saying. <laughs> More than one occasion that has happened where I'm like, oh, my fans are kind of perfect. We're kind of like... BFFs, you know what I mean? So, thank you so much. You just sitting? I'm, I'm just checking my, my Instagram comments here. Okay, real quick. cool. Uh, Game of Thrones. <gasps> yes, Game of Thrones. Word on the street is it's one of your favorite shows. Yes. Do you have a favorite season and favorite episode? I do. Let's hear it. For those of you, that are not up to date with Game of Thrones, I highly recommend you plug your ears because I will spoil it right now. Uh -oh. So plug your ears uh -oh. and I'm gonna whisper it. I see you plugging your ears, good call girl, because I'm about to spoil it for you. Who saw the most recent episode of Game oh, of Thrones? Oh, come on, no, I gotta go. I'm not caught up, no, I, can't, okay. I can't be if here you, I'm this. gonna make this quick, because I don't know if all of you watch it, but the most recent episode of Game of Thrones is the best movie I've ever seen in my entire life, and it is so good. And there's one scene in that episode, one scene that cost factually 
10 million dollars to make that one scene. I highly recommend you all watch it. It's beautiful and great. And come back. You're done? Yeah. Okay. They all die. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Listen, okay? I thought you were going to say something like Red Wedding. Everybody's seen that one. Oh, maybe not. Who knows? IJS. Okay, let's see. I think we have time for one or two more. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Here's a really good one from Kane's Thoughts. He wants to know, when you were a smaller YouTuber, had under 1,000 uh, subscribers, what was your most effective way of sharing your videos? Mom, can you share my video? <laughs> <laughs> or MySpace, I'm sure Mom, was. Can you guys watch my video? And I used to like just bug my family and friends, like, hey, yo, can you, Susie, can mm -hmm. you watch my video? Mm -hmm. Can you watch my video, dude? What's the it was link? just Send word of me. mouth. Back in the day, when I first started, there was no Instagram, there was no Twitter, there was none of that stuff. There wasn't even YouTube when I was younger. But when I started YouTube, like, I just had to figure it out. And it was mostly through word of mouth. So maybe friends and family sharing friends and it family, on their exactly. feeds. Friends and family sharing it and also featuring in my videos so they'd be more obliged Same. to share them. Same. Yeah. Fun fact, and I don't think a lot of people know this, but in my earlier videos, I do not play my mom. My what? friend plays my mom. I, I didn't know. Yes, so you my until friend then. used to play my mom, and the only reason I had to start playing bottom with my mom is because I didn't have any more friends. Mm. No, it's because my friends were busy and I, I would need to shoot videos more often. My friends weren't free and I was like, maybe I should just become all the characters. That's why I decided to be the characters. Okay. Yeah. Let me see here. Oh, thanks. Who I, said that? I think so. yeah, young lady right there. What an honest audience. I'm like, who said that? And one person, I expected like 100 <laughs> people to be like, it was me. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Ninja Turtle? Okay, judge me hard. I know nothing about Ninja Turtles except Zero? for the fact that they like pizza or something, right? I don't know anything else about the Ninja Turtles. I really don't. In my opinion, I feel like the most recent Ninja Turtles, they look a little scary. Is that just me? Oh my god, no, yes. Legit. I feel like they look scary. They could have done... Bebop and Rocksteady in part two. Don't they look amazing? I like, I like friendlier turtles, like Franklin. Uh, yeah, they could have... I think they could have done a little bit better with their character design. Yeah, I like, me I, like, a little bit. I like Franklin. Um, one more question here. Mm -hmm. I want to make it... I want to go out on a good one. Okay. No, you're the best. Uh, uh, what's your favorite social app? Snapchat, Instagram, Ooh. Twitter. Okay, I really like Instagram. Uh -huh. Aside from YouTube, obviously. YouTube's my favorite. Correct. I really like Instagram um, because it's not complicated. You post a picture, you write a caption, you're done. There's not all this other fancy schmancy stuff. And straight up, the reason I like it, because, yo, some of those filters can be making me look good on my worst days. Okay? That's I true. I post a really, a really, really bad selfie. I'm just like, oh, no problem. It's a filter. I look beautiful. Look at that. Amazing. So I really like Instagram. Speaking of, though, I just started to up my Snapchat game. Do you guys oh, want to be in my you? Snapchat? Can, should we? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. I know. I want you to be in my Snapchat, because I'm not that good oh, at Snapchat. Dang. But it's at II Super when I, I But I was thinking maybe we could do, like, a little video. So can you guys, in your spots, stand up? Can we do that? OK. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to say, yo, what up, everyone? It's your girl, Super. When I'm here at VidCon, check them out. And I'm going to just turn it, and then you guys are going to cheer and put your hands up and be loud. Cool? You ready? OK, literally one person screamed. I'll, Good. I'll count you in, Lily. Okay. I'll count you in. Three, huh? two, one. I'll count you in. OK, OK, ready? Three, two, one, then we'll do it. And I'll okay, count good. you in. Yeah. Ready? Three, two. What up, it's your girl, Super. When I'm at VidCon, check them out. Don't. I'm going to put that snap Yeah, we got to be quiet for like 30 done. seconds as we My do a caption. My story, I'm going to put the VidCon story as well. Boom, shakalaka, done, cool, amazing. And it's, there it is, it's in the universe. Is, is yeah, it out there? It's in the world? It's wonderful. Oh, snap, son. Oh, thank I, you. I, Why don't we do like a quick fire round of questions? Boom. From you, you from yourself, or you from legit, Twitter, from whatever you want. I think, I mean, here's my thing. Okay. I like to go... For the bang. Okay. When I hit you up with that collab, mm -hmm. this was a no, hey, ha, ha, challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got to give them a reason to talk. Okay. True. We have a unique opportunity here. We have, yeah. like, what, maybe let's say 900 people here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we should end out live performing at the end of our collab. <laughs> I think that'll get people talking. Anybody can get up here and do a Q&A. Swoozy's life goal is to kiss me. I kid you not. His Every life goal. Every chance I get. His life 
goal. I mean, we can we can pull the punch just a little bit, but I think it'll give the people something to talk about. Okay, hold on. on. The Twitterverse. We're gonna have a little mini meeting. One okay. second. Okay. She's agreed. She's agreed. I have agreed on certain terms and conditions. We're going to be okay. like on the floor though. I don't know if you guys have seen no, the no, video. No, 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 no. Calm down. That's how the... It, I'm not even wearing pants. It starts with me massaging you and then Batch is like the only way no. that people are going to... No. How about right here, front and center. Okay. Right and we're here. standing? Yeah. You're going to have to set the mood though a little bit, okay? Okay. okay. For those who haven't seen the video, basically, I'm like, I don't understand why everybody ships me and Lily. We're just friends. And then we begin to do all kind of stuff that friends don't normally do. She starts pouring wax all over me. I'm licking whipped cream off her finger. And at the end of it, Batch goes, the only way they're gonna know you guys are friend or aren't friends is if you just make out right now. And I'm kind of like, okay, fine, let's do it. So that's the scene that I propose. We give the internet to get them talking. This is live, boo. Okay, let, you gotta set the mood though. You gotta set the mood. Okay, All right, so I let's mean, slow walk to each other first. So we're just gonna go right to the kiss. We're gonna slow walk. Right to the kiss. Set the, the moment. Yes. Yes. I think massage and all no. that. No. Okay. Slow walk. Okay, we can do our right? dialogue. Like. Okay. Mine was, I think, you we're have an unhealthy up. love for Selena Gomez. Yeah, I do. You tell me I'm obsessed with myself. I'm just gonna start this scene right now. Oh, we're just gonna End wing scene. it. Yeah, we're gonna wing okay, it. Okay, ready? And we need you guys to scream action on three. Okay, ready? Whenever you're ready. One, two, three. Lily, we would never work out. Susie, we're just friends. You kind of have an unhealthy love for Selena Gomez. You kind of have an unhealthy love with FussyTube. Uh, there is that whole obsession with The Rock, too. We would never work out. As you're not even my type. Nah, Sorry, get guys. Here. You gotta get come back. You gotta come back for it. But thank you, guys. Thank Give you it up God, for Superwoman. So All right, guys. Bye. Enjoy the con. that help tell the story. Nice! I love it! Thanks! I Me love too. It's it! It's fun! It's so much fun! A good time! What a great time! Yeah, I, I love the shoulders! shoulders. Who are they? Oh. <laughs> I love it. First of all, I do love your pants. Thank you so They're much. Very They're cute. new. They're very cute. They work just great. I love wow. them. Thank you. It's like cool pirate. It's like cool... But like, you also pirate. For? Cool um, pirate. Yeah, I think cool pirate, and then also there's a lot of holes, and it's really hot. Yeah. So that. like the ventilation, oh, it's good. So it's nice. Real good. So so nice. Uh huh. So very nice. So what number VidCon is this for you? This is my third VidCon, but it's the first VidCon I'm a featured creator. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, thanks. How has things changed? Like how oh, how is it different now? It's nice because I don't have to fight my way to do things. <laughs> like before everything I went to, like. I had a ticket to, but it was like a battle to be like, no, I promise. Like, yeah. I promise I, I can go. It's I, okay. <laughs> so now I don't have to do that. It's really nice. That's really very yeah, nice. Thanks. Just be like, you know what? I'm going to go through. I'm going to flash my badge. Mm -hmm. I feel like every time it's like Wayne's World when they're like, VIP, VIP. I don't understand that reference, but I respect it. I'm glad that you said you didn't, though. Like, I'm glad that you didn't pretend. No, I'm not that kind of gal. Good. I'm glad that you didn't pretend to be like, uh-huh, uh -huh, okay. LOL, I love comedy. Let's hear this. I can't mm -hmm. understand. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for, one, it's called Wayne's World. Wayne's World. You should I'll look it up. It. Look it up. Google. <laughs> look it up. Just Give it a Google. Google. Give it up. 
give it a Google. So it's your third VidCon, but the first time you get to be a feature creator. Yes. Are you doing any panels or anything? Yes, I'm doing a panel on Saturday night. It's um, like how to never run out of ideas. And I'm they like send you an email when you're on a panel, and I made a joke, and it like, oh, if anyone knows how to never run out of ideas, I want to know, so yeah. tell me. <laughs> you're like, I'm on this panel, but also I'd really like to know. Oh, yeah, you can see there's a lot of people, and you get to say hi, and you go, hi. It's very nice to be like, Oh my hi. God, it's really pleasant. They're all like smiling. They're not like, I know, I know. It's my favorite because uh -huh. everyone is just so happy and having uh -huh. the time of their lives. So uh, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to at VidCon Ooh. this year? Um, I think a big part of VidCon for me, which I always find is something I have in common with like viewers that are also here, is just seeing my friends that yeah. don't live here, my internet friends, and, like YouTubers that live all around the country or all around the world, and spending time with them. Yeah, it's like a nice, like it's like summer camp. It is. Right? You're so right. Yeah, it's exactly it. And you're like, oh, I missed you. How is everything? Oh yeah. How am I gonna live without you at the end? Exactly. Yeah. And then you do the game of like, what are you up to? But you don't really want to know. You just want to hang out. You don't want to be like, we don't yeah. have to talk about anything. <laughs> Yeah, just we say, just, here's my room number, come hang. Yeah, hang hang out, chill out, and be cool about it, right? How about you? What are you excited for at VidCon? What am I excited? What? Oh, mainly, um, I don't know, man. There's some really good food. Okay. <laughs> is there? I don't know. I have I feel to like there explore. never is at conventions. I feel like I that is a very big part of it. But if you find good food, please let me know. I'll let you know Thank where. Because there's been times where, like, I feel like that would be an app I would create. It's, like, really good food at conventions. At conventions. I feel like I've heard like, that around. These That's are a good some idea. solid pretzels. Uh -huh. The nacho cheese is, is an 8 out of 10. And it counts as food. It counts as food. It's a big deal. I feel like that's what I eat like an 8-year-old whenever I'm at these places. You're oh just like. Oh, my God. You can't eat like a person. Whatever there is, you just shove it in your face and you go. And mm -hmm. I've had 72 cups of coffee. So. <laughs> yes. Good morning, me. Good morning, me. Good morning. It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. Oh, wait. So, um, where are you from? Originally, I'm from Arizona, so that's why I'm so hot. You're so hot. Exactly. You're also very used to the hot, right? Yes, the hot like doesn't bother me as much as it's bothering everyone around me. No, I would imagine. I would imagine you're like, I got this. Yeah, it's just like minimal deal. clothing, and you're good to go. Yeah, very good to go. Are you gonna explore any of the booths around here? Ooh, I don't know anything about the booths. Um, I have friends who work at Instagram, and their oh, booths yeah. always kill it. Like the Instagram booths and the Instagram like creator lounges so are always good. so cool. So I'll probably head over to that. Yeah, you have to. There's also behind you an American Ninja Warrior one. Ooh, that's fun. Do you get um, to, oh, you get people, to like play the obstacle I know, you just got up course. really high. Uh -huh. Some people are doing very well at it. I know that I would not be doing very well mm, at it. But like, it's all in the effort and like <laughs> living. And just it living. doesn't matter how you do a song, you're having a it's good just, time. It's you got to try. This is your motto. It's just like, just I don't know, live. try it a little. I don't know, try Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's it, that's my motto. motto. Try it I don't know, bit. try it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Give it a go. Mm -hmm. Do it. Why not? Why not? Um, uh, we have a question that we've been talking about okay. here uh, with a whole bunch of different people. Uh, what did your mom want you to be when you grew up? Because we talk about featured oh creators God. and like, uh -huh. you know, there's those things of like, what your parents wanted you to be. Because it's YouTube is one of those things where it's like, it's now it's happens. an enterprise now. Uh -huh. But it didn't necessarily used to be, and it still isn't necessarily a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's like a weird in-between job, but it could also go away tomorrow. So who yes, knows? Exactly. Um, exactly. Ooh, I mean, when I was younger, I really wanted to be an author. So oh. I would have liked to think they'd like that. I don't know. That's weird. But I really, really wanted to be an author. And then I realized I that, that sitting alone and writing does make me sad. Yeah. <laughs> it, I get very sad. That's like not a good idea for me. Um, but I feel like she would have wanted me to be something like, like I was always very business oriented. Yeah. So like something where I own a company, but that's also kind of YouTube. So that's what you do. You own yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So like, that sort of string of vomit was my answer to your question. I think it was great. Thank you. You were like Alexis Incorporated, right? That's me. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm my actual like company name is Zal Good Incorporated. Is what? Zal Good Incorporated. Ooh, that's, that's like good. my catchphrase. My last name is Zal. Zal Good. That's a really good one. Thank you. I really like that Thanks. one. Thanks. Yay. Good. I got validation. Validation. Woo. Um, we have a little tag board that we're right. using, wow. and if you want to ask Alexis some questions, use the hashtag VidCon Live so we can see it and pop it up there. Uh, okay. And we can interact with you guys. Isn't it crazy cool? Alexis Ford said you're awesome. Thank you, Alexis. I like See? your name. Oh, that's so sweet. 
sweet. So sweet. It's so sweet. From mm -hmm. a different Alexis. Mm -hmm. Ale an Alexis to an Alexis, we get each other. Yeah, right? Do you have any nicknames? Um, my friends all call me Lil Meat. Low meat? Little meat. Little but like meat. I L I L like meat. Low like, meat. What? <laughs> like like cause I'm very small and just like a little meat. Little meat. Yeah, and I like can fling my body all around, so I'm just like a chunk of meat. That's so sweet. Thank you. It sounds I like it. Yeah, it's uh, I'm I do glad like that you it. do, because if you were to say it like, yeah, my friends all call me little meat, it's like, whoa. I'd be very angry, but I think it sounds cute. So it sounds I'm into very it. cute. Yay, thanks. Like, come on, this way, little meat. Come on, little meat. And you could like put all you all put on your leather jackets uh -huh. and it's like, come on. Little meat. meat, and then my friend Tied Levi, who's very, very tall. We call him Big Meat. That makes perfect. No one's medium meat yet. No medium oh, meat. No. Someone, do you want to be medium meat? I would love to. Okay, great. Oh, medium I'm ready. Meat. I'm inducted. I'm so ready. Okay, sign the papers. If there's a hazing. I think I'm on board. Great. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest. Good. Medium meat. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but, <laughs> but so is meat. Yeah. So what here we are. Said. What if I was just just meat? Like just like, come on, little mm. meat, big meat. Hey, meat. Come on. <laughs> that actually sounds really funny. It sounds right, I was right? hesitant, and then when you used it in a sentence with like context clues, With I was everyone into else, it. It yeah. works. It right? works. It good. Thank God. So you're getting some love. Again, Alexa okay. is so awesome. Hashtag VidCon Yay, live. ask me questions. I want to answer them right I now, know, please. I know, she wants to answer them. She's from Arizona. And yes. now, where are you from? I live in Los Angeles. Oh, now. beautiful city of dreams. Yes, how about you? Los Angeles as well. Nice. I love it. It's fun sometimes. It's fun sometimes. Yeah. That's exactly how you everywhere. describe it. It's fun sometimes. Yeah. It's wonderful. On a good day, it can be great. Look at you getting, you get so many so awesome. Everyone loves Thank you. you. Oh, what's My your favorite, favorite name? name? Um, I really like the name Chloe. So I feel like everyone I know named Chloe is really attractive. Oh, I get so that. So I just support it. I like that as like she's a total Chloe. Like it Ooh, used to be like she's a Veronica. That's a really fun way to say that. Right? Yeah. She's oh a my total gosh, she's Chloe. such a Chloe. God, she's Damn. such a Chloe. Uh huh. What's the opposite of that, right? Like she's such a Chloe. Ooh. She's maybe like a Bertha. Bert. Bert. What a Bert he is. What a Bert. Is. But that's mean. It Let's keep mean. the Chloe. I like Bert's Chloe. Bert's like a, a like a sassy guy where it's like oh, Ooh, he's a yeah, a sassy but like really buff. Yeah, Bert. Yeah. What a Chloe. Bert. What a Bert. What a Bert. Oh, what a nice what Bert. What a Lee. How would you describe a Lee? I probably just someone that like farts a lot. I'd be like, <laughs> what a Lee. She's such a Lee. She eats a lot of candy. And what a Lee. Oh my it's God. Candy? Lee. Great. Favorite Great. kind? Question mark. I'm turning the tables. Wait, really? What's favorite, your favorite kind of candy? What's your favorite kind of candy? Oh, that's uh, Sophie's choice. I can't. Oh my God. I can't that's so do funny. It. Um, Reese's is a deep love of mine. Oh my God. Like, I like Freak the cups. Me up with I like Reese's. the cups. Even yeah. the pieces. I'm open. I don't love the pieces, but I don't hate them. I don't hate them. Yeah. But I think the cups and then the cups. Snickers and okay. then and then we get into sour gummies. And oh. I'm, oh, I'm don't done. even get me started on I'm sour. Done. What about you? I like Hershey's cookies and cream bars. Oh my God, they're, they're so, so good. good. They're so they're good. So and good. then Reese's is always like a standard. Because chocolate and peanut butter together, it wins every time. It's like peas and carrots, but not at all. Because peas and carrots is horrible. It's like peas and carrots gone right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Someone said, uh, did you meet any YouTubers while you're here? Did I? I'm sorry? Have you met any new YouTubers while you're Ooh, here? Um. Oh, I have a, this isn't a YouTuber, but I have a friend who is a Viner. Her oh, like, yeah. handle is not even Emily. And we've been like friends on the internet for a long time. And oh, we finally fun. met. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's really cool. So you get of. to be like, hi, Hello. how are you in real life? How tall are you? <laughs> that's oh my God. always the thing, right? Yeah. Oh my God, you're so tall. You're so small. Because you're so short. That I'm, I'm teeny. Uh, yeah. People are probably always like, you're so little. Yes. And like, but yeah. I feel like also I warn people. Do you? I do. Yeah. Good. Like in videos, I'll talk about how small I am. And like little meat. <laughs> yeah. Also <laughs> that. Mean. Little meat. You're going to have to get that Twitter handle. Oh my God, you're so right. Just right now, you're gonna have to do I it. I gotta go. She's gotta go, I'm yeah. so sorry. Uh, Alexis, did you meet, and someone just said it. Did you meet any of your favorite YouTubers? We just heard a Viner story. Oh, uh, what YouTubers inspire you? Oh, um, I mean, I've always been inspired like vlog-wise by Grace Helbig, cause she's so funny and has such a distinct point of view. Yes. And I, I feel like our point of views are different, but I just admire how much, how much of a voice she really has. Um, oh yeah. And Big then time. I'm trying to think. I really okay. I've gotten really into.
into sex ed videos on YouTube. Yes. Like, I think they're so fun and interesting. So I really like sex explanations, yeah. like Dr. Lindsay Doe. That's because great. Because of the way she like yells information at you, but it's so like accurate, and then the video's <laughs> over. And you're, and like, you're like, I just got to it with just information. Do? How do I soak I it all in? I love the delivery. It's wonderful. Uh, Lacey Green is also another one that's yes, very I'm good at that. Having her on my um, full screen app talk she show is all good. She's a delight. Great. She's so lovely. She's like even more lovely than you think she'd be. Oh my you're god, like, incredible. I know. I'm like in love with her. So it's wonderful. Great. Uh, Alexis, who's your favorite actor? And then Ian Lover said mine is Adam Sandler. He had to let you know. Yeah, no, his I appreciate first. it. I want to learn about you Thank too. Thank you it's not so all much, about me, guys. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is a boring answer. I really like Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my God, I love um, Brie Larson. Yes. Oh my God, she's so the room. good. So good. So good. Oh my God, in so everything wonderful. she does, so yeah. good. So so I'm good. Such a fan. She's a great one. She's a really great and, one. And like beautiful. Yeah, a knockout, like yeah. a knockout. And also like, like really humble and cute about yeah. it. Like just like, oh, oops. Oops, I'm really pretty on oops, accident. I'm gorgeous. Yeah. Like, good for you, Brie. Yeah, Have congratulations. Have a wonderful time. Ugh, so uh, annoying. Uh, someone else asked you, what are some places that you would want to see to go, like before oh, you um, go? Oh, and VidCon is going global. If you didn't <laughs> hear that announcement. Kind of, I saw like, kind some of, teasers. Right? It's like a weird teaser. Yeah. But, Hank Green made an announcement that okay. VidCon's going global. So, like, Australia, I think they're going to branch out even further and Ooh, go other places. I love Australia. I just went to Sydney for the first time, like, a month ago. How wonderful. It was so fun. Um, so, I'm a fan of the Australia. Yeah. And then, oh, I'd love to go to Egypt. That's on, to the pyramids, really right? Yes, and I guess, apparently, I don't know what the timeline is, but they're closing the pyramids, so tourists can't go to them anymore, because they're, like, crumbling. No, we have to go. we got to go to the pyramids before they close. I also need to see if aliens created them, right? Uh -huh. I'm not wrong in that. I'm just I assuming can't that say they did. I know what I'm talking about here, <laughs> but I don't disagree. Sure, sure, sure. But I just need to know. Uh -huh. I really just need to know 100% did aliens make Create this happen? Pyramids. I can't answer that for and you. I'm I, sorry. If they close it down, I won't know, know. So I have to go. Yeah. I get it. So if you did, if they did VidCon Egypt, you'd go. 100%. I'm in. Great. That's Hank good to and know. John Green hit HMU. That's very, very HMU. HMU. Hit me up. Yep. It's been wonderful. I'm just so glad that we got to sit down with you. Me too. I really am. Yeah, we so really bonded, I feel like. I felt like yeah. this is right, right? This is nice. We connected. I had a good time. I had a wonderful okay, time. Great. I love your Should cool pirate. Five? Hi that was wonderful. Yeah, Thank was you so nice. much you for that. You have small hands, so do I. I know, look. Oh, oh baby, oh, so fun. Hand twins. Woo. Mine are all clammy, but they're hand twins. Mine too. Oh, yay. Even more Thank twins. you, Alexis, Thanks so much for joining us. Say goodbye to the free world. Do an awesome video. Yay. Check it out. Check it out. Cool. Yeah. And what we're programming on stage. How is your VidCon so far? It's been crazy. It has been crazy. Elaborate, please. Sharing microphones. It's been crazy. I mean, for us, we work in an office, so like, it's not like we're meeting people that watch our videos. Sure. It's like our parents being like. You have real jobs, but then we come here and people are coming up to us and like, people are like, you have real jobs. I'm like, oh my god, validation. You know what's really weird? It's almost all. We've already met so many people. We're only like two hours into VidCon, but I feel like everyone looks oddly familiar. Like good odd though. Like I feel like I know them from the internet. It's true. Everyone's so. got that weird uncanny valley thing where you're walking through and you're like, do I know? Should I know this person? The Perhaps. one thing that I love about it, though, some, from other cons that I've been to, sometimes people can be, like, a little fanatical, right? Like, really goes too far. We've had really awesome, normal people, like, hug our necks and tell us awesome stories. I'm like, you guys are literally just like us. I feel like when I feel like when we talk to people and they already know so much about us, it really is like they're talking right. to their friends. So it's not that weird. It is day one though, so yeah. we've still got a couple of days for things true. to get a little weird. That's true. This is my first big time. I've yeah. never this been This is your here very before. first one. Yeah. First okay, and then I, immediately impressions. Terror. <laughs> I didn't know that people cared to chase you down going to the bathroom. I thought that if you just keep your eyes down and walk really fast that no one will notice you. But I should have thought about that before I wore a bright orange dress to a VidCon. And have really red hair. Yeah, and I'm with somebody with purple hair, which also doesn't help. You guys help. are not low-key. <laughs> We're not. At all. I am super low-key, and I also love Loki. I don't know if you know that about me. Just wanted Tom to throw Middleton. that in. Is Tom he dating Middleton. Taylor Swift, though? Yeah. You mean Swiddle Swift or whatever oh. the hell? Oh, I almost threw up. Excuse me. 
What are you guys looking forward to uh, with the rest of your VidCon experience? You guys talking on any panels, signing autographs, doing all that stuff? I'm moderating a panel with all of the most amazing YouTubers from Australia. How was my accent? Awesome. I've been working on it, but it's like always Jamaican. <laughs> that, was, that was better than it has been. It's been pretty bad, but I'm super excited about that to get to meet all of them. And also, like we were saying, it's so crazy how people come up to us and are like, oh, I liked when you did this and your mom said this, but I feel like that about all the other YouTubers that I know that I haven't met. Yeah. Like, I'm sure I'm gonna creep all of them out and I'm okay with it. It, actually, because we got to do The Amazing Race this past yeah. season with a ton of YouTubers, and a lot of them, I'm so excited to like reunite with them because it'll be a big reunion for all of us, so that's like one of my highlights. Is there a little bragging about that, or is it all like, we were a family and we did it together, well, you're no, like, we're mm, really no. close, most yeah. of us. Well, it's just this awesome time where like so many of us are like working in offices or shooting videos by yourself, and then you come together and you're like, I'm oh, not a weirdo. It's like such a community. There's more of us. I know, I love actually it. embrace the weirdness love claiming it, so some people call it relatable, we call mm. it weird. That might be debatable. Google it. Uh, what I do love though is when fans come up to us and pitch us show ideas. Yeah, it makes my know. job so much easier. I've already had a couple of show pitches oh, since I've been what's here. What's the best show pitch and have you guys got any, any challenge ideas or like Rochambeau um, challenge? I haven't got any challenge ideas. One of our fans decided that we should do a VidCon version of all of our shows and have oh. fans come on and do them with us. Which is a great idea. 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 Maybe that'll happen next year. We don't have time to yeah. do that now, yeah. but There yeah. was a VidCon in Australia in 2017. Oh, I so maybe that. you make friends oh, on your panel. Boom. Done. Wow. I mean, we're totally available in 2017. Like, I don't think I have any booking yet. Calendar so. is so I free. Maybe, I'm like, I'm going to check with my people, AKA, like, no one? myself. <laughs> I love how like some YouTubers here are like so famous and have like security have and, we're, the just, bodyguards, and we're just like rolling around like ah, hey we have Stephanie shout out to Stephanie yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unsung heroes <laughs> look at our bodyguard she does CrossFit y'all scarier than she looks she does so many look at her wad oh we're in good hands hashtag good quads, quads, thank you so much yeah, for joining us. us back to you. to pop right on over to Sharing Sexual Identity Online panel. Uh, it's moderated by Elo Steph, uh, RJ Aguirre, Will Shepard, Gabby Dunn, Miles J, Ariel Scarella. I'm saying all these names wrong, but if you know and love them, you understand who they are. Are you ready? Go! Watch it! Hi, guys. Oh, there's Not a even reverb a minute in, in this we're room. Breaking things. Hello. You got this. Hi, guys. I'm Stephanie Frosch, but I'm better known as Elo Steph on the interwebs. I do a lot of LGBTQ-based content, and I'm really excited to moderate this panel today. If you guys, one by one, want to introduce yourself and your channel and what you do and just what makes you fabulous, that'd be great. Easy. Uh, hi. So my name is Will. Um, I created Shep689, but RJ kind of manages it now. Uh, uh, the channel has kind of gone through a lot of changes. We started out as uh, me doing gay self-help and book reviews. Then we kind of evolved into daily vlogs where we have stopped. Um, yeah. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, hi, I am RJ. I am the other half of Shep689. I'm also the Not Adam on YouTube where I, I want to make you laugh and I want to make you think. Hi, I'm Arielle, and I make lesbian culture videos, I think, culture. and a lot about a lot of talk about boobs and vaginas. So. Hi, my name is Miles J. Um, I make videos on my channel called Miles J Production, mostly focusing on comedy. Sometimes I talk about weaves, hair, and sometimes, you know, I just like to have fun and do some sketches. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabby Dunn. I'm on a channel called Just Between Us, which is like an odd couple comedy duo. Uh, and I'm the bisexual half of that duo. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. So because this is all about sexuality online, I feel like we've all been there through the whole discovering process, the coming out process. So what do you guys think the difference is between coming out online versus coming out in real life? 
Um, okay, so real life is a lot harder, uh, that's for sure. Um, for me, I know that I started coming out when I was 14 years old, and that was way before I even knew what YouTube was. Back oh, in, same. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, 14? 14. Oh, 14. Wow, 14 is a... I came out on MySpace, that's right after the bat mitzvah. <laughs> right after the bat mitzvah. Right after oh, the bat mitzvah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird because you never stop coming out whenever you start coming out. So. 14 to my friends and 16 to my mom and then my dad when I was 20 and but as far as the internet goes I think I've always been gay online I can't remember I think so <laughs> yeah I mean it was weird because it's like yeah I kind of came out multiple times it was like okay came out to my family at 21 and then came out when I started making YouTube videos that I was, you know, in a same-sex relationship. And then after a while I had to like make a whole other video, but like, no, I'm actually bisexual. And so I, that almost felt like a whole separate coming out process because, and that to me was even more difficult because there was all these people being like, no, you're not. And it's like, I'm sorry, how do you know that? Uh, None. Yeah. Um. Are you done? You done? Um, I came. I was kind of the original like lesbian YouTuber, so I, I feel no like deal. I was the pioneer of the, of the lesbians on okay, YouTube. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> you have Ariel, the pioneer. What'd she say? I won. I'm 2009. Can anybody beat me? I don't Whoa. think so. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't done my research. So I don't know. I would not be able to tell you. I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm just saying I'm the oldest one, which is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I came out when I was 19, and it was actually, believe it or not, very difficult for me. Um, my, my brother and I are both gay, and we came out to my mom and my dad on the same day. Ooh. Yeah, it was, Ooh. It, was, it was very interesting. We came out on the same day, and they had a great reaction. It was just me in my own head that I was terrified. Um, I said, I think I like girls, and my mom started cracking up laughing. <laughs> and my dad just looked at her, and then looked at me, and just said, good luck with women. I, was like, Wait, I really don't know what to tell you. That, it was really simple. So for me, coming out, the process of it was difficult. But actually, coming out online, I was already full-fledged gay. So I was pretty good. <laughs> OK. Like, like halfway. Like... I think coming out for me was um, online, I feel like everybody already kind of had an idea, already knew through preconceived notions of what being gay is. So like on that front, I really didn't have to say much. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. They can deal with, you know, whatever. And as far as my parents, like, I, I felt like they had an idea, but then when I actually I, I, like came out to them and, you know, built up that courage to just tell them, they were like, oh, we didn't know. And I was like, you didn't know? I'm sitting over here watching Spice World and dancing. And Britney Spears. I literally performed a Hillary Duff song so yesterday for them in the living room. And the, you didn't know? <laughs> That's very supportive of them. They just don't judge. So they're very open-minded people. I love them to death. <laughs> It's funny, I had a similar thing where I had like a huge poster of Lindsay Lohan in a bathing suit in my bedroom and my parents were like, we had no idea because I guess I was like, she's a really good actress! And they were like, Jesus, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've also kind of, we started the channel with me already being out, but like RJ mentioned about bisexuality, I feel like I'm still coming out on the, I mean, I talk about it so much on the channel, you really can't miss it. And still, people in the comments will be like, wait a minute, but I thought, is she? And like, like we make jokes about our comments all the time, and a lot of times it's like the same stuff over and over again, and one of the things that comes up constantly is like, is Gabby gay? I thought she was straight. I thought she was gay. I thought she had a boyfriend. And then there's like inevitably like 45 comments being like, she's bisexual. No, I don't think so. And it's like never ending. Like if you've seen the channel once, you should just be like, that girl's bisexual. Okay, we got it. But like, it seems to be a never ending discussion. So, oh, YouTube. Ah, uh, the tube of viewing. Well, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Anyway, so because we are in the new generation where the internet is a thing, do you feel that if you were growing up as a teenager today, coming out would have been easier since you're so easily able to access LGBTQ plus role models on YouTube? Oh, absolutely. Oh my god. The fact that kids come out in high school is like mind blowing to me now. I know you did, Steph, but like. Not by choice. But. Well, <laughs> that's dark. Uh, no, the, the fact that like, the fact that kids are out in high school, I can't even believe it. Like, and I think that is a, a, a like a, 
what is it called, result of YouTube and uh, like how visible people are and how you can just like easily go and find a video of a gay person like living a great life. Mm -hmm. I had to like, I was on Live Journal, <laughs> not to brag, yeah. and, uh, and on Live Journal I had like one gay friend and I was like, okay, that gay person is like out in the world, like somewhere in Australia and he's like living his life and so it's possible. But that was like literally the only evidence I had. And now, yeah. like, high school kids can just find all of us, and I'm like, oh, man, you guys are just out, and it's no big deal. And that's so mind-blowing to yeah, me. Yeah, I've, I've literally, I met my first actual bisexual person in college. Right. That was the crazy. first time I was like, oh, so you mean that's actually a thing? And they're yeah. like, yes. Because prior to that, I mean, I had heard the term, like, starting in middle school, but it was always used in that negative, attention, uh, negative connotation of, oh, she's just, you know, bi for attention or whatever. <laughs> like, it was just dismissive. Mm -hmm. And then finally meeting someone who actually identified that way it was just like oh okay and then very like with now they don't even need to meet they could just look and see all of our vlogs and all of our videos and be like oh yes this exists it was yeah it was within yeah within a few months that i'm like that's that's me that is what i am and so the fact that yeah like all these youngins are coming out and like high school and they're like yeah i'm bisexual i'm pansexual i'm just it just warms my little heart mm -hmm. it just warms it so much um i i did a speech at hofstra um last year and the whole speech was based on why so many kids these days are coming out and it really, really flocking to the internet um to help figure out their sexuality and their gender identity and my theory was it was fact versus feeling and how you can read a textbook you can go to a therapist and they'll tell you facts like but sexuality and gender is not a fact, it's how you feel. And when you go on YouTube or you go on Tumblr, people are expressing themselves and they're expressing their feelings and that's how you relate to other people. I and like that, I'll take, we'll take that, yeah. we'll take it. <laughs> that's my theory. <laughs> I mean, the whole reason that I started my YouTube channel in the first place was because I wanted to give people who were like me, who were gay in the middle of nowhere, access to seeing a gay person live their life and not have to change much of what they did going about their life just because they were gay. Um, the only, I guess, like, access to homosexuality that I had whenever I came out was Will and Grace. And that, and I remember, and I asked my mom to get us Showtime so I could watch Queer as Folk. And I did, I didn't do that until like two o'clock in the morning. So um, I watched it like beneath the covers. So it was really scary uh, coming out for myself in high school. But it was kind of I don't know why I went through such a transformation when I was so young that I knew that I was gay, but I hated myself for it, and I couldn't sleep at night when I was like 13, 12, and 13 because I knew it was wrong. But at the same time, I didn't have any friends because I was projecting that own self-hatred into my school life. And then like my family life was awful at the same time. So um, yeah, whenever I came out, though, it was so relieving, but also like terrifying at the same time because there were, I came from a conservative community. So who knew, who knew how they were going to react? But um, I don't know. Here I am. I'm glad I did. I'm glad you did, too. Me, too. <laughs> Me, too. Yeah. <laughs> So everyone here is an, an amazing role model for the LGBTQ plus community. Do you feel that if someone does have a long, not a long, a large online following, whether it's because they're an actor, a singer, or a YouTuber, do you think that they have an obligation to come out if they are gay? I always say no to that answer. Like, yeah. you mm -hmm. do not have an obligation to come out if you are gay because I, I always say that you should always feel like you can have a safe space to come out, like you aren't pressured to come out, and that when you do come out, that you'll have people that will support you and um, will help you um, transition nicely into your new life. Um, and uh, yeah, like it's just not like a, a requirement. So yeah, no, you know, like, take it at your own time. You, yeah, you don't want someone, because there's also, especially if someone's in the spotlight, there, there's a, definitely a sense of responsibility then to a, a, as a member of the community. And so you don't want to like force someone into that role against their will, because then they're less inclined to sort of take that responsibility seriously. Not, um, not to mention oh. that sometimes like like some people aren't 100% sure. Like, and it's like, you, labels are really only useful 
if they if you find them if they empower you in some way and if not if that's not something that that adds meaning to your life then you shouldn't be required like there's no law yeah there's definitely no law that says that you have to explain to people what your identity is or who you are or who you like to sleep with or who you like to date like that's not the you know there's no requirement so if the average person doesn't have a requirement to wear an identity on their sleeve if they don't want to then yeah that no it shouldn't be a requirement of anybody. Counterpoint. Uh, no, uh, not really counterpoint, but I, it does. It is interesting to me as a as a bisexual person to see a lot of celebrities come out by saying they are fluid, or saying, "Well, I love who I love," or saying like, "Oh, it, it's not a bi like don't ask me that question." And part of me worries sometimes about like the erasure of the bisexual term or label because even like certain people who who come out and uh, or just start dating, you know, if you're a celebrity and just start dating another gender people will go, oh, okay, well, that's a gay person now. And I think that's kind of a mistake. And I know it's not their fault or their, maybe it's not their responsibility, but I do get a little bit concerned sometimes about, like, the erasing, uh, like, I don't know, the erasing of, like, the, the term bisexual as, like, a thing, because then people are easily able to go, well, this person's a, a gay celebrity, or, like, this person's, like, now a lesbian, and it kind of creates this, like, oh, they became a lesbian now, versus, like, this is a bisexual person. So I don't know. I'm on the fence about this idea, because part of me is, like, yeah, it's nice to have the privilege to not be able to label yourself, but there is... I don't know, there is like a thing where it would help immensely to just be so clear about the label. And even like on television shows, even like if you're writing a television show, like a mainstream television show, there's so many characters who are like, I date who I date. And I'm like, okay, but you've had like the run of like four or five seasons of a show and you've literally never said the word bisexual as if it doesn't exist. And it's like a, a little bit sure. weird. For sure, yeah. Say, hashtag say the word is always like a thing that has to, yeah. to be proliferated among the community. But at the same time too, again, and once once that is a, a label that someone owns it's almost like especially when it's when they're among some of the first openly members of a certain community be it bisexual or any other minority group you want to to um, to, to basically talk about it's almost like you become the group spokesperson I know which is unfortunate and is not something that has that should exist that should not be the case but unfortunately it's kind of the world we live in right now and so it's like I definitely don't want someone sort of representing themselves as like you know a leader in the community unless they are like willing to take responsibility for that role mm -hmm. then, which like, is you, why it's like uh, it's then, a complicated I, question I feel like it's one thing I, I agree with miles in that we these people don't owe us anything they don't owe the us an explanation as to who they have sex with because at the end of the day that's literally what it changes who they have sex with right but whenever they do come out i feel like they i don't know a person of influence they got there somehow so whenever they do decide to come out i feel like it it's part of their branding that they are i mean and i hate that they become a spokesperson but we care about that so much. We care about the fact that Colton Haynes is gay now, and then all of a sudden he care, he matters so much to the gay community. I'm like, okay, why didn't he matter like six months ago? Why is he? Why does it matter so much now? Yeah, and it has it more is, to do with that, with other people than him, though. Right. It is interesting that all of us on this panel started our careers out, like started our YouTube channels out ish, right? Is that true? Mm -hmm. Oh, ish. No, no, really. Because I didn't like. Oh, I there wasn't... was one video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one video before it happened. One yeah. video before you were like, never yeah. mind. I wasn't. I didn't deny it, but I also wasn't like, I am bisexual. Yeah. You know, bisexual. Like I wasn't, you know, like as much like waving the flag as I am now. Like I didn't deny it. I definitely was like. Yeah. I just kind of let people label me however they wanted to. Yeah. Sort of thing. So. It is interesting because I do wonder about people who come out later, like have already built a huge fan base and then come out right. later versus like me starting, you know, just between us already out. It is like a very interesting thing career wise. I'm gonna... uh, huh. No, I just love how they're always saying, oh, it's a career move now. I'm like, do you realize how awesome that is that people are actually saying? Yeah. It used to be career suicide. suicide. Yeah, yeah. And now they're like, oh, he's doing it for attention. I'm like, Listen. good. I know. Please. All the time I'm like, oh, I could have monetized that video so hard. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like there's definitely, it's 
there's a hit and a miss with it. I mean, yeah, no one has to tell the world who they are because it's a private thing. But at the same time, you know, like Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. I was a comic book kid. Um, but whether you're out or you're not, what do you think is some social change that we have the power to do with the internet at our fingertips to make it a safer space and a better world for the LGBTQ plus community? It's, it's actually where I was going to go before you asked this I question. I knew that's why. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, regardless of what celebrities might do and stuff like that, I think it is just as important for any individual to come out of the closet and be proud of who they are. Because before I made videos, Davey Wavy made videos, and he inspired me to come out. I was out already, but he inspired me to come out and make videos about it. And I think, and at that time, I was a nobody, right? And anybody has the ability to grow to that extent and share their voice. And I think that's, in some ways, even possibly even more important than waiting for some celebrity to do it for you. Mm. Yes. I think also it's just great once you do have a platform, um, just having that gives you the ability to, to speak to not just to LGBT issues, but other issues, just issues in general that, that, um, that are important to you. And to like, I, I don't just talk about being bi on my channel. I talk about everything from gun control to, uh, you know, income inequality to everything. So, so it's just knowing that you, you have a voice with your platform and just um, being able to sort of, you know, use use your powers for good, I think is, is just in general. And then also as, as a member of the bi community especially, uh, a, a way to really just speak to a lot of the misconceptions that are out there and just sort of just be like, no, 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 that's, that's not how it is. Um, it's just, it's useful to, to have my content almost be like an information resource for other people so that if someone wants to, you know, combat all of the bullshit about, you know, coming out as bi, it's like, they don't have to say, they don't have to counter that themselves. They can just show people my video and I can argue for them. That's great. I love being able to do that. I think that's something I, we noticed recent, well, I noticed recently is that whenever you have influence and you're in the LGBT space and it's known that you're LGBT, um, there comes a certain responsibility with your platform and I try to lead by example. So I don't, uh, I don't say that I do good things because I'm gay. I say that I do good things because I'm a good person and I happen to be gay. So um, that's kind of how I choose to go about it. Uh, but I think that what happened in Orlando recently has kind of opened my eyes a lot to how people view themselves as a part of this community. Um, there were, there was a lot of outcry, there was a lot of people that were upset and they made their voices heard. But then there were also people that had massive followings that are a part of the community that remained silent. And mm. I, I'm like you, I, I guess I'm just like personally disappointed in that, but at the same time, it's their platform and they're allowed obviously to go about their branding and their platform however they see fit. But um, I think it's like, whenever you're a part of this community, uh, be a part of it, right? Not, don't be a they part of this choose. community. For, right, yeah. yeah. It's like, mm. don't but be a part of this community it. if it's like nice and easy for you and you, you know, turn it off whenever things get rough. Yeah, like, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not in a cafeteria where you can just kind of pick and, oh, I like some of this and I'll take some of this right. and I'll leave the rest. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So why did you guys specifically choose to do LGBTQ plus content on your YouTube? Because some of the big YouTubers we have today, Tyler Oakley, Ingrid, Hannah Hart, they're definitely part of the LGBTQ plus community, but that's not necessarily their focus. Why do you guys decide that you want this to be heard and something that you represent online? It's fun. <laughs> it's like, it's good my answer. Girls are hot and they deserve to be praised and put on a pedestal like anybody, <laughs> and like anybody else. And Ariel is single, everybody. Um, <laughs> for three years. It's okay, though. But we're not bitter. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, I think that... Um, wait, what was the question? <laughs> why did you choose to do why, LGBTQ why do content? Yeah. Uh, I think that it's an underrepresented part of the community. It, it, it was at least when I first started and I just continued to do it. Right. Nobody was, not, not that many, I think maybe Matthew Lush and like three other people yeah. were, on, were on YouTube at the time and Michael Buckley and Chris Crocker. It when I started, was, that was it. Yeah, no, it was it was weird how like I made the the first video, the first buy video, officially buy video that I made 
I, I made it with the intention of like, I'm gonna talk about it once and never again. Like, I'm just gonna say whatever, Good luck. all that I need yeah. to say in one video. Right, and then all of a sudden it goes nuts. Like, people share it everywhere. I start getting messages about, oh my gosh, talk about it more, please. And I was like, I remember that. oh, all right. Well then, and then what's so funny is that it, it taught me also the difference between like having a label and owning a label and then being a part of a community because what I, you know, while I had been identifying as bisexual or been bisexual this whole time, there, there was a whole community of people there that I hadn't really been in touch with yet. And so what was really awesome too is to sort of learn about my own community and my own sort of heritage as a member of Bi Plus and, and seeing how much, you know, rich history there is there and how many issues that we still have to tackle as a community. And then I get to share that with my audience as like a way of, okay, now let's let's learn about this together. Like let's use let let's all educate ourselves here. And that's just been a really, really great um, enriching experience because not only do I get to take this journey, but I a lot of people get to do it with me. Uh, for me, it was mostly just like showing people that um, you can be completely different from somebody and still be and still should be um, respected like as a human being. So I may not be like the rest of the gays you know out there, but you gonna treat me just <laughs> like the rest of the human beings out in this damn world. <laughs> So um, I, I needed to let the children know, and I needed to tell them and teach them. I was like, let hey, them, I'm a them. thing, you know, this is me, this is who I am, and you're going to deal with it, whether you like it or not. So, um. <laughs> and then you throw the mic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for our channel, a lot of it, to me, is how funny it is to normalize my character versus Allison's character. Because I don't, if you're not familiar, our, Allison is essentially like, uh, like very straight and like a 1950s sort of caricature where like she wants a husband and she wants a husband real bad. <laughs> and so like, it started out on the channel where like, you know, Allison was the pun intended, straight woman, and then I was like this crazy out there queer poly feminist, oh my god. And slowly over two years, it's become like a total 180 where I've become the straight man and Allison is, is it highlights how crazy and out there Allison's views are, even though those are the views that are societally acceptable. And so all of it, like, a, a, my favorite comments are when people go, I, I thought Gabby was crazy, but now I think Allison's crazy and Gabby seems really normal. And I'm like, great, if you're coming to our channel and the person on the channel who is just like a loud feminist bisexual polyamorous person and like that's the most normal person on the channel like we've done then great then like you can meet that person in real life and they're normal to you and that's like the best thing to me is that it highlights like how all the stuff that is societally like that like is the Cosmo magazine sort of like how to land a man when you say it out loud seems crazy <laughs> but then my whole life is like oh she's actually like pretty chill and normal and seems to be happy, so I have no complaints here. <laughs> wow, gay people and normal in the same sentence. Who would have guessed? <laughs> so, as you know, we're LGBTQAI2 ABCDEFG. Yeah, we're a very so large hard. community. Um, what do you think is something we can do to help smaller creators who maybe represent the letters of our community that aren't as heard as often? So we have people who are gender non-binary, we have pansexuality, we have agender, we have asexual. What's something we can do so people make that a little bit more normal as well? Defend it. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Because like, the Proud to Be video has like completely oh. opened my eyes to just how scared everyone is of stuff they don't understand. So um, it's not, I mean, I'm so happy that the Proud to Be video that came out a couple of days ago actually did because the comment section and the like to dislike ratio on that video is exactly why that video needed to be, to be made in the first place. So um, I know that there are so many instances of people not understanding the T part of the LGBT and that is like the fact that we don't do anything about it is doing a disservice to our community because they are a part of us. So what I want to do personally is just lend my platform in order to educate people that don't understand that there's nothing weird about them either. So I mean the, everyone else has seemed to understand that gay white males are a thing. My struggle isn't nearly as much as the other parts of the acronym. And 
I would do a disservice to everyone else if I just still stayed quiet because I got what I needed. I can marry now, but there's still so much disrespect for everyone else. So to be silent is to kind of allow them to keep going and that's just not okay with me. Yeah. Collabing is a big thing too, right. of going mm -hmm. on other channels and mm -hmm. uh, having people on your, and having people on your channels and uh, if you want to talk about an issue, but you're like, well, I'm not a member, you know, I'm not asexual, I'm not agender, I'm not gender non-binary, how can I do this? Like, there are smaller creators out there, and if you have a big platform to bring them onto your channel and have them speak is like, creates a bigger platform for them. So I would say collabing is like a big part of it too. Just listening. Listening is a great, like, like just being able to, like, no one is born knowing everything or everybody's experience. And so just being open and being willing to just learn uh, and have people and members of your own, uh, you know, of different um, sort of communities, like just teach you and being open to that has been, I think, the most useful tool in that, you know, that that again turns pivots back to what he said about being able to kind of use your voice to advocate for all members of the community, but you can't do that effectively until you listen and until you learn enough that I can, you know, that if you find yourself in a conversation and someone says something transphobic or, or something that's otherwise, you can be like, hey, by the way, like, no, <laughs> that's not how we should conduct ourselves. Yeah, and share those videos, share the other yeah. people's videos. Yeah, for sure, yeah. And like tag them and stuff. Yeah. And like, tag, <laughs> comment, rate, subscribe. <laughs> Leave comments. Yeah, all that. I, I have one thing to add. I think it's incredibly important to, to when you do promote these other channels to make sure that you're promoting someone that has a positive energy about who they are. Mm. And that's not, not that they're not going through shit because everybody, everybody has that time in their life that they're going through it. But I think it's important for them to have a positive outlook because you're gonna bring them on your channel and, and expose them to your audience who also wants a positive view of this new community that they're, they're being mm -hmm. shown. I always sound like I have more to say and then I just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I've answered a question. To be sure, continued yeah. with Ariel. <laughs> My mind works weird, very weirdly. <laughs> but as you were saying, yeah, we have reached gay marriage, which is a huge thing, a major accomplishment. But Sa we same, still sex have same sex yeah. marriage? Yeah. Wow. Same sex marriage? Yeah. Same sex marriage. Sorry. Um, we were just okay. talking before this about how RJ and I are going to be the bi buzz kills sorry. on this bye panel. Bye I'm just like, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, erasure has been happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to be gentle about it, like a lot That's of other things. Huge. But <laughs> but yeah, so same-sex marriage is a thing. <laughs> cool, but we still have members of our community who still can't even go to the bathroom. So mm. what are some things you think that we need to do to make it more accessible so everyone in our community will have their rights, not just the L, the G, and the B? Right. Um, I can speak from experience because I know that my mom, um, before I came out, was so conservative. And um, that was just the part, it was just the community in which I grew up and where we lived. But um, whenever I came out, or when I came out, my mom had this massive change and she realized that it was either adapt to the way that I was or lose me. So, um, but I think that through being patient with her and kind of holding her hand through the process, obviously because she's my mother, so I have the patience to hold, to hold her hand and stuff. But she has learned so much through me being patient with her uh, about the other parts of the community. Obviously, I can't speak for the bisexual or the transgender or anything like that. But the fact that she kind of has that accessibility to that community through me has taught her so much. And I know that I think that she is also teaching other members of our family and her friend group about it as well because they know that she has a vested interest because her son is gay. So I think it's all about accessibility and being patient with them because, I mean, there are things about uh, living as a bisexual or living uh, transgender that I don't understand and I need to learn. So if I want someone to be patient with me, I need to be patient with them. Mm. I think uh, definitely, I mean, use your voice to speak on behalf of any and all injustice uh, is is very, it's a very key thing to do. Like, I know I've definitely made a whole video trying to dismantle the whole bathroom bill thing, but also realizing that, listen, while, while I'm doing my best to advocate on behalf of a community, it's something that it's, I'm not technically a member, so I definitely also wanted to make sure that 
even when I made my video, I'm like, okay, by the way, here are some amazing trans creators. You can refer to them. Please refer to them because all I'm doing is basically just re regurgitating what they have taught me as best as I can. But really, you need to hear it straight from them. But we're all here. We're all here to tell you that this bathroom bill thing is bullshit. Right. So. <laughs> Um, and some of those creators are here today. Hey Which guys. Guy? Yes. Hello, what's guy? Up? And oh, cats in the back. Cat, 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 cat. 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 So you know, <laughs> these uh, yeah. See, see, they're 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 those they're on the we front see line. You. So like, uh, we see you. I'm just you know, I'm just I'm just trying to help. So just you know, and, and I think that's also great to have you know some of those other you know members of the acronym like cut like right. teach us how to be better advocates. Teach us how to be better. Uh, you know, uh, better resources Voices. to you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, for uh, if there's anything we can be doing better or more, please let us know because we want to do it. Which he, which he has. I've, yeah. call, I've called Sky like multiple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sky. Well, I even I'm getting I even, hate on my video. Yeah. I even have to defer like even as like I have to defer to other bi people a lot of times because mm -hmm. I'm like you know like I'm still I still consider myself pretty new to this too. So even like. I, Advocating on my own behalf, I have to like defer to other people and just be like, does this make sense? Is this like causing more harm than good? And so, so like on it, like it's ask. You can ask if if you're because I I can't tell you how many times everyone's like, oh, I've always been curious about this, but I've never thought to ask. I've always been too afraid to ask. I'm like, listen, as long as you're like respectful about it and like, listen, I don't mean to offend, but like, could you clarify this for me? I can guarantee you that it's going to be way better. To, to like ask those questions than to just kind of sit there and have that misconception. Like it's, yeah. Um, something I think is really important is to not speak over anyone when yeah. you, and listen, just reiterating what RJ said. And in addition to that, um, not expecting any cookies when you do speak out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yes. Because yeah. I know there are some people out there that um, think they need an award or deserve to go somewhere because they speak about certain in issues or injustices in communities and think that they deserve to be in a place. And it's like, no, it does, no. That's not the way that it just, works. Yeah, that just you makes just, you a good human. Yeah, you that just doesn't, yeah, you don't are get a gold just star. like a good person for speaking out. So, um, you know. Take that as you may. Like yeah. <laughs> well, what you will with I, that I information. Um, I also think, for me personally, it's important to talk, you know, with, about, and learn from trans creators because I kind of live in this, um, I guess you would say, limbo of uh, <laughs> a mixture per se of <laughs> genders. I, I, I don't, I don't even know what to call myself. I definitely cycle around through like the words gender fluid um, and what's the other one? Or you like queer. dress, yeah, gender queer, gender just like, because I, I, I have no idea. Sometimes I feel more ladylike than I do a man, and sometimes I feel more manly. So, I love that yeah. you deferred to me as if I would. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. <laughs> what, do think, Gabby? What, do you, what do you think is the word? Because I can't remember it. That's what I was wondering. Like, super pretty. Yeah, oh, Slay. I My know, gender is, is pretty. killing it. Yeah. Slaying it. <laughs> One time, Allison said, uh, I was like, she's like, do you know what I identify as? And I was like, what? And she was like, Sad. <laughs> same girl, same. <laughs> yeah. Or I was, or I was joked that like my pronoun is your Majesty. Like that's my. <laughs> I saw that. I like that. <laughs> so a lot of our young audiences are struggling to discover their sexuality, their gender, whether they're bi, gay, sad. Um, <laughs> so what advice do you have for someone young questioning who they are that? Can make it a little better or easier for them. Take your time. <laughs> There's, no, it's not a race. And it'll change. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There's first off, like. Again, you, there's no requirement that you identify as anything. I think that's the first thing. There's no requirement, there's no law that says you have to pick a gender identity, a sexual identity, there's no law. So only choose a label if it empowers you. And just because you choose it now doesn't mean you're married to it for life, unless you actually marry someone for life. Yay. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's all, you know, if it enhances your existence, great. If it doesn't, I also think like it you you're going to change so much throughout your life. Like I, you know, I identified as bi when I was like 12 in my own head and then was like table it forever because this is terrible. Uh and then uh 
uh, and then uh, now, just like in the last year, I'm lear I learned the word pansexual. And like, you know, I present myself as very confident stuff on my channel or like very like, oh, I know everything. Um, but like, it, it's still things are changing. Still, I'm like, maybe I am pan. I don't know. Some days, like, maybe I'm this, maybe I'm that. And like, I'm 28, which is, I know, gross in YouTube years. Um, but like, <laughs> you can still like, look, I'm still learning things and still changing. And like, if I watched a video that I made a year ago, I'd be like, that's all wrong. So like, don't be so, I know it seems like everybody's like label, but like, don't mm. seem to be so hard on yourself if you, if things are changing. I get so many emails from people being like, I thought I was a lesbian and I identified so hard as a lesbian. And then I like fell in love with this guy and like, am I even a lesbian anymore? And I'm like, you're like a per, you're just still a person. You're just a per, like yeah. everyone's so hard on themselves. And then when there's that misconception too about like, you know, oh, was I lying to people yeah. if I came out as this prior? I'm like, no, if it felt true to you at the time, it then was. you were being honest. Yeah. Like, it's fine. Like, what I always say is like when I was a kid I was a size four shoe and now I'm a size six. It doesn't mean I was never really a four. Mm -hmm. you You're a size know. six? You're so small. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have small feet but a big Ooh, heart. Itty -bitty. So. <laughs> awesome. So we have about 20 minutes left. So if any of you guys have some questions, I believe we're going to have some lovely individual in green help us out. Are you lovely and in green? Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Hi. Oh. So if you want to pick whoever your heart desires with a question. Pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Oh, I was going to pick her first, too. <laughs> Ooh. She's Hi. all the lavender hair. <laughs> um, so Katie, oh, oh, am I allowed to speak? Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> you are always allowed to speak. Hi. Katie, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you're at mental health. Hi. Yeah, I am not like following you guys specifically, <laughs> but like I have been everywhere you've been this morning, but I'm Katie. <laughs> Um, so I have, um, I started out with a mom and a dad and then my dad came out of the closet when I was 11 oh. and now I have a mom and, uh, two dads <laughs> and Lucky so, you. yeah, it's a very unique family and, um, so I had, my dad got remarried when I was in high school and for me, the gay thing was never an issue and it was never a problem for me because actually I've always really identified as bisexual. I actually felt like I had a safe place to come out to even though my mom's side of the family was super conservative. However, when I did come out of the closet and like tell my dad, he was like, that doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I thought that I was gonna have somebody like good to come out to because I mean, you're gay and you came out when you were 30 with four kids, like hello. Um, wow. And it didn't work out that way. And now after showing him various YouTube channels and like showing him like different people, like it's helped us talk it out and discuss it, but I just wanted to know from RJ and Gabby, like, clearly it's an issue you guys have probably experienced, but like, what, what do you have to advise people on that? And then what do you have, like, as a personal story of how you got through that and like, where do you stand after that? Because I always felt like I was a liar for years, mm -hmm. yeah. so. Yeah, oh God. Gabs, you wanna just start Oh, now you wanna hand over? Okay, well, <laughs> like we got a really tough question, so Gabby? Uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, Ashley Mardell and, and Ariel just made this series about like, uh, what, that's, you remember your own videos, right? Uh, and I was in it, which was talking about lesbians uh, dating bisexuals and bisexuals dating lesbians and, and the sort of, and we talked a bit about how like a lot of the hatred towards my bisexuality came from lesbians. Not most of it, but, or monosexual people. Um, and I, and like, I, so I kind of had internalized that a bit and thought that most, like, I guess I was, I didn't show up to a lot of gay events for a while because I thought, okay, well, I'm not wanted here. You're not gay enough, You're oh not gay enough to be oh here, you're gosh. not wanted. And then, but, but just by nature of showing up to those things or making my face, like putting my face out there and things and thinking like, I am worthy to be, like I, maybe a couple years ago I would have been like, I'm on the, the LGBTQ panel for VidCon, like I don't deserve to be here. Uh, but like still, you know, but I think forcing yourself to be like, okay, I deserve to be here. I deserve to rep, like be in this space or whatever helps a lot in terms of like your own self esteem of like being like, no, 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 everything that I'm doing is valid. And I'm like just as deserving to be here as other people. And you're mm -hmm. just as, the B is in the name of the community. Like you're allowed to be there. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's, yeah, 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 the bee's not silent. I think, yeah, it, it's as long as you, as long as you have at least like a cu like a handful of people who are affirming, um, mm -hmm. it gets, it definitely gets a lot easier putting up with that, with that bi erasure. And let me tell you, you will get it far more from like lesbian and gay people than you will straight people. Yeah. As long, like, as far as the erasure goes from, from like straight people, it's more of like, oh, that's a thing. As opposed to from like the gay side, it's like, no, that doesn't exist. You're actually gay. Just don't be a coward. Stop being a coward. Don't use it as a stepping stone. Uh, um, Leah, there was someone uh, that I was work where a friend of mine and I are both bisexual women, and uh, we wanted to make a video for this company about the Orlando um, shooting. And the guy in charge was like, "Oh, really? Two bi femme girls are gonna make this video?" And I was like, "Really?" Yeah. And then I said, to... "Tell." I, she told me that that's why we weren't doing the video. And I said, "Oh, tell him I fuck more women than him every day." <laughs> yeah, you have to. You definitely, yeah. Uh... You have to definitely develop a pretty a pretty thick skin and, and develop yeah. a really quick sense of humor. But I think also what I found is just just refusing to listen to that and like the more you actually live your life openly and just continue to be open about it, the more people will be like, oh. I guess it is really a thing because especially the, we're called the silent majority by a lot of sexual health experts because we kind of get bullied into not identifying. And so we have a, there is a really massive visibility problem because not, you know, we, we don't feel comfortable coming out about it. Uh, but I feel like as more and more people do make it a point to identify as such, you'll start seeing, cause a lot of, a lot of, Oh, I've never met a bi person before. I'm like that, you know, of right. statistics. Statistically, you've probably met quite a few. You just didn't know it. So. <laughs> I'm gonna go you. Can you stand? Um, I, I, I like your shirt. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have a question about like making coming out videos. Yeah. I have a question about making coming out videos. Um, do you have a problem with like coming out videos like monetizing the coming out experience? Nope. I know a lot of people no. say like, oh, coming out, you're just coming out to get money and for views and everything instead of just like living your sexual orientation on your channel? No. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't think there is any issue with that. Like it is the, the money that you make from your coming out video I think is low key deserved. Like you, yeah. like you. <laughs> like it's such a tough thing to come out, and especially depending on like you're coming out to everyone, and you know maybe your family might see that, and you they might not be accepting of it. Like there was that one video I don't know it was last year, year before that, um, where someone was coming out and like their family had like cornered them and started like screaming at them, yeah. and they got yeah, kicked out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that video went viral, and they set up like a GoFundMe page and got like a whole bunch of money. So like there's there's instances like that where that could happen and it's scary so like whatever money that they can make or you know gather up from their coming out video you know get it girl yeah i, I don't <laughs> it's, it's definitely I'll, I'll just go back to it used to be career suicide yeah, yeah. to come out so the fact that now people are saying being salty and are like oh it's a career move oh they're just doing it to get attention i'm like Good, great. <laughs> That's a, a sign of how far we've come. Yeah. I will say that there is a weird thing to me about the types of coming out videos that do go viral tend yes. to be very yes. attractive young white gay men. Uh, yes. And that is a little insidious to me. Like, uh, I want, why isn't Ellen giving us all checks? Um, I would like a check, please, Ellen. Um, right. And However, that is not, <laughs> that's not on them, is it? No, no. I just think it is interesting. Like, be aware of, I guess, the types of the types of video coming out videos that are celebrated versus other types of coming out videos For sure. that don't get as much attention. I that's think... all here to be a buzzkill. Okay, so everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I mean, I think that there are two things that I want to say to that. I'm, I think I don't have a problem with them monetizing off their own coming out, but. There are a lot of people that monetize off other people's coming out, and oh, yeah. that is unacceptable. Like that is not your story. Like how dare you make a video dismissing it? Or because I've seen that a lot. Um, oh my God, the other point just left me. <laughs> Dang, the other point was really good too. But yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's definitely worth discussing. Oh, I got it. I, yeah, I, got it. <laughs> um, but I think it. I think you know whenever when stuff like that happens and someone comes out and they monetize it, and there are people that are 
dismissive of it, I think it takes moments like Orlando to realize why that is so important at the same time. Because like, what what is the alternative that why they 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 come out and then like they don't make a living from it, but then like they can be murdered in a club. And I mean, honestly, any way that want, someone wants to make a living honestly and with integrity, um, I'm okay with because we're literally getting murdered for being who we are. So I, even, like, we have you know, bigger things to worry about than how someone makes money um, on their YouTube channel. And I think them using their voice to join the community and to be an inspiration to the community should be applauded. Right. Yes, for sure. And it's also like, it's not just all about Orlando. It's like, it's still legal in a lot of places to get fired right. for being gay. And it's not, and, and it's still illegal in many parts of the world. It's punishable by death in certain right. parts of the world. So it is definitely crucial that we have those positive portrayals of coming out and that experience for sure. Like it's, it, it is a linchpin of hope for a lot of people. That being said, yes, we definitely need to have a discussion about the types of videos that are celebrated, but at the same time, it's also not on, you know, it's it's not you know on the heads of the people who are actually doing the coming out. It's on the it's on uh, everybody's sort of collective head to to sort of reevaluate how we how we view like oh why are we only viewing cis white gay people coming out over everybody? I would still like a check, please, from Ellen. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my royalties, bitch. There you go. Hi, um, so I've been bisexual for most of my life and an only child for all of it. Um, <laughs> and I just recently have started living with my aunt and uncle and my two twin 15 year old cousins, one of which is very, very strongly thinks that she's bisexual. And now that I'm living with her, she looks up to me as an older sister and I'm not used to it. <laughs> and she looks at me like her bisexual idol and like her kind of figure to look up to, and as someone who has many subscribers and fans, how do you deal with being someone non-cisgender and being that inspiration to them? Wait, she's, she's trans? She's trans? She's bi. bi? She's bi. She's okay, bi. so she's, yeah. she is cisgender. Uh, well, she's, not, yeah, she, I think she actually straight. Really straight. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not straight. Yeah, That's not what she, I meant. I think okay. she missed both. Okay, okay. How do you deal with that? Um, I, th I think really the 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 way that I sort of mitigate it is like, listen, I'm doing the best I can here. Uh, re is I you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a human being. I'm definitely going to make mistakes. Um, but it, it's like um, you know, you're you're allowed to not live up to your own standards or you know or any standards you know 100 percent of the time. So I, I do all the time. <laughs> so I think as long as you're open with that, I think as long as you're open with the fact that you are that you are still a human being that is flawed and are open about it and be like, let's learn from my mistakes together. I think that's a, that's that's definitely a, a way to sort of manage that expectation because it can be pretty like tough. At oh times. yeah, I mean the the peop, like the fact that the fan base for a lot of our stuff I think is very young is like a constant thing in my head of like okay these are the, maybe the first first time that they're seeing a, a queer person. Like, this might be their first... Uh, I, I worry all the time about disappointing, like, a huge fan base of... Because they are so young and because they do expect so much of people. But, like, it, yeah, I think a big thing is them realize, You know, someone that age realizing that you're not going to be perfect. And you not putting pressure on yourself to be perfect. Yeah, owning your imperfection as well as like your attributes is I think it's it's a, it's important for yeah. sure. I think that it's also important to illustrate that their path may not be your path. Um, they That's have true. They're, they're, she may be looking to you because you're the only like accessible bisexual person in her life, but it's I think she needs to kind of back up and realize that um, you, she doesn't have to kind of be you, right? She doesn't have to, she can ha still have her own interests outside with all of the other aspects that come with making a person who they are. Yeah. Um, but I think, I remember whenever I was coming out, I thought that I had to be like the gay people that I saw in Will and Grace. I thought that that was the lifestyle that I was subscribing to and subscribe. Um, <laughs> so, but I, I don't know, it kind of dawned on me as I went about my business that there were so many other parts of me that 
really mattered more. The fact that I, you know, wasn't a violent person or the fact that I like a certain type of music and the fact that I like dogs. And there are so many other parts of me that I think are way more important than the fact of, yeah. you know, what my sexuality is. And I think maybe just take some time to kind of figure out what path she wants to take, you know, and who, yeah. who she really is. And I think that's something important that every high schooler should do. Just kind of turn off all the noise, turn off the phones, turn off the TV, figure out like what you like, who are you? Right. Mm -hmm. And that will help you accept who you are. Yeah. I, I definitely like when I do ask a bi guy, for instance, I make sure to say like, this is me and my experience. If you ask another bi person, you could very well get another set of answers, which is also why I take other bi people and bring them on my channel and ask them the exact same question. So I'm like, how are your answers different? How are yours the same? It's definitely, I think the more, yeah, you definitely make it clear up front that like my experience is not everybody's experience. There's, di there's, if there's a million, if there's, you know, a billion bi people out there, there's a billion different ways to experience that. Uh, same with any identity or any label out there, so. We have time for about two more questions. Two, 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 two. 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 It's five. She's standing up. She's, oh, she wants, she wants to ask a question. <laughs> She's like, no. Um, okay, uh, I know some of you came out like really young and I'm 13 and I identify as queer. Um, and my yes. <laughs> Woo. No, I, yeah, I'm like that's um, so awesome. That, and like, my school found out, like everyone in my school, and so like I had a bunch of people come up to me and be like, "Oh, like you're too young to know, like how, <laughs> like you're 13, like you're not supposed to know yet." You're, you're too like, young to know unless you're straight. Basically, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. We, yeah, tell, exactly. we tell babies, we're like, that baby's flirting. Like, we put sexuality on babies. Yeah, we project that on, yeah. So, right. so if any, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I was like, yeah, <laughs> she has question. a question. Or is that your question, is how to, how to deal with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the best thing you can do is just own it as best you can. Continue. Tell them they're too young to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you maybe know? you're gay. How yeah. do you know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's you ask like the adults will ask kindergartners, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Like that's mm. Have you ever met a kindergartner? There's so much like drama and romance that goes on in kindergarten. <laughs> and it's all like heteronormative because it's just the adults sort of projecting it on the kids. The kids don't know any better. Mm -hmm. Like I had a, you know, I had a, a kindergarten romance too. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I didn't know what a girlfriend was. I just drew pictures of me and her together and gave them to her. And then one day she stopped talking to me. Like it was just. It's a real like, relationship. Yeah. Exactly, right. See? It's like all my children, but kindergarten. Like, the ex oh. like ex if I. If I was doing that, if, if I was doing that to another boy, it, they would have been like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. But if I, because I was doing it to a girl, it was like, oh, yeah, oh, look at him. It's so adorable. So it's just like, just call, call their bluff, I think is the best thing you can do is just like, like try to point to people out, point out to people like, how much do you just assume that a child is straight until they tell you that they're not? And... That that may be difficult to do, you know, in the span of a certain conversation. But like, uh, the other thing is, own it. Just own it as best you can, and just continue. And just, the, you know, do the you, more they dismiss it, the more. Just... Honestly, like, do you have tips for us? Because I can't believe you like <laughs> know that about yourself. You're like the coolest. That's awesome. Yeah, go you. <laughs> do we have another question? Yeah. She wants. She, she wants she it. <laughs> Ending it on a strong note. Get that. I'm a lot older than you guys, so I'm going to take the floor. Um, I, first of all, thank you to all of you so much. A big part of what my partner and I appreciate about this, I know, is, is, is all of your activism. And I guess I want to ask, uh, because we've been so attracted to activism, with our, we are a brand new channel, we're eight months old, and, uh, and, and uh, shameless plug, we just did, because we keep being drawn toward activism, seven things you can do in the wake of Orlando to help. Mm -hmm. But honestly, those videos don't perform quite as well as the funny suite. Do you know what I mean? Do, do you guys think about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah. reason, oh, yeah. the reason they don't perform as well is because people actually have to get off their ass and do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's sad, but it's true. And I, this goes back to Coney 2012. Everybody remember that? Oh, oh my yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. The reason that performed really well is because they made people believe that they could change the world by sharing a video. And maybe sometimes you can, 
Hashtag for change. But, yeah, <laughs> but in that case, it was really, that, that campaign was all about get celebrities to do the job for us. And that's not where it happens. It's ha it has to be a much more grassroots, is that the right term? Right, right. Yeah. Type of, mm -hmm. type of thing, I think, when it comes to the gay community especially. Um, but for, for sure, like, it, it, it's also kind of like um, using, using the, the, dar the dark side or sort of to your advantage too. Like what, um, I, with my content especially, like I always like to disguise my substance and, disguise, and slip it in there kind of incognito and not, sometimes I will not be subtle about it. I, may, I just made a gun control video. I was not subtle about it. But other times, as far as my activism goes, like I'm much more sly about it and I'm much more about the infotainment angle of it. So, you know, sometimes you gotta pour melted cheese on vegetables to get kids to eat it. That's your perfect And oh, so, it's like, great. yeah, so I, I, for me, yeah, it's just about finding the right mixture of vegetables and cheese, so. <laughs> yeah, people, people, people usually don't don't sign up to learn. They sign up to laugh. That's it's why you trick them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trick them. Trick yeah. them into learning. You do. You're like, yeah. Like, I've I've literally done videos where I, I've done a video of um, a virgin, a lesbian virgin sees a naked woman for the first time after she came out of the closet. And yeah, it's sexualized and everything. But the message at the end of the video was, don't you feel much more calm because now that you're gay and you you're out. This, it's just a woman. Like, yeah, there it is. It's like, oh, I don't feel like ashamed, and I don't, I'm not scared of this other woman that's standing in front of me naked. <laughs> so there's always a way to, like somebody said, slip it in. And yeah. Whoa. Yep. Well, <laughs> trick them into learning. I think also th th there's there's just a, a bunch of different ways to sort of be an activist. I think this whole ta like this whole panel is just a great cross section of just different ways to advocate. Some are more overt. Some are more co are more covert. I think m I, I still use Miles's channel as an example of just like how to advocate without making it look like you're act like he my, my favorite video of his is, is still where he makes bear cakes. Oh God, like bear cakes. what is that? Happening? Have to do with being gay nothing except it's it's watching someone who's entertaining and really engaging fuck who like about gender and and sexuality and just doing it in such a fun subversive way that you just don't even real you're just laughing so hard you're too busy laughing yeah, that you don't even realize yeah, yeah, yeah. that you're kind of also being brought to the dark sides, so to speak. So. Do you want to comment on your bear cakes video? It's um, great. It's lit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and on that note, thank you guys so much for coming to this panel. We had a great time, and hope you did too. Uh, we're done. We did it. We did it. Nailed it. Crushed it. Crushed it. I love that this Hello. Hey. Hey. Welcome. We're back here at VidCon yeah. Live, everybody. My name is uh, is uh, uh, Elliot uh, Morgan. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and you're yeah. uh, you're Lee Newton. And then Kingsley. Kingsley. Oh, good to see you guys. Yes. Yes. You guys at Kingsley too. with three Y's. Yeah. Yeah. Kingsley. We've established Kingsley. I'm glad you know. I'm glad mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I, mean, I feel informed. Yeah. yeah. It was really good. I appreciated the information earlier about the Kingsley, the evolution of Kingsley with okay. the one Y yes. to the two Y to the three Y. Appreciate it, guys. One hundred percent. Got deep. I think that's when we connected. Yeah. The most. <laughs> I felt it like I saw right? sparks above yeah. all of us. I know. Like we Sims. get two more days of this. It's very exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we're gonna know each other so well. I know. Um, we just watched the sexual identity panel. I yeah, believe is where we, we just came from. That was fantastic. I caught a little bit of it, but not much because I was eating food. Yeah. Good food. <laughs> and it was great. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I had pho. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you say it right. Oh, yeah. those back counting back at, at home, <laughs> those counting at home, the Kingsley wave. Uh, Kingsley has waved a lot, and he's also, I think we only have to two peace signs. Yeah, that you've only done. two. Thank only God. Only two. Yeah. Ooh, so special. I'd like a weekend tally of what we actually have, like waves. And if you guys want to add even more, like if he's doing a couple of head nods, I saw some head nods. So maybe yeah. there's three different things that we have to watch for. Really yeah. cool. It's a fun game. It's, it's a, a fun really play fun along game. at I home. I wonder like who game. started that. Do you guys know like the, the kind of like the like oh I'm so, like, like what's up? The, yeah like I think like, somebody who's way cooler than I'll ever be. Yeah. I know. I've never been able to pull it off. Yeah. The amount of confidence it has to take to be like I'm not gonna shake your hand. I'm not gonna say hi. I'm only going to acknowledge that you <laughs> exist. Like, I remember. Can the, you do it? Do it to us right now. 
Uh, I remember the first time I saw somebody do that. I think I was in like seventh grade, and I was like, "That is the rudest thing anybody's ever yeah, done." Yeah, just not even acknowledge. Just yeah, okay. yeah, like, yeah. I you're like there. the saucy one where it's just like. But it's better than going like. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. you're like in trouble or something. You know That's like you're was? going into battle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I miss the old like milady. Like, <laughs> what? That, like, you know, like a oh, milady. Oh yeah, yeah, Top of the That's Top of the morning, classy. morning Very classy. Yeah. Maybe that's where it is. It originated with like a, a yeah. nice little that, right? Yeah. Uh, we hat. have the tag board, guys. Oh, it's beautiful. And if you use that hashtag VidCon Live, we will see it. Uh, it's really cool. Obviously, again, we have to say, watch your P's and Q's. Oh my God. Uh, don't send us pictures of your butt. If there's one um. grammar error, we're throwing it out. <laughs> and that's not, that's, <laughs> I don't make the rules. in the right place, people. Yep. Uh, and there's a TBT over there. -E. What would you get? There's a throwback over there from last year. <gasps> oh, oh throwback yeah. from last year. I did the Thirst Project dunk tank. Oh, did you have a towel around your? Oh, at the end I did, oh. not in there. And everyone was just dunking me consistently. It was oh. cold and horrible. Are you glad that you don't have to do that this year? Yeah, but it was for a good cause. Well, bad yeah, news, Kingsley. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 Why don't we feel that a dunk tank? Get a grip. Like, <laughs> get a grip. Not. not. Uh, I do would, you ever... like, bounce off the <laughs> stage. Do you ever see photos of yourself from a year ago and go, oh, that was better hair? Oh, yeah. I do that all the time. I, I like oh, yours no, now better. More. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, this is way better. They actually showed at the Variety Show the Mean Tweets Jimmy oh Kimmel segment from last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was just a shock and a revelation of what I do like used to that. look like. <laughs> just Which is yeah. a shock revolutionized revelation. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we all move forward. Yeah. No yes. one, like, regresses. Yes. Yeah. No, I don't feel like, I feel like no matter what changes, I'm like, I'm okay with that now. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm all right with it. I've made peace. Yes, exactly. With this, right? Yeah. Uh, Not so me. No, I'm out. He said, oh, Alexis was here earlier. She was wonderful and great. Who? Alexis G. Oh, she awesome. Was, yeah. Oh, great. God. She was super cool. She also asked me, uh, and I forgot to ask her what her Hogwarts house was. And I really felt dumb afterwards. But I did learn that her favorite candy was cookies and cream Hershey's. What? So, okay. Yeah. I haven't had one of those in so long. So long. They're too much, man. What's your yeah, favorite They're candy? too much. I really like, as far as chocolate, I love Three Musketeers. I just, they're so fluffy. You're the one. Three you Musketeers? You're the one that loves it. They're so good. Saying. It's like eating a pillow. You know, they haven't made one of those in like 15 years. It's just they're still know. selling the I same ones. I didn't know ones. that anyone Get actually out of here. liked those. They're so good. Like, I don't like a lot of things. Like, I don't like yeah. almonds. You like the lightness. You want it to be yeah. airy. Yeah. I get it. So I good. disagree, but I get it. What's your I do get it. Favorite? I would do Butterfinger. I'm a big fan of that Heath bar. Yeah. And oh, I like, uh, and I like Reese's. <laughs> I, I'm not a big chocolate guy, so you got to add some other weird flavor. I, I like Snickers. What about you, Lee? Yeah, name it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> name no. it all. all uh, Legitimately, I don't know if there's ever a candy that I haven't mm -hmm. met and loved. Even like Almond Joy? All of them. Oh, no. I let's, even okay, love licorice. Let's stop getting I love licorice, away. Almond too. Joy and Mounds are yeah. sick. Oh, Mounds. You don't like coconut. That's, yeah, Mounds sick. are the worst. No, I don't like coconut. Oh, the there worst. goes your healthy fat. Uh, Bye-bye. Uh, just so Bye, healthy fat. <laughs> just so you guys are, are aware, we're about to be, in a little while, we're going to be going to the YouTube keynote, yes. which is uh, like a big deal. And giant we're deal. We're excited. It is a giant deal. When it starts, there's a chance that I might scream and go, ah, I go. Yeah. <laughs> And Just that's like what that. it. <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm rude. Up the day. Yeah. But it's exciting, and we're gonna have to. I am it. very excited for everyone at home that you guys get to see that too. Like this is all stuff that I hope you guys have been enjoying it and being able to see it. But it's very exciting. Yep. Um. So, we actually do have a video at right now, and it's our sweet little baby Brent, and baby boy. Baby boy, baby boy out Brent. on the BBB. floor, being our legend. eyes and ears, right? He's with a legend, right? He's a legend. No, yeah. Brent is with a legend. I mean, Brent is a He's legend. He's with well, a legend. Yes. I, we don't, we're going to find out. We're going to find, find out, out right now what yeah, Brent's right doing. Now. So the main expo hall floor isn't where all of the action is happening. We're headed upstairs to the second floor where it's for industry and creator guests autograph panels. I'm talking secret panels. I think there's some Illuminati stuff going on up there. And we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of it, mostly. I think breaking down, Philip DeFranco's a lizard person. Hashtag Philip DeFranco is a lizard person. Tweet at him. Don't tell him it was me. Don't tell him it was me though. 
Let's go sign some autographs. Let's watch people sign autographs? No. Let's go sign some autographs. I'm starting to think that this is not where autographs are. It's very cool, it's very interesting. I just sort of think we're in the wrong place. So, should have looked at a map. We should go quietly. Definitely not where we're supposed to be. Definitely not where we're supposed to be. So one of the things about being here at VidCon, especially in the Anaheim Convention Center, is that it's just so large and there's so much to see that often you'll find yourself, even though you know exactly where you are and you're too proud to ask for directions, you're exploring the space and you're just trying to find what is unexpected and organic about what could happen here. Not that you're lost. Don't ever admit that you're lost. That's admitting failure. Like, where are we going, though? So they're not even letting people into that one, so we're definitely not supposed to be there. Neither are they. Seems cool. So the thing about life is that it's gonna throw you curveballs. And I think we all know as YouTube creators or fans that you just roll with that and you roll with the punches. Some of your best creativity comes from when you're scrambling and you don't know what's gonna happen. And the mean guy wouldn't let you into the cool room. You don't take it personally. You just go back to familiarity, rest on your laurels, never try to do anything different or fun. You'll just be turned away at the front door of life. Said no one ever, follow your dreams. Just wanna to go to the autograph booth. So the whole bit was about. Let's go do an autograph thing. Get what you get. Beyonce made lemonade and so are we. Well. Stay tuned on live.vidcon.com. Keep using hashtag VidCon live. We're gonna try to find that autograph signing area for you. I was hype, I was excited. I'm not admitting failure, I'm not admitting defeat, especially because it's right here though. Yeah! Woo! Yes! Boots, autographs, Sharpies, pictures, lines, people. Shay Carl's behind me. That's real. It's. Hey guys, Trey Carl here, doing a meet and greet over here. Buy my book. <laughs> These are just randomly here. Seventh VidCon. You know what I just realized too? What's that? The van that I drove here, which is like a forever old van, I've drove here every single year. And the battery's dead in the parking lot. Somebody go jump the battery. We're gonna go steal his car though, for sure, right? <laughs> Excellent. All right, this is fun, but this is where the real magic begins. The line has already started to form over here. Uh, let's sign some autographs, right? People are gonna show up, I think soon. They try to make the, they get the lines longer, uh, just to make sure it kind of looks busy and full, you know. So we'll get started shortly, pretty sure. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna sign a bunch of them because people are gonna file in later and we don't have time to just sit here all day. That's crazy. Uh, so back to you guys. Uh, hashtag booths is still a thing if you wanna tweet that. That makes me preposterously happy. Oh, Brent, you're so good, man. I yeah. didn't. I have no idea what he was doing. I don't know either. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, Brian, you're killing it, buddy. I oh, imagine it was great, beast. though. I bet it was engaging. He has yeah. very kind eyes. Such kind eyes. He does. He he's does. Very just like. Yeah. He's like, probably sort of tired. He's been like all over the place all he's day, been right? Yeah. I feel. I'm like very grateful for him because I've been sitting here <laughs> drinking coffee and water, <laughs> and he's been like running out there, being like. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I, I mean, we'll be out there. We're gonna make the videos. We're gonna get to the videos. It's yeah, very nice. I'm like very yeah. sweet. Thank exactly. God. I'm gonna be here farting in this guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and talking, and talking. But I've had a blast with you guys I've, today. I know, this has been wonderful. This has been great. You're gonna say that happy. Kingsley's not gonna show up, so he's gonna be like, No, he's I'm like, not gonna be back because I have a panel. 
Oh, it's true. And, and a bit, a bit, a bit. A bit. You <laughs> too. It's okay. I've been talking so much. I today. know. Oh you feel like that? I feel like this part hurts. Yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, eat. Uh. It's it gotten a little to the point where like I forget what I'm saying as I'm yeah. saying it, and I'm just like still talking. <laughs> Sentence hasn't one. ended. Yeah. All right, we're gonna keep going, and there it is. There's the end. Yeah. Uh, I feel like my purgatory is gonna be like 92 cameras. Oh no, like, that's a nightmare. Oh no, is this it? Hi. Is this Hi. it? You did it. You did uh, it. Yes. Uh, so you have a panel? What panel are you going to? Um, Something about balancing school and YouTube slash how to do school while doing YouTube. It's or a how very to leave long school. title. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Education in okay. YouTube, basically. Yeah. Yes. You, know, yeah. you, you made Good. all that up just now, did it? Did yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I forgot the proper title, but it's going to be great. I like yeah. me, John Kozar, Nathan Zed. Oh, cool. And a few other people. It's going to be fun. fun. Yeah. I saw Nathan Zed last night, and I hugged him, and I told him that he's the future of YouTube, and he that he's is. everything. I love him. Every, he's amazing. He's, he's the, best, the best. best. We haven't really officially met. That's you need fine. to. That you met last night. You met last night. Don't yell at me. Why would you do that? I saw you guys meet. Why would you put me on blast? Lee Newton met Nathan Zed last <laughs> night. <laughs> but you're I right. I met a lot of people last That's night. That's true. You're right. It was very, yeah. All right, guys. We're going to see the YouTube keynote. Very exciting, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Good evening, VidCon. It is great to be here and to see everyone here in the audience. So this is my third time at VidCon, and I've started to notice some patterns while I'm here. So first of all, VidCon gets bigger, bigger and bigger every year. There are over 25,000 people here at this event in Anaheim. And that's just a huge testament to the vision that John and Hank Green had when they started it only six years ago. Now, and just so you know, I wasn't at YouTube those first few years because if I were, I would have been here. There's no way I would have missed VidCon. So second, the online space is just getting bigger and bigger, as I'm sure you've all noticed. There are new entrants, there are new partners, there are new creators, new fans. I bet a lot of you weren't here before at VidCon. It's a full-time job just to keep track of all the change in the industry. And third of all, even though the online video space is more crowded than ever, YouTube continues to thrive. This past year has been our best year ever. And while TV networks are losing audiences, we are growing in every region and across every screen. Today, more millennials tune into YouTube on mobile alone during prime time than any cable or broadcast TV network. And people aren't just watching on mobile and desktop. They are also watching YouTube in the living room. Woo. <laughs> Last year, TVs were our fastest source of watch time growth. And so what are people watching in the living room? What do they watch? Well, they watch the same things they always watched. No, no surprise there. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, John Oliver, fitness, travel, news, sports. But the part that's new is that they're now watching that right alongside all of YouTube's incredibly talented endemic creators, many of whom are at VidCon and probably some of whom are here in the room with all of us. Now it's clear that digital media and traditional linear media are blending together. And all of this is a conversation about the present. But I've been thinking about the future and about what the next generation of video platforms will offer for all of us. So the platforms of the future, they need to put the desires of the user and of the viewer first. The content needs to be on demand so viewers can see what they want, when they want. And it needs to work across all devices, mobile, desktop, TV. 
and the platforms need to enable community. Viewers need to feel like they are part of what they're watching. And that, that could be commenting or live chatting or creating their own content in response. And then finally, the platforms need to be diverse. It needs to offer a compelling library of truly original content from all over the globe that keeps the viewers coming back. Now we have seen several different media companies take one approach to original content, which is to place big bets behind mainstream Hollywood talent. And that's had a lot of success in its own right. But we at YouTube have had a totally different approach. As an open platform, YouTube has been original since the beginning. We have tens of millions of original creators that range from aspiring to established, all on the platform. So today, I wanna to talk about three things that matter to all creators on YouTube. We can call them the three C's, just to make it really easy for everyone to remember. Community, creation, and creative ambition. So let me share a little bit about how we are approaching each one of them to make YouTube the best destination for all creators. So first, let's talk a little bit about our community. Now, you may have heard some people recently asking us to make YouTube great again. And that would be especially true if you looked at my Twitter feed. <laughs> now, we've been listening closely because we want to make YouTube the best place, a great place for creators. And the good news is, is that the bond between creators and their fans has never been stronger. In fact, 40% of millennial subscribers say that YouTube creators understand them better than their friends do. And over 60% say that YouTubers have changed their lives. But we do agree that our community, that our YouTube community can be even stronger. So in April, we announced steps to ensure that nobody loses money while rights disputes are being resolved. We, yeah. We, it took a lot of work. Uh, we're working with our legal, our finance, our operations teams. We had to set up new solutions to enable those videos to earn revenue while content ID claims are being disputed. And it's important to realize that we pay out money to tens of millions of creators across the globe every single month. So this is not a simple undertaking. But we're currently testing the new solution and we are expecting to reach 100% of all monetized users within the next few months. Now, we also are working to improve our comments, which we hear a lot from all of you here at VidCon and from our creators just across the board. And we're working to make a few changes. So these include the ability for creators to pin a comment at the top of their videos, to include GIFs in responses, and to delegate comment moderation to their trusted fans. Sound good? And so while these are really important steps, they are not the only ones that we're taking for creators. So I'm very excited to welcome Sebastian Missoff, who is our global head of operations to the stage. And he is gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing to extend the journey and support for all of our creators globally. So please welcome Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne, and hello, VidCon. I'm thrilled to be back for my second VidCon. As Suzanne said, YouTube is all about community. It's a strong community where we can grow together and count on each other at every step of the way. 
Last year, at VidCon, I had the opportunity to meet with Anthony De Luca, a creator from Toronto. He had 10,000 subscribers through a combination of men's fashion video and coverage of the Toronto music scene. But Anthony was thinking about his next chapter on YouTube. Anthony worked with a YouTube partner manager who helped him build a content strategy, focusing on the fashion content that made him unique. Anthony then attended the Toronto Creator Day and visited our pop-up space where he continued to gain insights. And in May of this year, Anthony attended the opening of the Toronto space where he was awarded a silver play button for reaching 100,000 subscribers. He went from 10,000 to 100,000 subscribers in less than a year. We partnered with Anthony at every step of his way, and we are excited about his success. We want this to be the experience for every single creator. The YouTube community is made of tens of millions of creators who share Anthony's journey. And every single day, more than a thousand new creators reach the 1,000 subscribers mark. But our creator community isn't just big, it's incredibly diverse. Each creator has different needs, whether they have millions of subscribers or are just starting out. We do our best at YouTube to support and celebrate their talent and self-expression with new tools, support options, and workshops. We also provide access to production facilities for free at YouTube Spaces. We host in-person events, and we celebrate big milestones with Play Button Awards. Last week, a team even delivered to PewDiePie's his diamond button on a pony. We are not setting expectation that we'll do it every time, but. So today, I'm excited to announce three more steps that we are taking to be there for creators at every step of their way. First, we are making it easier for all creators to find the resources they need. Right now, creators have to navigate with more than seven different websites to find all the resources available to them. This experience often leaves them a bit lost. I'm proud to announce that we are providing easy access to all our resources through one door, not seven. What you see on screen is the completely redesigned Creator Hub that launches today, and it's fully localized in 23 different languages. My mother in France doesn't have any excuse not to become a YouTube creator now. <laughs> the site is now live, and anyone can access it at youtube.com slash creators. The new hub will be the central place where creators can discover all programs that are available to them and truly feel part of this YouTube community. As part of this hub, we are also launching a program called YouTube for Creators, bringing together a comprehensive set of solutions to grow on YouTube. So no matter how many subscribers they have, through the Creator Hub, every creator will be able to access resources available to them, like Creator Academy and our studio app, to help them grow on YouTube. For instance, once you go to 10,000 subscribers, you will be able to film and produce content at your local space. You will be able to get consultation on how to grow your channel and enter the next YouTube Next Up program. From zero subscribers to 10 million, we want to make the journey clear at every stage and outline the support we offer. And I hope you are ready for this. Perhaps the biggest news of all. I am proud to announce that every single creator who has enabled monetization 
on their channel will now be able to reach out to YouTube with a question and hear back from a real human being within one business day. We currently offer this direct support to hundreds of thousands of creators. As of today, that extends to tens of millions of creators. We know that becoming a creator on YouTube is an exciting journey. We know that the success of the creators is what makes this community so strong, and we are dedicated to be there for each creator at every step of their way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Sebastian. So as you can see by all those announcements that he just made, we at YouTube want to be with creators every step of the way. That also means offering the most cutting edge, creative, content creation tools out there. So we are investing heavily in live streaming, 360 degree video, and VR. Now with 360 degree video and VR, viewers can interact with their video environments as if they are actually there. YouTube has more 360 degree and VR content than any other platform. In fact, you can watch every single video on YouTube with a VR headset like Cardboard, making it the world's largest library of VR content. And with live streaming, fans can interact directly with the creator and with each other right while something unfolds in real time. Now, we've enabled live stream way back in 2011, but the momentum behind it has just been getting stronger. In the last six months alone, the amount of live streams on YouTube have tripled. But we have even more coming and you're gonna hear about it in a minute. So let me invite Kurt Williams, Kurt Wilms, our product lead for emerging experiences to come on stage and talk about some of the things that we're doing to support the next generation of content creation on YouTube. So please welcome Kurt Wilms. Thank you, Susan. As Susan mentioned, we really believe that immersive experiences like Live, 360, and VR are gonna play a huge role in the future of creation. The amount of interactivity and engagement they offer, especially when you're on a mobile device, is unlike anything else out there. That's why we've been so focused on staying at the very cutting edge of where video is going and bringing along as many people as possible to that future. And that's especially true when it comes to VR. We've already made huge strides in democratizing the VR experience. We created Google Cardboard so that anyone with a smartphone could experience VR for themselves. We then worked to unlock the world's largest video library, YouTube, to be viewable on a VR device. But we didn't stop there. This year at Google I.O., we announced the launch of a brand new YouTube app built from the ground up for VR headsets as part of Google's Daydream platform. The YouTube virtual, rea virtual reality app will bring voice search, spatial audio, VR videos, and playlists to give you the ultimate qual high quality platform for consuming VR content. We're also working to bring even more VR content onto YouTube. We think YouTube's incredible creator community is gonna lead the way in showing the world the full potential of VR. We're currently partnering with leading VR production companies and pairing them with top creators, such as Swoozy, Unbox Therapy, C Kurt Hugo Schneider, to test which formats work really well in VR. 
For example, no one knows if makeup tutorials, challenge videos, how-tos, or vlogs will work great in VR. But some of the experiments we're running are designed to give the entire ecosystem an idea. We'll release our findings and learnings in our Creator Academy so that all creators can learn the best practices when it comes to VR creation and production. We'll also have all the latest VR equipment and cameras in our YouTube spaces so creators large and small can start creating VR content today. So that's VR. We're also making big leaps in live streaming. And like Susan mentioned, we've been doing live streaming since way before it was cool. Millions of people tuned in to watch the royal wedding in 2011. One sixth of the internet tuned in to watch Felix Baumgartner jump from space back to Earth on YouTube in 2012. And just last month, we live streamed the world's largest sporting annual, annual sporting event, the UEFA Champions League final. Finally, just this year, we became the first ever to broadcast a 360 degree live stream during Coachella. Over 21 million people tuned in to watch Coachella on YouTube this year. That's almost twice as many as uh, that tuned in to watch the series finale of American Idol. And today I'm excited to announce a new chapter in bringing the power of live video to creators everywhere. Soon we'll be putting the power of YouTube live streaming right in the palm of your hands. And I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work right now. So, <clears throat> as you can see, YouTube live streaming is gonna be built right into the main YouTube mobile app. You don't need to open anything else up. You just load the app and hit the big red button. Now, we created this red button last year to make creation on the go easier than ever. And soon we'll, be able, soon we'll give you the option to broadcast what you're seeing live as well. All you need to do is hit go live. Once you hit go live, you enter a video title. So I'll do live at VidCon. And then maybe because I'm having fun up here, I'll do an emoji. Uh, once I do that, I just hit next. And then I take a selfie for my thumbnail. Everyone wave. <laughs> and then I just go ahead and hit go live. Now, once I go live, I'm broadcasting the world. So give everyone a chance here to say hi. Awesome, there's a lot of you out there. <clears throat> and like I mentioned, this goes out to everyone, including my subscribers. So you can see here my buddy David just joined Jacob. They're all probably in the audience cheering me on. <laughs> so once I'm done streaming, all I have to do is hit finish. And once I hit end, this video will become available on YouTube just like any video would. Now, because it's built right into the main YouTube mobile app, these live streams will have all the features that you know and love about regular videos. You'll be able to search for them. They'll appear in video recommendations and playlists. And of course, viewers can use our mobile notification bell to get alerts when their favorite cre creators start live streaming. We announced the mobile notification bell on YouTube last year at VidCon, and we're already ringing that bell 10 billion times a month. It's a crazy number. And we're helping our creators alert their subscribers. Now, because YouTube mobile live streaming will use our peerless infrastructure, it's gonna be faster and more reliable than anything else out there. Say, for instance, just in case you wanna do a live stream of an interview with the president. We think this will offer creators an entirely new, more intimate, and super spontaneous way to share their experiences with their communities and fans on the go. And so that's mobile live streaming. We're launching today with select creators at VidCon, and we're gonna be rolling it out more widely soon. So thank you, VidCon, for letting me show you how that all works, and I'm gonna throw it back to Susan. Hey, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, Kurt, and thank you to our live streaming teams. Um, I am really looking forward to seeing how everybody here uses all of these creative tools. I know that you know no bounds, you're incredibly creative, uh, so we're incredibly excited to see how all of you use those tools. So finally, I wanna to talk to you about the third pillar, which is creative ambition. Now, if we ask our creators, probably if we ask a lot of you in the audience, you'll tell us that there is an idea or a project or a collaboration, 
or a vision or something that you've always wanted to bring to life, but you just haven't been able to do that yet. Now, YouTube has helped creators do incredible things. It's helped them build a fan base, global exposure, and even earn serious money. And who doesn't want all of those things, right? But yet, they still dream of doing something more. They're ambitious. That's why it's called creative ambition. In some cases, that has led to some pretty amazing collaborations with YouTubers and with traditional TV and with movie outlets. So for example, we saw Flula, who has a YouTube auto-tune and a vlog series, get a major role in Pitch Perfect 2. And now he is starring in his own movie, Buddy Moon, which is coming out July 1st. Yeah. All right, go Flula. We'll all be watching it. Okay, we also saw Issa Rae, who is creator of the YouTube show Awkward Black Girl. All right, she has fans here too. And she landed a series on HBO called Insecure, and it's scheduled to debut this fall. And then, of course, we saw Rachel Bloom, who went from making very funny, very creative music videos on YouTube to winning a Golden Globe for her musical comedy series, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. So it has been amazing to see what our creators have been able to do both on and off the platform. So late last year, we launched our Originals program to give YouTube creators the same opportunities to do ambitious things on YouTube. And that brings me to YouTube Red. YouTube Red makes everything on YouTube better. It gives users the ad-free experience, the ability to offline content, and a premium music listening experience through our music app. And it gives them exclusive access to YouTube Red Originals. Now, our original series are one of the leading drivers of Red subscriptions. The viewerships that we have rival similar cable shows. But it's been interesting. What we've also seen is that the creators that we feature in our originals for Red, they get a boost on their YouTube subscription and their watch time on their main ad-supported channels. And most of this watch time boost is coming from viewers who hadn't watched that content creator before. So it turns out that there's actually a virtuous cycle between our YouTube Red and our ad-supported experience. And we're also seeing that these originals, that they're consumed in a totally new way, which is half of the watch time is happening on mobile phones. So I'd like to tell you a lot more about what we have planned in our originals. And in order to do that, I'm gonna invite Suzanne Daniels, who is our global head of original content, to come out on stage and to tell you what's coming next. So welcome, Suzanne. It's a pleasure to join you on stage for my first ever VidCon. As Susan said, we're seeing some fantastic engagement with our very first slate of YouTube originals. With nine projects launched, we're seeing fans sign up, tune in, binge, and share their enthusiasm with their friends. And a ton of this activity is happening in just the first 24 hours after our new series go live. In fact, just yesterday, we launched the very first episode of Escape the Night, starring Joey Graceffa, and we immediately saw a spike on Joey's channel. Along with Joey's new series, we also have three other new projects we're releasing over the next few months, all of which feature your favorite creators doing new and inventive things. First up is Fight of the Living Dead, 
which features 10 YouTube stars as they attempt to survive a zombie apocalypse over the course of three days. Think Survivor meets The Walking Dead meets the stars of our annual Rewind video. Also coming soon is a charming romantic comedy from our friends at Wang Fu called Single by 30. <laughs> Woo! The show is about two high school best friends who pledge to marry each other if they were both single once they hit the big 3-0. You know, there's so much talk in Hollywood about the lack of diversity on screen, so I'm proud that we're reflecting the diversity of YouTube through all of these Red Originals. And that's true of our next original as well. YouTube Red will be the exclusive home of Gigi Gorgeous's new feature-length documentary directed by two-time Oscar winner Barbara Koppel. Gigi's documentary offers a raw and revealing look at Gigi's transition from male to female, exposing her personal journey while bringing a deepened understanding to an important topic. Let's take a look at all four new original titles debuting soon. I invite you all to attend a dinner party. Welcome. If your friends are wise enough, they'll be able to solve the keys and save you. You are the YouTube killer. This game is going to be the death of us. I'm scared. We are all going to die. This is the worst party ever. And action. Single by 30 is a romantic drama comedy series that we're doing with YouTube Red. Single by 30 is about two best friends that make a pact in high school that if they're not married by the time they're 30, they'll marry each other. Got it. This series is like the biggest project we've ever done and it's really exciting that YouTube Red wanted to support it. This is Wong Fu on like another level and we can't wait to share it. on a full-length movie. It's gonna be a documentary about my life. I can't say too much about it yet. I literally just wanna tell you everything going on, but I can't, and it's just gonna to have to be a surprise. I am so, so excited and so happy, and I just wanted to say thank you so much because, you know, this wouldn't be happening without your love and support. Until I see you guys next time, stay gorgeous. taken to a top secret location. Ah! I was one of 10 YouTube stars selected for this groundbreaking experiment. <laughs> to live through 72 hours in a simulated zombie apocalypse. In addition to all those great titles we just previewed, I'm happy to announce today a number of new projects we'll be releasing exclusively to YouTube Red subscribers. When we were thinking about our new slate, we decided to take a look back at what was successful. And I'm pleased to announce that we're bringing back three titles that really resonated with fans. Scare PewDiePie, Foursome, and a new movie from Ian and Anthony of Smosh. We know that Felix's fans loved the first season of Scare PewDiePie. And we also know that the show got viewership that rivaled some of the top shows on cable. We're thrilled to continue this suspenseful series with Maker Studios, Rebel Mode, and Skybound Entertainment. And we've got a special video from Felix to tell you all about it. How's it going, bros? This is PewDiePie. I can't even do it properly. <laughs> I'm sick. So I'm really sorry I can't be at VidCon, but I just wanted to say a quick thanks to everyone who watched Scare PewDiePie. It was one of the craziest experiences of my life, and I can't wait to dive in into a new season with you, bros. That's all I gotta say, and I'll see you next time. As always, brofist. Another series that did amazingly well and resonated with fans was Foursome from Awesomeness TV. Jen McAllister is returning as Andy, and season two will focus on more of her adventures as she tries to pass through the real tests of high school. Hookups, breakups, and makeups. Finally, after doing a series with Smosh, we're bringing Ian and Anthony back again, this time for a film. 
This one is a feature length supernatural comedy about a luckless guy who moves into an apartment only to find out it's haunted by a ghost who can't seem to find his way back to heaven. So we've got these four titles you just saw and the three renewals I've announced, but believe it or not, we're just getting started. I've actually got six more exciting projects to share with you today. First up is a project I have been chasing since I was at MTV. I've been a fan of the Step Up movies for years and always believed the films would translate into an awesome original series. And now, finally, the Step Up series is happening on the platform where it's supposed to be. I'm so pleased to announce that in partnership with Lionsgate, YouTube Red will release the first ever Step Up series, executive produced by Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan Tatum, alongside Meredith Milton, Jennifer Gibgott, and Adam Shankman. Like the hugely successful movies, this new series will be centered around the heart-pounding, sexy, music-filled world of dancers at a performing arts high school. We know that dance is a hugely successful global category on YouTube, so I'm really excited to have a series rooted in such an enormously popular genre on our platform. We also know educational content and explainer videos are a huge source of engagement on YouTube. So we decided to partner with one of our leading educators, Michael Stevens of Vsauce, for a new series about something we all know actually very little about. No, not quantum physics, human behavior. Michael's new series, working title Psych Lab, will use real subjects, including himself and special guests, to show some of the most mind-blowing, important, and least understood aspects of human nature. Next up is a new scripted series from two YouTubers that I love. It's called Rhett and Link's Buddy System. In this comedy, Rhett and Link must go out of their way to regain control of their internet empire from their mutual co-ex-girlfriend who is holding a very big secret over their heads. <laughs> You'll get to see Rhett and Link in this inventive new series, which also stars SNL alums Molly Shannon and Chris Parnell, alongside Leslie Bibb and Paige Kennedy. Here's a message from Rhett and Link about their new show. Hey, Red Link here, just hanging out in our magic coffin. We really wish we could be with you there at VidCon, but we're in production on our new series, Red and Link's Buddy System. It is a scripted musical comedy which features a lot of totally normal things, the least of which is this magic coffin. And a roller skating rollerblading fight, and a barbershop quartet that we sing with clones of ourselves. And possibly a talking exercise bike. Actually, definitely a yes. talking exercise bike because that is also in there. And lots of other stuff. We're super excited to be working with YouTube to bring this to our fans on the platform via YouTube Red. So look for Red Link's Buddy System this year on YouTube Red. And in yes. the meantime, we're gonna be hanging out in our secret magic coffin. Is the secret now? Yes, don't tell anybody about our magic coffin. <laughs> Our love for comedic partnerships continues with top comedy duo Dan and Phil. As we speak, these stars are finishing up the largest tour ever by a YouTube creator. They've sold over 150,000 tickets all over the world. And today we're excited to announce we're bringing Dan and Phil's show exclusively to YouTube Red as a feature film. They'll also be giving audiences a behind the scenes look with the documentary about the making of the tour. But enough live action, how about an animated series? Top YouTube creators C Nanners, Mr. Sark, and Vanos Gaming star in an animated comedy series helmed by Michael Rowe, the Emmy Award winning writer of Futurama and Family Guy. The series revolves around a team of ill-equipped paranormal investigators who struggle to unfold the mysteries of the paranormal universe for their desperate clients. Finally, we're peeling back the layers on some of our top creators with a new film called Blogumentary, executive produced by Shay Shay Carl Butler, Maker Studios, and award-winning provocateur Morgan Spurlock. Vlogumentary gives us a personal, intimate lens into the world of YouTube's top talent, shining a light on their creative voices, their unique process, and the larger digital media landscape. Whew, I knew that was a lot. We've been busy over here at YouTube Originals, but what I hope this slate demonstrates is our openness to new ideas, 
our excitement to try new things you won't see anywhere else, and our commitment to original programming for the long haul. We're giving creators a new way to bring more ambitious content to the platform where their community already lives. So thank you, VidCon, and stay tuned for more great original content from YouTube Red. All right. Thank you, Suzanne. So as you can see, we have an incredible lineup of new original titles coming out um, and even more in development. YouTube is the most original content platform in the world, and we are working really hard to make sure that we can bring even more ambitious, more original series to the platform. So just to recap, I talked at the beginning about how there were gonna be three different themes that we are working on for creators. Do you guys remember them? Yes? This is gonna be like school. Should we cold call? Yeah. They start with C's. Can I give you guys a hint? Okay, C's. Are you guys paying attention? Yes, okay, this is really easy. They all start with C. Okay, so what are we doing? We are helping YouTubers fulfill their creative ambitions. We are giving them the latest cutting edge video creation tools. And lastly, we are strengthening our community. Come on, community, all of you together. Yay, see there are even photos to help remind you. Community. So when people talk about community, and they talk about YouTube's community, especially when they're here at VidCon, the first thing they often mention are, what do people mention when they talk about like, the screaming fans, right? How could you miss that? The enthusiasm for fans that they express, it is so overwhelming, it's so genuine. And yes, sometimes it is so loud. So it's easy to think that that's all there is. But what I hope you take away when you visit VidCon isn't just the enthusiasm. It's a sense of belonging that exists here. So over the last year at YouTube, we have given a lot of thought about what we stand for. And we've identified a number of freedoms that we believe in and that we wanna promote at YouTube. So these include the freedom of expression, that YouTube gives everyone a voice. The freedom of information, that YouTube provides information to everyone around the globe. The freedom of opportunity that anyone on YouTube can build a media business. And the freedom to belong that everyone can find connection and community. YouTube gives people of any race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, disability, or interest, a place to come together and a place to belong. It just so happens that this year, VidCon falls during a very special time. Next week will mark the 49th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, which are largely considered to be the most important event leading up to the LGBT liberation moment, movement and the fight for equal rights. After nearly 50 years, this movement has made tremendous progress. And some people, they might feel that the struggle for equal rights has largely been won. But the tragic events of the recent mass shooting in Orlando showed us that the march for progress, for understanding, and for equality is far from over. The attack on the Pulse nightclub purposely targeted the LGBT community in a place where they felt welcome, 
where they felt empowered and where they felt safe. And tragically, that attack became the deadliest mass shooting in American history. But even when it feels like some are determined to make the LGBT community feel vulnerable, we are proud that YouTube has always been and always provided a place to belong. YouTube has a rich history of being a place where this community can come for free expression, understanding, and connection. So as we celebrate Pride this month, I wanna share a video that we made to commemorate this incredible community on YouTube. I know a lot of people have been questioning about it, but there's, there's something that I want to clear up. I identify as agender, but also genderqueer. Omnisexual, polysexual. I haven't really figured that out myself yet. It's not about a preference. It's much more complicated than that. Gender can be confusing. People look at me differently. You're gorgeous, you slay, but... What are you really? What were you when you were born? Are you bisexual? Were you sticky? Do you got a dick or not? You weren't born a woman. You serious? Like... It's not fair to anybody. Those were some of my darkest days. Having them tell you that there's no space for you. Would people love me? Like, would people accept me for who I am? This is who I am. We all want to live in a world where we feel like our feelings are shared and that our opinions matter. We want to live in a world where others understand what we're going through. But unfortunately, our connections to people like us or to people who empathize with us are often obscured by distance or conflict. YouTube can reveal that connected world. It gives people everywhere the freedom to belong, no matter who they are, what they look like, where they're from, or who they love. So no matter how loud it gets in these VidCon halls, I hope it's the incredible sense of belonging that you witness here at VidCon. So thank you everybody, and have a good night. Thank you. Hey everybody, Hello. welcome back to VidCon Live. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is our our final moment yes. here. We just learned so much we about did. YouTube and where it's headed, and I'm very excited Susan about it. Susan W. Just like just bringing the Susan heat. Bringing all, all of the heat. That's it's, the head honcho. Yeah. She's that's awesome. The big cheese. I just love that she comes down to VidCon and like does amazing things. She's yeah. like, here, yeah. check all this out. Take like it. a little, like a digital Santa Claus. Yeah, it is. Give you. She's like, I'm, we're going to do VR and we're going to do live. We're going to do we're live stream. <laughs> 360. Hey, guess what? YouTube Red. Yeah, This YouTube and Red. this is what they have. And here's all your presents. Here's your presents, guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly amazing. what it is. Amazing. Awesome. It's nice. Yeah. It's very, it's very, very cool. I was telling somebody this earlier. I was backstage in that area grabbing Name my drop. pho. Yeah, I was, Brag alert. Oh, I was hanging out with a little place called Backstage, and uh, I uh, was talking to somebody, and I was like, every time I come here, 
I'm always I always leave and I'm very inspired and very like yeah. oh I'm gonna I'm gonna I do always it. do that too. I'm always like I gotta make videos and then I end up doing a <laughs> podcast with Elliot and writing fart videos with Elliot. <laughs> you know, nice. so <laughs> the inspiration yeah. works. Yeah, no, <laughs> right? it's, uh, we're making art. We're making good content. We're changing the uh, world. Brent, what has been your favorite part of today with the We've being the first official We've been day? running around all over the place. Yeah. Uh, going to the autograph hall and running into Shay there and saying nice. the madness. That was like meet and greet the was madness. incredible. Uh, we shot some awesome interviews that are going to air tomorrow during the live stream. Cool. we got Mystery Guitar Man, Philip DeFranco. Heard of, heard, heard of them. Heard of yeah. them. Uh, a lot of awesome stuff coming up cool. then, too. But yeah, it's been a long, good day at VidCon. It has been a oh, long, good day. I haven't seen you guys day. since this morning. I know. We even said that. We said earlier, we were like, thank God Brent gets to like run around everywhere and we get to sit here and be like, what's going on, Brent? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Brent's so you? tired. Uh, Brent did <laughs> something. Uh, uh, no, it's very. My favorite part of the day today was uh, bonding with Kingsley over uh, Hogwarts houses, which I'm sure yeah, we'll do. Yeah, that was actually really great. It yeah. was. It was really nice. We're going to probably ask even more people what their house is. Did you know what your Hogwarts house is? Uh, I don't. No. I was I, following hashtag oh. VidCon Live on Twitter. I saw a lot of talk about it. Yeah. My gosh. Uh, felt very left out of the loop. So did not get to tonight, watch the stream. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to send you a link to a quiz. Or it'll sort me. It'll sort you, yeah. oh. and we'll oh, come no. back, and we'll is figure out who one? you are at Slytherin. It's what bad. Kingsley get? Uh, Kingsley was Ravenclaw. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that checks out. Kingsley and I are in the same house. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. 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 Half a path. <laughs> oh, oh, my. So if you come at us with some <laughs> Gryffindor business. If anyone gets Gryffindor, you're like, yeah. All right, oh, we're right. at it. We get Good it. You're so cool. Cool. Over here. Cool. Um, cool kid. All right, we got all sorts of exciting stuff for you guys coming up tomorrow. We are also going to be right back here at the yeah. same time, same place, here in the convention hall of VidCon. Brent's going to continue to run around. We're yes. going to continue to sure. interview people and talk to you guys and show you all of the happenings here. Um, if you want to let us know what you think, use the hashtag VidCon Live, and it'll show up on the tag board. We Do can it. read it, and we can know what you're thinking. You can feel free to tweet us and uh, and say hi, and we'll bond and, and have a great I time. I love it. That's like the you most. You covered all of it. Yeah. I felt like I think I covered everything yeah. there. I mean, did you There's nothing left. I felt like at some point you'd be like, Lee? Yeah. And then... Yeah, and then I was like, oh. Um, Maybe there's all Again, of the he things. covered the hashtags, right? So, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Such a Ravenclaw move. Yeah. yeah, it's such a Ravenclaw Raven move. Hop up, up, I'm like, I had a great time. <laughs> We're going to have a great time tomorrow. That's it. That's, that's it. All. all right. Thanks. We'll see well you. Done. Bye. Well done. Bye, everybody. See you guys.